So welcome back to this module. So in this module, we're going to build the mouse wheel application. So let me first show you the application that we're going to build in this entire module. So this is the application that we're going to build in this entire module. So when I scroll up my mouse wheel, then you can see it's actually going to zoom out. And when I scroll down, then it's going to zoom in. So this is the application that I'm going to build in this module. So you will learn how to handle the mouse wheel event. So the first step is we need to start with the HTML part of the project. Now for the HTML part, I have already created the project inside my Visual Studio code and I have also created the required files for building this mouse scroll wheel application. And I name the application as scroll wheel of mouse or you can just simply name it as zoom in out application by using mouse wheel. So it doesn't matter. You can name it whatever you want. And I have linked the style.css file and also the script.js file. And I have launched the application by using the Go Live Server extension. Okay, so you can see this is the application that we're going to build in this entire module. And this will be the final version of the application that we are going to build. Okay, so the first thing is we need to actually create the container. So inside of the container, we need to place the h1 element. Okay, so this will be the h1 element. So here we need to use scroll wheel of mouse and to zoom in and out okay so this will be the text that will be visible to the screen so that's it for the html part of the project in the next part we're going to start with the css part of this particular zoom in out application so now it's time to start with the css part of the project so for that we need to use this style.css file now instead of that first i'm going to select the universal selector so this is the universal selector instead of that first i'm going to reset the margin so margin to zero and then padding to zero as well and after that i'm going to select the box sizing so box sizing is going to be the border box now i'm going to select the body selector that is this body selector and then we need to first select the display so display is going to be like flex then align item is going to be the center and then justify content is going to be the center of the screen and after that we need to use here a min height so minimum height that i want is actually 90 vh all right and then we need to specify the width so width is going to be like 100 percent then i need to use the position fixed actually i have to use here fixed one and then we need to add the font family so font family i will be using the helvetica one you can see now the font is actually changed then we want to use the background color so i will be using the rgb function for the red color i will be using 242 then for the green that is this one we need to use the green value here so for the green i will be using 112 then to specify the comma and then we need to delete this one and here we need to add the 156 control save it you can see now we get this nice pinkish color and then we need to add the text alignment property add the center so it is actually a text alignment center you can see this is the text alignment center property now you can see the problem is that in the final version the text is actually appearing at the center of the screen but in our version there is a problem the text is still at the top so the problem with that because in this min height i have to add here 90 but i have added here a 9 as a value so if I enter here 90, if I control save it, now you can see the text is actually moved to the center of the screen. So that's it for all the code for the CSS part for this zoom in out application by using the scroll wheel of mouse. In the next part, we're going to start with the JavaScript part of the project. So now it's time to start with the JavaScript part of the project. So for that, we need to use the script.js file. Instead of that, first we need to get the reference to this particular element, which is this heading element. So for that we need to create here a variable so it is like const and then this is actually a zoom screen so i'm going to name my variable as zoom screen then we need to use here a query selector so it is like document dot query selector and then we need to specify the type of the selector so if i come back to the index.html so here it is actually a container so i'm going to select the container which is the division heading so it is like container and then we need to specify the dot because it is a class selector after that we need to create the variable which is zoom so it is actually like one so this particular variable value will be used to keep track of the zoom level then the next variable value that we want to create is actually the let then this is actually a zoom 
speed so this will be the zoom speed so it replies 0 0.1 which is actually a 10 percent zoom speed and after that we need to set the listener so it is like document dot add event listener so we want to listen to actually the wheel event so that is a wheel event then we need to call the anonymous function and then we need to start its block of the code instead of that anonymous function we want to handle the event so it is actually denoted by e all right instead of that first we need to check for the condition if e dot delta y so if it is that condition all right and actually i have added here two blocks this is what if dot delta y then we also need to perform the else condition okay so instead of that if it is delta dot y because right now the scroll now why i have used here a y not x because the scroll wheel of the mouse is actually in the vertical direction and so we are actually updating the value in the y axis so that is the reason i have used here a delta y okay so that is the reason i have used here a delta y then first we need to update the zoom screen because if the zoom is delta y value is greater than zero then it means that we need to actually scale the zoom speed so we need to actually positively update the speed of the zoom so we want to update the style as well so style dot not computer which is like style dot transform style dot transform is equal to then we need to use the template string and then we need to terminate it after that we need to use the scale because it is a transform that we want to perform so scale then to start its block of the code and then here we need to use the dollar symbol because we need to actually here use the template string characters so here instead of that first again we need to use the bracket then zoom which is the variable value is going to increment plus or increment it then the zoom speed so we want to update the value of the zoom speed in a positive axis once the value of the delta y is greater than zero all right and if it is not greater than zero then we just simply need to decrement the value all right now if i control save it and if i come back to the version of the application so right now you can see when i scroll up the zoom is actually out and when i scroll down towards my side then it's actually going to perform the zoom in so that's it for this particular module if you like this project then please leave your review because your review definitely going to help me to reach more students and also motivates me to create more awesome courses like this so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you very much hello everyone so welcome back to this lecture so in this lecture we're going to build the random paragraph generator application so this is the final application that we're going to build in this particular module so if i refresh the page to actually give you the fresh overview of the application so if i click on this generate button then you can see we are actually able to generate the five paragraphs randomly if i enter here a nine then it's going to generate the nine paragraphs randomly if i enter here like 10 then it's going to display the 10 paragraphs so our application has only 10 paragraphs so if i enter here a 11 value which is more than the paragraphs provided in the application it's going to display a one random paragraph or if i enter here a value zero then it's going to display an alert the value cannot be zero so this is a check we are going to apply inside the javascript part of the project that's it for this particular random paragraph generator application which is generate random paragraphs so this is the application we are going to build in this entire module so our first step is to start with the javascript part of the project So our first step is to start with the HTML part of the random paragraph generator application. So for that I have already created the three files which is index.html, style.css and javascript file which is script.js. And also I linked these files by using these particular lines of the code. And also I have added the boilerplate code of the HTML and changed the title to random paragraph generator and launched the application into the chrome browser. Ok so the first step is we need to add the one card because if i show you the final application this is actually a one card or you can say that the container instead of that these four elements are actually placed so first we need to create that particular divisions and then we are going to style it with the use of this style sheet code 
so here we need to add the code that is card then i press the tab key and instead of this card everything will be added so this card will be act as a main container for the other elements then we need to here create the row and instead of this row we need to create another division division and then we are going to use here a label and then for this we are going to display the items and then here we need to use the generate 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 random paragraph okay so this will be now you can see the elements is now visible to the browser screen then after that inside this particular row division we need to add the another div just an empty div without any class name so i'm going to here use the div and instead of that we need to specify the input so the type of the input is going to be number according to the value of this input type we are going to generate the random paragraph so the default value that i want to add is the 5 because i want to display the 5 paragraphs this value is totally depends upon you if you want to display 3 paragraphs then you need to specify the 3 values and here i have added the items as an id to this input type number so after that we need to add the another div which is inside this particular row div div and instead of that we need to add the button so this button is going to actually fire an on click event which is generate and then we need to specify the round bracket and instead of that we need to add the text generate and then for displaying the result which is uh, if i show you the final application this is the result actually so we need to create a separate division and then we are going to add the data with the use of the javascript code by using the dom methods so coming back to the visual studio code again so after the end of this row because this row is the content that is visible to the screen once we launch the application so if i refresh it so this is the div for the row elements it has three elements there is label input button as you can see in the output one label input and button and then outside of this row division we need to add the another division which is div and we need to provide the class to this div so this is also a type row row and then inside of that we are going to display nothing because we are going to display the data dynamically but we want the id so that we can fetch this inside the javascript and then add the data dynamically to this particular division by using the inner html function or inner text so that's it for the html part of the project so our next step is to start with the css part of this generate random paragraph application or i can say that the random paragraph generator application so now it's time to start with the css part of the project by using the style.css file so instead of the style.css file we need to provide a style code for this generate random paragraph application right now we want to actually reset the default styling of the browser so for that we need to use the universal selector so first here i am going to add the padding which you already know i have actually done this thing in many of the previous projects so padding is zero margin is zero then we need to use the box sizing so box sizing is is going to be border box and then we need to use the font family so font family here at this point of time i'm going to use the Veltana. then you can see the font is actually changed inside the browser and then we need to add the body so that we can add that linear gradient color so body instead of that we need to use the background property background property which is the background not color one we need a background one and then we need to use the linear gradient so we want to apply the linear gradient to left and then we need to provide the color code so it is going to like f7 4 8 1 3 which is a reddish color and then we need to add the another color because the linear gradient is the intersection of the two colors like 4 c and 0 so this will be the color now you can see the color is actually applied to the background of the body and it is visible to the web browser so the next we need to actually apply the style for the label because right now this generate password so we are going to add the code for the label first so we are going to directly select the label here and uh, here i am going to add the text decoration so text decoration to underline and after that i am going to add here a font weight so font weight is going to like 600 then you can see the 
size of the means the weight of the generate random paragraph is increased after that we need to apply the style code for the card element because that is a main container if i come back to the index.html so you can see this is a main container in which everything is actually placed if i collapse it and you can see this is the main container of the division so control save it and coming back to the css part so card and starting with curly pair of the brackets and after that first we need to add the max width property so max width is going to be 900 pixel if i save it then you can see nothing is actually changed because we need to first here specify the background color then it will it will be visible to the screen so the background color i'm going to use the allies blue so or i can use the white one because allies blue is not looking good hashtag and then three times f key so this is the background color we want to use and then we need to use the margin property so margin is going to be like from top is going to be like 10 pixel 10 pixel margin and from and from left and right it is going to be auto auto and here if i save it then you can see there is a 10 pixel margin from the top then we need to add the box shadow property so box shadow is actually zero then here we need to use the two pixel then the blurness is going to be two pix four pixel and then we need to use the function which is rgba then zero 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 and here we need to use the 0 0.2 i control save it then we need to increase the padding as well so padding from all side is going to be 20 pixel if i maximize the window size of the browser then you can see we are actually able to see this particular container at the center of the screen which is our card the next thing is we want the rounded corners so for that we need to use the border radius property so border radius not a border bottom we want a border radius property border radius is going to be 10 pixel so that we get the nice rounded borders okay our nice rounded corner so that's not the completion of the code for the card so next we need to add the code for the row element because this is the row so we have two rows this particular row and then this one so we're going to add the code for this row selector so this row and instead of that we need to add the margin top property so margin top is going to be like 15 pixel once i delete then you can see there is a difference between the margin if i enter some element inside the paragraph like this random stuff if i enter now i have added in the wrong part if i enter some random stuff here if i control save it then you can see there is a margin 15 pixel if i remove the margin 15 pixel from the row which is a margin top property then you can see they are very like appearing and very close to each other so that is the reason we need to add here margin top property all right and i am going to coming back to the index.html just removing this text because we don't want it Control save it and coming back to the style.css file and after this row we need to add the code for the row division so again here row and then we need to add the division tags and then we need to apply the code so here inside of that we need to add the padding so padding is going to be 10 pixel if i did it then you can see now they are actually looks much more cooler okay means looks much more good and the style is perfectly selected after that we need to add the code for the row input and here we need to select the row and then input and then we need to start the code of this particular row input so here instead of that i'm going to add the width so width is going to be like 100 pixel now this width is for the input type so this is a now we have actually reduced the size because just we just only want to display a one number so that is the reason i have actually added the width to 200 pixel even you can decrease the width to 50 pixel that will also work but uh, for the simplicity purpose i'm just going to use the 100 pixel and after that we need to use here uh, another property which is the padding property which is going to be 5 pixel and then we need to add the border radius so border radius is 5 pixel again and then we need to add the border so there should be a border to this particular input type so it is of 1 pixel solid border of color i will be using here ff which is 0 0 0 and 0 so red color border we are going to use it for this particular input type and then we need to add the outline property so outline we are going to use it none okay so whenever we actually as in the focus then the outline will not be visible then we need to add the last property which is the font size so font size is going to be 16 pixel not ps is going to be 16 pixel so you can see now the size of the font is actually increased 
next we need to style this particular button so again i'm going to copy this row because the button is also placed inside the row division so here we need to select the row and then we need to select the button so under the row and then we have this particular button okay so coming back to the style.css closing this curly bracket instead of that first we need to add the background color so we need to add the background color which is our e4 and then 6141 so this will be the color we are going to use for the button then we need to stylize the button so first we need to add the padding so padding is going to be 5 pixel from top and bottom then from left and right it is going to be 10 pixel and then we need to use the border radius property so border radius is going to be 5 pixel from all sides so that we get the rounded corners and then we need to use the border to none and if i save it then you can see the button is actually taking its shape means it's style and after that we need to increase the font size so font size is going to be 16 pixel and then i have actually using here a color property so color is going to be white and then we need to use here uh, another which is a property which is cursor pointer which is always required and then we need to use the outline property outline this is going to be none so I did that then you can see if I hover over the button then it, the cursor is actually changed it to pointer 1 ok so this is for the code for the button so the last CSS that we want to apply for the paragraph element so that paragraph element will be looks like more great because inside of that row we are going to display the paragraph element we are going to add the paragraph element inside of these dynamically with the use of javascript code so that is the reason we are going to add the css first because it's just only a three lines of the css so that is why i am actually adding it here so that once we start the code inside the javascript we do not come back to the css part to add the code so first we need to add the margin code which is margin top is going to be 10 pixel and after that we need to add the font size property so font size is going to be 16 pixel and then we need to add the text align property text alignment is going to be justify Alright, so if we enter a paragraph element here, like that's why I want to show you paragraph element. Actually, I'm inside the script tag. This is the paragraph element. Here we need to add the paragraph element. I have actually used inside the script tag, so I'm going to just make it this one. And here we need to add the text. So I'm going to copy a line of paragraph from the internet. So I copy it and if I just come back to here and if I save it then you can see this is how our style of the paragraph will look like. Alright, so that's now the completion of the code. Then I'm going to remove this paragraph line because we are going to generate it dynamically. Means we are going to generate it with the use of the JavaScript code. Okay, so that is actually the CSS part of the project. It looks similar like the output one that we want to develop for the module so you can see it's almost similar so that's it for the css part of the generate random paragraph application our next step is to start with the javascript part of the application so now it's time to start with the javascript part of the project which is random paragraph generator so for that we need to use the script.js file now instead of that first we need to get these ids of the elements that is the id of this input type and then we need to fetch the id of this class which is the row and the id is actually data so we need to fetch the ids of these two elements and also we need to actually create this function inside the javascript so i'm going to copy this generate and coming back to the script.js so here we need to create this function and then i'm going to paste the name of the function and then start its curly brackets and after that we need to create here a variables so i'm going to create here a const so this is actually going to have a paragraphs so this is going to actually equals to paragraph of the arrays and then we need to create the another variable here so const and this is of type item and this is actually equals to the document dot get element by id this is document dot get element by id and we need to actually get the id of the items so here inside the index.html so this is the id the items that we want to display because every random paragraph is actually as an item so inside the double quotes i'm going to paste the id name and then also providing the hash symbol because it is an id 
and after that we need to create the another which is the commons and here inside of it I'm going to use the data container container and it is actually equals to again document dot get element by id and inside of that we need to provide the code of the id which is the container so our container is this one which is the data so again coming back to this and here i am going to paste the code then for the shuffling of these particular paragraphs like if i show in the application whenever i click it then you can see every time the paragraphs is shuffled so for that we need to create a another function and that function is actually our function shuffle function shuffle and this is actually going to accept a one parameter of type array okay and then i'm going to actually make here some space and just take this code to the top of the javascript file and here inside of this content paragraphs i need to actually paste the list of the arrays so i'm going to copy it from the internet then i will be continue the video again so here you can see i have actually copied the code from the internet means the array template code because it is a very time consuming task if i just do it manually then it will be a very long running task and it will take a lot of time and the length of the video will be increased like uh, twice of this particular video means it will become more than a uh, half an hour video so i don't want to do that that is the reason i have copied this code from the internet so if i just take you to the end of the line of the paragraph after the end of line of the paragraph you should provide a comma and then you should enter the data otherwise you will face the issue so now it's time to add the code inside the shuffle function that is actually used to shuffle the paragraph elements which is the array elements so what i mean is whenever i click on the generator so you can see these paragraphs are actually reshuffled so this is actually achieved by using this shuffle function so inside the generator we are going to call the shuffle function so first we need to provide the code for the shuffle function so inside of that first we need to create two variables the first is actually for the current index and then we need to create the another variable which is the random index so let first i'm going to here type the current index and then it's going to equal to our array so this is the array the local variable of this particular function which is passed as an argument and then we need to create another variable which is the random index so this is going to be empty note we need to don't need to initialize it then we are going to use here a while loop so that we can loop through the elements of the array and here we need to run the loop according to whenever the current index is not equal to we don't want to run the so at this point of time the value is present here 5 so 5 is not equal to 0 which is actually true condition because 5 is not equal to 0 but it's actually going to check the reverse condition so that is the reason this loop will be executed so instead of that first we need to use the random index so random index is equal to math dot floor function so this actually is so that we can guess the closest value which is a whole number then math dot random so we need to here use the random function so that we can get generate a random value and this is going to be current index so we are going to multiply the current index with the random function all right and after that we are going to here decrementing the value of the current index to minus one and then we need to here swap the values of the array instead of that array then we need to again here use the brackets so instead of that we need to pass the current index so this code actually i get it from the stack overflow to actually shuffle the elements of the array this is little tricky code it uses an algorithm so that is why i am just going to not going to explain this particular code because this is like a very tricky part of the algorithm it will take hard it will take more than uh, like a half an hour lecture to actually explain this entire code in more detail and step by step so this is not a part of the dsa course that is the reason i'm not going to explain this entire stuff then i need to create here another array bracket and just split into multiple lines and after that inside of that i'm going to again call here array that is the array and then i need to start the random bracket so main thing is it's going to replace the index that is the reason or you can say that the swapping of the index then here we need to use the current index all right 
then I'm going to just simply remove the extra spacing. So this will actually does what it's going to reshuffle the array. So after the end of this while loop, outside of the while loop body, we are going to return an array. So whatever we passed as an array, we are going to return it. So this marks the completion of the code for the shuffle function. And then I am coming back to the generate function. Instead of generate, first we need to check for the empty value. If the value is zero, so we don't we want to actually display the condition if i just go to the final product if here is zero and then click on generate then we need to display this particular alert pop up so for that we need to check for the if condition so if the value of the item dot value so here we have the item value we already fetched it so if the value of this item dot value is actually equal to equal to zero then we want to display the alert not arguments it's going to be alert and then we need to pass here some message the value cannot be zero so after specifying the condition now let's check it by control save and if i enter here like zero and if i click on the generate button so it's actually not executing what will be the reason now the problem inside of this particular line of the code which is the line number 18 doing the initialization so i have actually here used the get element by id so instead of the id we don't need to specify this hash character because uh, this will be used when we are actually using the query selector so if i use here like uh, simply if i just remove it because right now instead of this i have used the get element by id as a data this data is also an id class attribute so if i come back to the button like where is the result container this is the so you can see if this is actually id so we have used the get element by id but inside of this one i have actually specified the hash character so that is the reason so we need to remove it so if we want to use the hash character for the fetching of the ui elements of the html or i can say the html elements then we can need to use here a query selector method so this is a small mistake i did so if i run it and if i just come back to the browser and enter here as zero click on generate then you can see now we are actually getting the alert pop up which is the value can be zero okay now coming back to the generate function so instead of that we need to specify the else if condition and save and coming back to the brackets then the body so instead of that we need to check for the item value again we need to apply a one more condition item dot value if it is greater than like uh, our paragraph length so we want to display a, a random paragraph means at least we want to display a one paragraph if i run the final application so right now we have 10 if i enter here 11 and if click on generate then it's going to display a one random paragraph to this particular application so to achieve this one feature we need to here check for the else if condition instead of that then we are going to use these functions and we need to randomize the index so here first we need to create a variable so this variable is going to be like const random random index random index is equal to then again here we need to use the math we have we need to press the enter here math dot floor function instead of that we need to call the math dot random random and then we need to multiply it with paragraph dot length like the same code we have did here but we inside the while loop we are going to use this one also so this is actually here equal to sign not a minus symbol so with this line of code we are actually getting the random index and that random index will be stored inside of this particular variable and after that we need to use here a data container data container dot inner html so this data container is actually the main container in which the paragraph will be displayed so data container is equal to we need to update its value so we are going to use here a template string and instead of that first we need to terminate it and then here we are going to use the dollar symbol and then we need to actually provide here a curly brackets and instead of that we need to pass the paragraphs the main array that we have actually defined at the top of this particular file of the javascript.js and instead of that we need to pass the index so that index is actually stored inside the random index variable if i control save it and just simply try to run the application by 
incrementing the value to 11 which is actually greater than the value then you can see now we are actually able to display the one paragraph randomly inside the data container so these all conditions we have checked so in the else part we are going to display the rest of the things like if we enter here a 9 so right now we have elements that is actually like 9 10 elements so we are going to display a 9 paragraph if we just enter here a 5 then we want to display a 5 paragraph with the shuffling of the elements so that is the reason we created this shuffle function so coming back to the else part so first we need to create here a variable which is const and then we need to use here a shuffle paragraphs which is the name of the function name of the variable shuffle paragraphs is going to equal to paragraphs which is the array name of the variable then we need to call the shuffle function because we need to pass the arrays so here we need to pass the paragraphs which is the array we want to actually shuffle the elements of the paragraph whenever we click on the function we want to change the array means we want to shuffle the array then here we need to use the const variable which is for the selected selected paragraphs selected paragraphs is actually equal to the shuffled paragraphs which is a variable as it is actually created at the top so here we want to use the equal symbol shuffle paragraphs dot slice so we are going to use a slice so frame we want to slice we want to slice it from zero to item value item dot value and then we need to add here a paragraphs html is equal to and then we need to use here a selected paragraphs dot map function and instead of the map function we need to use here a paragraph and then the arrow sign and then we need to pass here a template string so by using the backtick character and then instead of that we need to pass this particular same code so i'm going to copy it and paste it here okay and then instead of that i don't need to pass this round bracket so delete it and this will be close so we have passed the paragraphs okay so if i just decrease the size of the window means increase the size of the visual studio code window and then we need to call here a join function we want to join it with the empty string because we want to create a string so that is the reason we are actually want to join with the use of this join function so after that we are getting the our paragraphs because we are going to join all the paragraphs by using the map function okay and then we need to set this data to the data container dot inner html is equal to paragraph html so if i control save it and if i come back to my browser so here if i click on the generate now you can see we are actually able to generate the five paragraphs one more thing if i enter here a uh, like paragraph tag like here we need to add the p tag again here we just go to view and word wrap so the paragraph tag and then after this here we need to add the closing tag of the paragraph element close the tag and if i control save it click on generate now you can see the things are now appearing in the much better way with proper indentation so now we are successfully able to build this application i know that there is a uh, two things i have not explained these two lines of the code the reason for that this is actually a part of the algorithmic function so which is actually a part of the dsa it will take more than half an hour lecture to actually explain this concept so finally i did this particular code and now the main application is created so you can see it's actually going to generate five function if i enter here um, value 11 then it's going to display a one random function if i enter here a zero then it's going to display a one alert dialog or you can say that is the alert pop up so that's marks the completion of this particular lecture if you like this lecture then leave a review because your review definitely going to help me to increase the quality of my courses so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you welcome back to this module so in this module we are going to build the long calculator application so let me show you the final application that we are going to build in this entire module so this is the final application that we are going to build you can see it has this nice 
loan calculator card that has three fields loan amount interest rate loan terms in months and then we have this calculate button that is actually going to display the two information means the two results the first is the monthly payment the second is the total interest so if i refresh it and if i enter here a like value like five thousand dollar so we have added the logic in a form of dollars then we need to add the interest rate which is 4.5 then the loan tenure which is like 24 months means the loan term so if i calculate then you can see the monthly payment is 218.24 dollar and the total interest is like 237.74 dollars so this is actually a real application chrome if i just will show you the another application like if i open here you can see this is our real application clone which is like bankrate.com loans under loan calculator if you open this calculation so if i enter here a like amount to loan amount which is like five thousand dollar and loan term if i enter here like 4.5 interest loan term in months is like 36 so if i enter here like 36 which is the application that i develop if i click on calculate and also if i calculate on calculate then you can say almost you can see these are actually showing the same results monthly payment is 148.73 dollar which is a monthly payment then the total principal paid which is five thousand dollar which is like this one we can just simply take the value from this input field and display it in the third entry you can do it easily but i didn't add that feature and the total interest that we paid is the 354.45 dollar which is also in my application I get the same results now in order to get the same result i have to derive a formula means i have actually used a formula so that we can get the same result like this real world application although the ui is different you can actually create the ui by your own way i have added these simple form elements you can just modify the ui in just simply like this one if you want to do that but uh, i didn't do the ui part i just added the main functionality which took me around so much time and so much hit and trial so much effort i need to put for the creation of this particular project so that we can get the same result just like this particular real application giving okay so the first step is we are going to start with the html part of the project now for the html part i have already created the file inside the visual studio code like index.html, style.css and also the script.js file and all of the files are linked inside this index.html and also I launched the project inside my web browser. So the first thing is we need to start with the container just like we in every application we did it. We need to place everything inside the container. This is the final version that we want to develop and this is the one that we are going to develop in this entire module. So the first thing is we need to specify the container so i'm going to specify a div tag then the class selector so this is going to be like container and inside of the container everything will be placed so first again i'm going to create here another div not a dir we need to create the another div here then the class attribute and then this is going to have our calculator and i actually want to specify this small case name and this is giving the error because the course is not properly closed all right so inside of the container we have the calculator now inside of the calculator we have everything will be placed and inside of the calculator we need to provide the h2 element which is the loan calculator calculator and after the loan calculator we need to create the another division so div and then inside of that we need to create the class input group input group and instead of that we need to create the label so this label we don't need any for value and it's going to remove it so this is for the loan amount so the main loan amount will be displayed here and then we need the input type so input type we are actually going to dealing with the number so we need to specify here a number then the id so id is going to be like loan amount input okay so this will be the id for the input type and then we need to add the placeholder so here we need to specify enter loan amount okay so this will be the id and then we need to 
actually copy this input group so again i'm going to just remove this space which is the blank space pressing the enter key just copy this one and pasting it one more time so this will be used for the interest rate interest rate and then to specify in the brackets a percentage symbol then we need to specify the id which is interest rate rate input and then we need to remove the placeholder text to like enter interest rate interest rate okay and then finally again we need to copy this one more time and this will remain the input group then this one is for our loan term loan term in brackets we need to specify the in months and then we need to change the id so the id is going to be like loan term input and then we need to change the placeholder to enter loan term okay so this will be the input elements type done you can see inside the web browser the corresponding elements is now visible to the browser after that we need a button so for that we need to place here a button so button and we need to provide the button an id so it is going to be like calculator not calculator it is like calculate btn so it is like calculate btn this will be the id for the button and then we need to here use the calculate all right so this will be the calculate btn then we need to add the division which is for the result so this will be having the final result instead of that we need to specify the id which is result just place here a small character all right so this will be the results now the html part of the loan calculator is done so our next step is to start with the css part of this particular application which is the loan calculator application Next time to start with the CSS part of the project. So for that we need to use the style.css file. And instead of that first we need to select the body element. Which is our main body selector. Inside of the body all the other HTML element will be displayed. So instead of that first we are going to select the font family. So I am going to use here uh, Arial font. And just removing this Helvetica one. Then you can see the font is now changed. Then we need to add the background color which is like a hashtag f2 f2 and f2 which is a light gray color and then we need to add here a container and then to start the block of the code then here we need to add the max width so max width is going to like 500 pixel and after that we need to here provide the margin property from margin top is going to like 100 pixel and then from left and right it is going to auto then you can see now the content is actually center of the screen and after that we need to select the s2 element so we want to style the main heading of the loan calculator which is text alignment it is going to be center of the screen then text decoration it is also going to be like uh, under line you can see then we need to add here a like calculator so i'm going to come back to the index.html so i'm going to copy this like class name and here i will be pasting the calculator which is act as a main container for the entire loan calculator so instead of that first we need to add the background color so we are going to use the background color which is like pure white so it is like hashtag fff you can see now the pure white color is applied to the main calculator container then we need to add the border radius so border radius it is going to be like 8 pixel okay and then we need to add the border so border is going to like one pixel solid border and then we need to provide the color which is like hashtag ccc which is like a black border and then we need to provide the padding so padding from top and bottom it is going to be like uh, 10 pixel and from left and right it is going to be like 40 pixel so you can see now the padding is applied to the application even you can increase the padding from the left and right if you want but 40 pixel looks great okay so that marks the completion for the calculator container for the loan calculator then we need to actually style these input elements 
so for that first we need to select the input group which is the main division container for the every element which is this input group you can see right now we have three input groups defined inside the three different tags so input and then we need to specify the group so input group and we need to specify the margin bottom property to 15 pixel so you can see the margin is supplied now under the input group we need to select the like our label so label and then we need to add the display property so display is going to be like block and after that we need to provide the margin bottom property which is to be 5 pixel so you can see now they are actually in a form of column then we need to increase the width of these input elements so for that again we need to actually here select the input group under the input group we need to select the input type and then we need to increase its width to 100% like percentage symbol if i save it then you can see the width is now increased to 100 percent then we need to add the padding property so padding from all side it is going to be like 8 pixel and then we need to add the border so like our border property border 1 pixel then we need to add the solid border solid border and then hashtag 3 times c so this will add a solid border to the input groups then we need to add the border radius because right now their edges are not rounded means their corners so we want a rounded corner so for that we applied a border radius property to 4 pixel so this is for the input groups under the input means the input style under the input class after that we need to style the button which is the which will be used to actually style the element so the first thing is we need to add the display to block so the display block is not applied to button okay so now let's see let's see the final version so yeah display block so it is not actually coming back to the center so it is not required a display block i'm going to add the here a margin property so margin is like zero and then we need to provide here a auto if i do that then still it is not going to do that so again i'm going to add here a padding property so padding is going to act 10 pixel and then from left and right it is going to 20 pixel then we need to add here a like a border property so border it is going to be like none and then we need to add here a border radius border radius it is going to be like 4 pixel and then we need to add here a color property so color it is going to like pure white this is a hashtag FFF which gives the white color then we need to add the background color so background color is like 4CA and then F50 a green color and then we need to change the cursor to pointer but still the button is not coming to the center of the scene so I think we need to use the display property to block now the button is coming to the center of the container the next we need to actually provide the style for this final result element which will be used to display the results and the information of the loan amount and the monthly payment so for that we need to provide a result because it is an id so we have used here a hashtag hash character not the hash tag this is because of the instagram margin top is going to like 20 pixel okay and after that we need to add here a padding property padding and padding is from all sides going to like 10 pixel then we need to add here a background color so background color is like f9 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 and finally we need to add here a border property border one solid and hashtag three times c you can see there is a border is applied then we need to add the border radius so border radius is going to like 4 pixel okay so there is a light border is applied because we want to display the final result in this particular one okay so that's marks the completion of the code for the css part so our next step is to start with the javascript part of the loan calculator application so now it's time to start with the javascript part of the loan calculator application so for that we need to use the script.js file Instead of that, first we need to create the function because inside the button, if you see, 
we have added here a calculate BTN. So we need to add a listener to this particular button and then inside the listener we need to call a function. So first we are going to set the listener and then we will define the function code. So here first we need to get the ID of the button. So here I will be typing document document dot get element by ID because we have used the ID in the buttons. So again we need to copy the ID name. So I am going to copy it and just coming back to the script or JS and pasting the ID name here. And after that I am going to add the listener which is add event listener. So we are going to listen to the click event. So here I will be specifying the click and then we need to pass here a function which is calculate loan. So this function we need to create here. So I am going to terminate it and then I will be here specifying the function then calculate long which is the function name and then we need to specify the body. Now inside of this particular function we need to get the ids of these three elements. So here we need to type the again const. So the first one is actually a loan amount. So this is actually equals to document dot get element by id and again we need to provide the id and also we need to get the value. So here we need to use the value attribute means the value. We want to get the values of these input types. Now inside of the double quotes we need to provide the id of the loan amount input type. So the id of the loan amount input is actually the loan amount input. So we need to paste this id and then we need to wrap this entire code inside the parse float function just like we have done in the previous projects. So here I will be pasting the code because we need to actually pass it into the float. The reason for that because the input element value is treated as a string. So that is the reason because you need to just simply search for it why we are actually using here a value. It's not a very hardest thing and I have explained in the previous project as well. Then I duplicate the code into multiple times means two more times and then I will be changing here the variable names and also the id name. So this one is going to be the interest rate and the third one is actually the loan term. This is actually the duration of the loan which is in months. Then we need to provide the ids. So again I am going to copy this one here and paste in the name of the id. Then copy the loan term input id and paste it here. Now we get the values of all of the three variables, it's time to check whether these values are actually properly entered, means we don't want to enter here a string value. So for that we need to add a check. So here we need to specify the if condition and starting the block of the if and also the block code of the if. Then we are going to use here a is main function. Instead of that first we need to pass the loan amount and then here either of them is actually incorrect, means it is not a number value. Then we want to display this an alert box. So if I enter here an uh, interest rate and again if I use here a logical or operator again is MAN function is MAN and then here inside that we need to provide the loan term. So if it is an input to values means so if the values are not a number values then we want to display a message which is like so here we are going to display the alert if the values are not properly entered so if i control save it and if i click on the button then you can see please enter the valid numbers for all fields if you leave it all of them are empty and if you enter here like uh, look it is not going to accept a text if you enter here a special symbol it is not going to accept it so we added a condition for the empty values as well so after that we need to add the other lines of code after the end of the if statement here we need to first calculate the monthly interest. We need to here create a couple of variables. So first is actually the monthly monthly interest is equal to and the first we are actually need to interest rate. We need to divide it into 100. So 100 and then we need to actually divide it with the 12. So first we are actually converting the interest rate to a decimal value, a simple value and then we are going to actually divide it with the 12 because we have actually 12 months so we get the monthly interest because this is actually an annual interest rate so we need to convert it into monthly interest rate because that will be used when calculating the monthly payment 
then we need to create the another variable const so this is actually our total payments total payments is equal to so it is actually the long term that is the duration of the loan which is 24 month 36 month depending upon the number of months that you specified in this particular input field so that will be treated as a total payment value then we need to create the monthly payment variable so this variable is also required for the calculation of the total interest so we need to calculate the monthly so here i have made a typo it's actually a const so the first thing is we need to start the brackets so here we need to specify the loan amount which is the main amount of the entire loan and then we need to actually use here a monthly interest then we need to here calculate the denominator part so it is actually a formula which i used so it is like math dot p o w power function and then we need to actually here use the summation next summation value which is monthly interest and then we need to provide here a comma and also i am going to here use the word wrap so that the code will be came out automatically in the next line and then we need to minus it with the total payment so this is a formula that will be used to calculate the monthly payment so it is actually a part of the accounting so i am not actually going to explain the accounting stuff because i google it this particular formula and convert it into this particular format so that i can calculate the exact same loan just like a web application did in the bankrate.com i have shown you in the preview part of the video now after getting the monthly payment then we need to calculate the total interest so for total interest again we need to here create the variable cost so it is like the total interest and then we need to here again use the braces and first we need to here provide the monthly payment which is actually the we have calculated it here monthly payment multiplied with the total payment because monthly payment and total payment we need to multiply it and then we need to minus the loan amount so we get our total interest that we want to pay then we need to pass these values to the display function so here i will be calling a new function this is a user defined function that we need to create here display result display result inside of that we need to pass the two values which is the monthly payment and then also we need to pass the total interest you can also pass the like loan amount we don't to display the total loan amount but i'm actually going to just only display the monthly payment and the total interest now it's time to create this display result function so coming outside of this particular function which is the calculate loan function so here we'll be using the function keyword then display result and then this is going to accept two parameters so first we need to define these parameters which is like our monthly payment so i'm going to use the same variable names monthly payments and total interest and after that i will be here creating a variable const which is for the result div result div so first we need to get the id of this particular final result div which is the document dot get element by id and then we need to provide the id so it is actually a result if i check it here index.html so yes it is a result all right so we have get the id of the result element and after that we need to update its inner html which is result dot div dot inner html and then i will be using here a template string which is a character at the top of your tab key on the keyboard so i'm going to terminate this and then i will be here split this code into multiple lines so here i will be using a paragraph element so that the code will look more clear so paragraph element and then i want to display it in the strong so i am also going to use the strong strong tag then i am going to copy this and paste it one more time so that we can get the closing tag as well All right and instead of that first i am going to construct the message monthly payment colon and then we need to use a dollar symbol then the curly brackets and the variable value that we want to display which is the monthly payment and of course we need to use here a two fixed because it is going to display the lots of decimal values so two fixed and then we need to specify here a two 
all right and similarly i need to duplicate into one more time and this is actually the total interest total interest and then here we need to provide the total interest all right so i'm going to save it it's time to check whether the application successfully able to display the result or not so i'm going to use here a five thousand dollar interest rate is going to be like 4.5 percent loan tenure is like 24 months and you can see this is how the application is working if i go to the bank rate so you can see this is the bank rate loan calculator if i maximize it and uh, just split the code into multiple lines this is the one that we have developed this is the final version of the application that we that i already developed so now it's time to check whether the application is uh, so we are going to add this same values so loan amount five thousand dollar loan term in months so i'm going to add here a 60 months and then the rate of interest uh, i will be increased to like eight uh, percent so you can see now the monthly payment is 101.38 dollar if i click on this then you can see actually the interest rate is 4.5 so i am going to change the interest rate to eight percent click on calculate then you can see now the formula calculate the same values just like the real application of this bankrate.com website so that's it for this particular module guys we have successfully developed the loan calculator application all right so if you are like this entire model then make sure to leave a review so thank you for watching see you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone and welcome back to this lecture so in this lecture we are going to build the tip calculator application so this is the final version of the application so you can see it has this nice black card effect that has this particular tip calculator heading then we have this particular line and we have these input types so whenever i click on the input type and you can see it's become active by just changing its basic color focus state and then we if we select the select which is the options then you can see its color is also changed similarly for this number of people input type and also for this mail type if i click on this calculate it has this nice hover effect if i click on calculate then you can see it show the error message please enter valid numbers so this is the same element in which we are going to display the final result as well and if the values are not properly entered it is going to display the error message here at the result container so if i enter here a like 500 dollar the bill amount and if i select the service rating poor and if i enter here five number of people's and if i select the break power if i click on calculate then you can see the tip amount is 25 dollar and every person need to pay 105 dollar which is the total amount per person and if i select the lunch then the tip amount will remain same but in case of dinner the tip amount will be changed like it will become 30 dollar now if you select the service like average and if i select here a breakfast if i click on calculate then it's going to actually increase the tip in case of the lunch it is also like 50 dollar but in case of dinner it is going to change like there is a five dollar more than the other two meal type if i select here a good and if i click on next change the meal type to breakfast and if i click on calculate then you can see now the tip amount is 75 dollar if i select the lunch then again the tip amount is 75 dollar because the lunch and the breakfast shares the same logic now if i select the dinner after clicking on the dinner then we get the 80 dollar as a tip and the amount per person is 120 dollar now if i select the service rating excellent and if i select the breakfast click on calculate then now the tip amount become $100 and every person need to pay $120 if I select here a lunch click on calculate then you can say things will be um, same but in case of dinner the tip amount is actually now changes to $105 so we will learn how to add these kinds of conditions especially in case of the meal type categories in case of dinner so we will build this entire application in this module so our first step is to start with the html part for this particular tip calculator application so next time to start with the html part of the project so for that we need to use the index.html standard css and script.js file these files i have already created to save a little bit of the time and i have also launched the files means the project inside my web browser you can see right now this is a tip calculator and i have also opened the final version of the application which is the tip calculator that we actually want to develop and i have linked the css file and also the javascript file 
to save the time. Now the first thing is we need to actually wrap the entire code inside the container just like we have did in many of the previous applications. So right now just I'm going to make some room here and then first I will be here using the container. And then inside of the container I will be place the rest of the code. So the first thing is we need a heading so for that we will be using the h1 element so it is like tip calculator tip calculator so if i actually come to the version of our own application which is now you can see the heading is visible to the screen and after that i will be adding here another division element this is for the input group so we have actually four input groups the first is the build amount second is the service rating third is the number of people four is the mail type so we have to create four different input groups all of them having the same class name input group so coming to the other version of the tip calculator and inside of that inside the index.html i'm going to place here a class which is input group okay and uh, after that here we need to specify the label so the label value is actually like bill amount and then inside of that because it is a label so we don't need to specify any id or class we are going to directly select the label by using its tag name and then here we need to display the label which is label amount all right if i control save it then you can see now the bill amount label is appeared to the screen and then we need to add here an input so the input type we are going to use here a number and then we need to here use the id which is bill amount okay and then we need to add the placeholder so the placeholder enter the bill amount okay so this will be the bill amount for the placeholder text so that's marks the completion of the first input group then we need to create the another input group so i'm going to here again create the division element division and then we need to specify the class name class then input group and after that we need to here use the another label like because we want to display the label so that is why we need to use the label so this one is for the service service rating okay so this will be used for the service rating then the label that we want to display is the service rating actually we want a capital one here service rating and also there is a space should be applied and then a colon instead of that we need to use the select tag because if you see the final version of the application it is actually a select that has four options so for that we need to here use the select tag so again here i will be using the select select tag then we need to specify the id because we don't need a name here so i'm going to specify the id as service rating okay so this id will be used inside the javascript part and inside the select tag we need to create the option so the first option is like our poor option so the value that i want to give is one and the text that i want to display inside this particular option is the poor then i'm going to duplicate it to three more times and i'm going to increase the value to two means change the value to two then three then four and here i will be displaying the like a service rating label means the option average and then here I will be using the good and then inside of that I will be using the XC length okay so that's much the completion for the second input type okay and then it's time to create the third input type which is this particular one which is this particular one which is for the number of people so coming back to the our own version of the application and then coming back to the index.html so here I will be creating another div tag and inside of that i will be using the class input group then we need to provide the label so the label for we are going to use here a split split count now this split count is actually a number of people so it is like here we are going to display the number number of people okay and then we need to here provide the input type which is like again a number and then we need to here provide the id split count and then we need to provide the placeholder text placeholder text which is enter the number of people okay so this is for the placeholder text for this particular input type 
so that marks the completion of the input type for the select to count which is the third input group then we need to create the fourth input group which is the mail type so i'm going to copy even i just going to remove the copy one i'm going to type it i don't want to copy because sometimes copy gets problem so here i will be using the input group instead of that i will be using the label and this one is for the mail type so mail type and then we need to actually here provide the text which is mail type all right and then we need to here use the select so it's like select tag instead of that we don't need a name we need to provide the id so the id is going to be like mail type instead of that we are going to provide the options so we are going to provide only three options breakfast lunch and dinner so this one is going to have a value which is like breakfast and then the text that we want to display to our option which is also a break fast okay and then we need to actually duplicate in two two more times and here i will be changing it to lunch also the value i will be changing it to lunch and then we need to actually change the id here which is like dinner and then here we also need to change it to dinner all right so now we are actually successfully able to create our four all the input groups which is the four main input groups it's time to create the result section for this particular application because the result section in which we are going to display the result so if i actually enter some amount here and if i enter a number of people and breakfast and if i click on so we are actually want to add these three elements as well all of these three are actually a division element and this button and then this particular heading element so again coming back to the index.html so here after the input group when the input group is completed we need to actually create here another division so i'm going to name this division as my class and this is for the result division instead of that i will be using the first h2 element so this will be the result we need to provide here a division element so we need to provide the id so it is actually a tip amount all right and we don't want to display anything then again i'm going to actually duplicate into two more times and here i will be using the total amount and then if this one is for the amount per person so this is for the result part then we want to place the button so make sure you are inside the main container that has all the other elements placed means inside of the container we have placed all the other elements so the last element that we want is the button so we want to provide the button with an id which is like calculate calculate btn and here we need to provide the text calculate okay so that's marks the completion of the code for the entire html part for the tip calculator application now from the next video onwards we are going to start with this css part for this tip calculator application next time to start with the css part for this particular tip calculator application so for that we need to use the standard css file now instead of this particular file first we need to select the body selector which is the main selector so inside of the body we need to use the font family because we are going to change the font so i will be using here a arial helvetica font which i use mostly in many of the applications control save it then you can see the font is now changed after that i need to here change the background color so the background color i will be using here like 4f and it's like 4657 so this will be the color that i will be used for the background and after that i will be here resetting the margin to zero and also the padding to zero control save it and you can see down the padding and the margin is reset okay and so that is for all the code inside the body element after that we need to specify the code inside the container and inside of the container first we need to specify the max width so max width is going to be 500 pixel 
and then to provide the margin property so margin is going to the 150 pixel and from left and right it is going to auto so you can see now the content is actually shifted to the center of the browser all right and after that we need to here use the padding property so padding is going to like 20 pixel and then i need to provide here a background color so background background color this is the one so it is going to like 25 25 and 25 which is a like a little bit of the black and combination of gray and then we need to add the here uh, border radius property so border radius i will be using here 8 pixels and then i need to provide here a box shadow so box shadow is going to like 0 pixel 4 pixels and the blurness is going to like 10 pixel then to provide the rgb value which is 0 0 0 and the alpha is going to like 0 0.4 then you can see now it's having this uh, little bit of the 3d look to this particular tip calculator okay so after the container code we need to actually select the h1 element inside of the h1 element first we need to change the text alignment so we need to set the text alignment to center and then we need to change the color so color we are going to display the white one because the background is darker that is the reason we want to display the color to black then we need to provide the padding oh, from bottom means we want to actually provide some padding to bottom which is like 20 pixel all right and then i want to here provide the margin bottom property so margin bottom is going to like 30 pixel and after that we want to provide the like uh, border bottom because we want to provide the border bottom property just because we want to display this particular line so that is the reason we have to provide here a property called border bottom so we want a two pixel border of a solid and then we want to provide the color so color is going to be hashtag f2 f2 if i control save it then you can see now the border is applied if you just want to decrease the size you just need to remove the like uh, 20 pixel or i can just go with this one which is a padding you can see now the line is actually move which is a border bottom but i want to just uh, do it with the 20 pixel it looks great okay and if i just reduce the window size of the visual studio code so after the code inside the h1 element we need to style the other element which is the input group which is the main group if you actually see inside the index.html you can see this is the first second third and fourth so these are the four input groups that we want to style so it is a class selector so we need to use the dot and then the name of the input which is the input group and instead of that we need to provide the property which is margin bottom which is 20 pixel you can see now there is a margin is applied to all of these particular elements then we need to provide here an input group and then we need to provide here a label instead of that we need to provide the display block and after that we need to provide the margin bottom property to 10 pixel and here we need to provide the color which is like hashtag fff so this is the color that will be used for the labels and then we need to add here the font weight so font weight we want to increase the font weight to bold okay so now it's become bold the labels so that is all the for the input group label the next we need to actually select the again input group and inside of that we need to select the input elements which is this one these input elements and also we need to select the select element so again we are going to use the input group and then we just select the select tag the and then we need to start the block of the code instead of that we need to specify the width so width is going to like 94 percent and then we need to provide the padding so padding is going to like 12 pixel control save it then you can see now the padding is changed and also the width but there is a problem in this particular select one don't worry we are going to fix it First, we need to provide the style for this entire code structure, which is this input group input and input group select. After that, we need to provide the font size property. So, font size is going to like 16 pixel. Then the border property. So, border is going to like 2 pixel. Solid. And then here we need to provide the C50752. So, this will be the color code we are going to use for the border. 
then we want a rounded border so for that we need to use the border radius property so border radius is going to 5 pixel okay then we want to actually change the colors so we actually want to here provide the background color so the background color we are going to use it like uh, this particular one which is hash symbol 2525 and 25 now you can see the color is actually changed which is like almost similar color to this particular body element means this particular container means the same color that we have used inside the container element okay after that applying the border color then we want to apply the font color means we want to change the font color so for that we need to use the font property so if i enter the text here if i enter here number then you can see now it's become white okay so this is what we actually want to do here now we need to fix this particular issue because right now these are not same having the same width like this one so for that we need to again select the input select group means input group select and then we need to here provide the width property so this is going to override the width so we are going to provide here 100 percent width now you can see all of them having the same dimension width now we need to actually remove this arrow that in the part of the beginning preview in the preview part i told you and also we want to implement this particular effect because in the final version you can see there is no arrows so we want to remove these arrows as well and also we want to change this particular focus state of the input elements so for that we have to write some more code to this particular input group elements so first here we need to select the input group then we need to select the input and then we need to here use the pseudo classes so it is like web kit and a web if we need to type it here entire web kit then we need to use the outer spin button so this is the outer spin button and then again we need to call here for the web kit inner spin button so it is like dot again we need to use here a dot input group and again we need to select the input and dot symbol then again we need to use the web kit which is inner spin button then we need to select the entire code and then we need to here use the web kit again so web kit and it is actually for the appearance so we need to type here a web kit so it is like appearance and then we need to provide the none so after specifying the web appearance none then you can see the content is actually changed means the arrow is actually gone all right and after that we need to specify the code for this appearance of the text field means the focus state of this input type so for that we need to again select the input so input group and then here we need to select the input and then at this point of time we want to use the focus pseudo class so focus and here we need to provide the outline to none and then we need to change the border color so border color so the border color we are going to use here as symbol 7 e and this is the color i have actually noted into my notepad so this will be the color so if i now hover over it then you can see it's actually now changing all right you can see it is actually changing this is what we actually want to implement also we want to apply the same effect to the select one so here you need to specify the comma and uh, specify the comma and then you need to add here like dot input group and then to select the select which is a select tag and then the focus save it then this will be applied to the selection one also okay so that is for the code for the input type and the selection types now the next we need to actually style the result elements so for that we need to here use the result because it is a class so again we need to use the dot and the name of the selector then the first thing is we need to provide the margin top property which is 30 pixel and then we need to provide the border top property because we want to display this particular line like divisions so for that we need to use the border top property so again we am going to use here a 2 pixel solid border and then i will be providing the color which is f2 f2 and f2 save it if i save it then i think the class is not applied i think so maybe uh, there is a problem in the result section so this is the result 
I come back to the standard CSS, it is actually the result, margin top, I have added the border top, 2 pixels solid border, but it is not visible. Okay, so let me first complete the code because we need to add here, I think, a padding property. So padding from top is like 20 pixel. So actually it is not visible here. Okay, so the border is actually not coming here if I enter here a like different code like border. So here actually I made a typo in the spelling name. It's like a solid. That is the reason the border is not coming here. So you can see now the problem is fixed because I have made a spelling mistake in this solid. Okay, now the border is coming. Now the next we need to actually style this h1 element which is the heading element means the h2 element a heading element. So under the result. We want to select the h2 element and we want to change its style so the first thing is we want to provide the margin bottom property which is 15 pixel and then we want to provide the border like uh, border no we want to provide the color because right now it is actually appearing black so we want to provide the white color now you can see the color is changed actually the color is not applied actually we have used here a counter reset we need to here use the color so this is the color code now the color is changed and after that we need to provide the code for these divisions like these old divisions code okay so we need to select the result again and under that we need to select the division element instead of that we need to select the margin bottom so margin bottom is going to like 10 pixel okay so you just open our own version of the application if i just enter here some dummy text here, so that we can see some output here Okay, so these are the things that we want to style coming back to the style.css and here we need to provide the color because we want to display it in the white because the background is dark all right so that is for the division now the last thing we need to actually provide the code for this button so for that we need to use the hash symbol because we have specified the id to the button which is an id selector so here I will be using the padding. So from top and bottom, I will be providing 12 pixel, and from left and right, it is going to be 20 pixel. And you can see the size of the button is changed. Then we need to provide the background color. So background color is going to be like uh, C50752. This will be the color used for the background. Then we are going to use the border radius property. So border radius is going to like 5 pixel. Then we want to remove the border. So border is going to be none. And then we want to change the color. So color is going to be like a white color. You can see here. And then we also need to change the cursor property. So cursor is going to be like pointer. And we want to apply the transition property. So transition property we want to apply to the background color. So this is the transition property. And actually we want to remove the colon. So this is a background color and it is going for 0.3 s is when we are going to use it then we need to provide the hover state to this particular button so here i will be closing the code for the button and then colon and then there's going to be the hover so this is for the background color and then they have symbol 031 b control save it and if i hover over the button then you can see down the color is changed also we have applied the style to all of these division elements now i'm going to remove all of this particular text because it is not required anymore because we are going to update this particular content by using the javascript okay so now we have done with the designing part of the tip calculator application in the next part we are going to start with the javascript part Now it's time to start with the javascript part for this particular tip calculator application. So for that we need to use the script.js file. So instead of that first we need to get the ids of all of these particular input types and initialize it into variables. So first I'm going to here actually create a calculate tip function because right now it is a button so we want to add a listener to the button and then we want to actually create the function which is called calculate tip so here inside the javascript first i will be creating a calculate calculate tip function so it is a function which all the logic for the 
step calculation will be added and then we need to add the variable which is like uh, cost which is like our calculate button calculate ptn it's equal to document dot get element by id and then here also i'm going to add the listener or i can just simply going to add the listener at the variable which is this particular calculate ptn or you can even do it like this approach if you want a different version like if i just get the id of the calculate ptn paste the id and then i will be set here the listener okay and then we want to listen to the click listener of the button and we want to here use the calculate tip callback okay so this will be the and inside of that i will be using the console log statement which is just to show the check check and if i just simply here save it and open the console by pressing the f12 in the browser and if i click on the button so you can see now the function is actually working fine so it means that our code is working okay now inside of this particular function we need to get the ids of all of these four input types and also these particular three list variables means under the result we have three divisions we also need to fetch the ids of that ones so first time we'll be here using the const so const and this one is for the bill amount bill amount input and it is actually equals to document dot get element by id and then we need to actually initialize the values so instead of that we will be adding the value like a bill amount so this is the id for the bill amount this is the id for the bill amount and after that i will be here using the const then it is for the service rating service rating select okay so this is for the service rating select so we need to get the id of that one also so document dot get element by id and then we need to get the id of this particular service select list so this is id service rating and here service rating okay and after that we need to create the another variable which is const and split split count type which is for the number of people the third input type group so this is also for the document dot get element by id and instead of that we need to provide the id which is split count so let us see the id this is the id split count i pasted it here and then we need to create the fourth variable initialization which is meal type input okay so meal type input this is split count or i can here just type the split count input okay and this is for the service rating select this is meal type select because it is a select input type okay select and then document dot get element by id because it is an input type and it is actually a select so that is why i actually named it like this one so that whenever i read a code i can easily understand what is actually going on and here the breakfast which is this one the select id is mail type so we need to specify the id here mail type okay so we are actually initialize the ids of all the four elements next we need to get the ids of these all the result element which is tip amount total amount and amount so it is actually a spelling mistake amount per person so coming back to the script.js file again so here again we need to create the variable const const and it is actually a tip amount output because in which we are going to display the output so it is document dot get element dot get animation it is actually get element by id and instead of that we need to provide the tip amount make sure the id is same yes and then we need to provide the total amount so i'm going to duplicate into two more times this is the total amount and here i will be adding the total amount 
then the amount per person copy it and here we need to replace the id and also we need to replace the id here amount per person output so we fetch the ids of all the other three output elements also and initialized into the variables now we need to actually convert the values of these input variables into float one because you already know that the by default whenever we get the values of the form elements means input elements it actually treated as a string so we are actually working here with the numbers so we need to actually convert it into parse float or parse and function so here again i need to create some variables const and i will be here using a different approach bill amount which is like parse float and here instead of that we need to pass the bill amount variable which is this one bill amount input and we need to actually get its dot value all right so this is for the parse float then again we, i'm going to duplicate into one more time and this one is actually our service rating okay so this is a service rating and here we need to provide the service rating select value then we need to create the another variable so it is like a const and this one is for the split count and this one is also like parse int because it is a num numeric value person can't be like in a float value so that is the reason here i will be using the parse int instead of that we need to provide the split count input dot value all right and after that we need to create the another variable which is a const mail type mail type which is equals to so it is actually a string uh, so according to that we want to display the result so it is mail type mail type which is mail type select dot value so we want to initialize the values now we actually able to enter these values means we now convert these values and after that we need to add the conditions for the empty inputs so we need to add the conditions for the invalid inputs as well so here i will be using the is nn function instead of that i will be passing here a bill amount then we need to use the logical or operator instead of that again i will be calling the is nn and then inside this particular is nn i will be passing the service rating after that again i will be using the logical or operator and then again is nn not is finite is nn and again instead of that i will be passing the split count function means the split count variable value so if it is not then we want to update the only one tip amount division element with text content to like please so we want to display an error message please enter valid values okay so we want to display or i can say that please enter valid numbers so this is the message and also we want to actually total amount which is this one we want to update its text content to empty string and then the final amount which is amount per person is equal to text content to empty one so it is like terminated and also it is totally optional okay so we added the conditions for the invalid inputs then we want to return from this if there is any input invalid okay and after that if there is a valid input then we want to calculate the tip so for that we need to use the let because this variable value will be initialized many times according to the conditions so for using the conditions i will be here using the switch case statement all right and instead of that i will be passing the variable value which is service rating so according to the service rating we want to need to create different cases so there are actually four service rating which is value one two three four so this switch case will also started like case one two three four so that is the reason according to that so case one denotes the first service rating which is the poor one okay so here we want to add the tip to bill amount so we are going to multiply the bill amount with this particular 0 .0, 0 0.005 dollars okay and then we need to add the break similarly i am going to copy this particular case code paste it and i will be using this one 
okay so this is what actually we want to do and then i will be here using the case 2 this is the case 3 this is the case 4 here we need to change the value so it will be an increment of 0.10 dollars here it will be the increment of 0.15 dollars and here it will be the increment of 0.20 dollars all right so this is what and then we also need to terminate this break once okay nice and we need to display here tabs as well so that our code gets properly indented okay so that marks the completion of the code for the switch case statement and after that we need to actually calculate here the final value so let total amount which is a total amount variable that is uh, we are actually we need to initialize the total amount variable so we need to calculate the total bill amount plus the pay because the total amount will be the bill amount provided by the this particular input value and then we need to add it with the tip that we have calculated according to the this particular switch case logic okay and also we need to create the amount per person so amount per person is equal to total amount which is a uh, we have calculated total amount divided by according to the split amount so split amount is actually the number of so this is the value not split amount it is actually a split count which is the value of this particular variable okay split count which is an integer value which will divide the amount per person after that we need to add the condition for the dinner one so that whenever we select a dinner there should be an increment of the five dollar so here we need to check for the if meal type equals to equals to dinner which is a text present inside the case value if meal type is equal to dinner then we want to add the tip is equal to and then we also need to initialize and perform the addition as well with the five dollar and then we also need to increment the total amount with again with the five value and again we need to perform the amount per person plus equals to and then we need to provide the five so in case of dinner we want to increase the tip amount to five dollar and also the total amount and also the amount per person now it's time to set all of these values to the these particular divisions by updating its text content so after the if statement here we need to add the tip amount output which is text content is equal to so here we need to actually use the template string so instead of that i will be first using the tip and colon and i will be using here a dollar and then again a dollar and then the curly brackets so this outside dollar will be treated as a string and this is for the template string value so we want to use the tip dot to fixed function so that after the decimal we only want to display the two zeros means two decimal values so two fixed okay and then we need to terminate it and then again i'm going to duplicate into two more time and here i will be changing the value to tip amount to total amount output okay so the total amount output and this one is for the amount per person output that is this one and then here we need to add the amount per person so if i go to view and word wrap this is the code amount per person okay and then here we need to actually change the value to total total amount okay so now the code is completed so if i control save it and come back to the browser if i enter here 500 dollar selecting the service to poor and enter the value 5 or i can enter like 6 selecting the breakfast and click on result then you can see now we are successfully able to see the results which is the tip amount is 250 dollar total amount is 250 dollar and amount per person is 250 dollar so there is a problem the reason for that is actually i have not updated the inner variable value so here we need to use the total amount so total amount dot to fixed and then here we need to use the amount per person 
dot to fix it now the problem is fixed if i control save it and come back to the browser so if i enter here 500 dollar and selecting this service poor and then number of people is going to be five and i'm going to select the meal type as breakfast if i click on calculate then you can see the tip amount is 25 the total amount is 525 dollar and the amount per person is 105 dollar now if i select the service rating average if i click on it then you can see now the second case is actually implemented which is this particular case 50 dollar and if i select the like service rating good now this particular case is executed and if i select the excellent then this particular service is executed means this particular case is executed which is for the fourth service rating now if i select here a dinner click on it then you can see there is a five dollar increment and if i just select the good one still there is a dinner then there is a five dollar still increment and if i select here a average then you can see there is a still five dollar increment if i select here a poor then they say so the application is working fine guys so that's now the completion of the entire module for the tip calculator application so if you like this entire module then please leave a review because your review definitely going to help me to reach more students so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you very much welcome back to this lecture so in this lecture we will be building a digital clock application by using javascript so let me first show you the application that we are going to build in this whole lecture so this is the application that we are going to build so you can see this has a nice looking this box like structure that has rounded corners and digital lock and then this is the timer that is currently working on so this is our hours and this is for the like minutes and then we have this seconds so we are going to build this application then we are going to style this particular if like uh, design this is a little bit tricky so we are going to work with the css part as well so our first step is to start with the html part of the project so here you can see I have already created three files inside this particular folder which is digital clock web. So inside of that I have created the index.html file with some boilerplate code and then we have empty style.css file and then script.js file. I'm going to place HTML ellipse. So I'm going to just simply adjust my viewport a little bit so that you can see the whenever I type the code and I will show you the output as well and then inside the body First, I'm going to add the code. Okay, so the first thing is we need to add the container. So I'm using here the emit plugin feature. So it will give me the container. Okay. And inside of that, I will be using the like another element which is for the card. So I'm going to here using the two different approaches, one for the card and one for the container. So I'll specify the class as card. So this is the main card that we are actually going to use it. Okay, so this will be the main card and inside of that I will be placing the h1 element which is the digital clock and then I save it and if I use the go live plugin then it's going to show the output with the h1 element which is digital clock and after that digital clock we need to place the another div which is used for the like container so this will be the clock div inside of that we are going to place this five span elements okay so again i need to type here div and then i will be specifying the class as clock so this will be like our clock and inside of that we need to add five span elements so i'm going to here use five span element by multiplying it with five if i press enter then you can see i got five span elements like maintain it then i need to specify the class so it's going to be the class and it's going to like time element so i'm going to copy this code here by control c and then i will be pasting it here and then after that i will be pasting it here in the if i save it and if i go here and you can see nothing is appearing so i'm going to place here zero zero and also zero zero and then here also zero zero and if i control save it then you can see we are now we need to specify the colon as well right now you can see this colon so for that i will be using here this and so this span element will be used and also i'm going to provide the class here but later on in the css part we are going to actually modify its style a little bit okay and then i'm going to here write the colon element and then i'm also going to copy this class and paste it here inside of this one as well then you can see this is now the colon is appearing so this is all for the css part of this particular project which is digital clock application 
So our next step is to add the style sheet code for this digital clock application. So now we are going to start with the CSS part of this project, which is our digital clock application. So for that, we need to use the style.css file. So right now you can see inside our style.css file, nothing is actually typed. So the first element that we are going to style is the container element. This is the, this main container that act as a parent for the other elements. So we are going to start with the first container. So here I am going to type in the container. And then I'm going to start the block of the container. Also, I'm going to close verify the name of the container. I'm going to copy this and I will be pasting it here so that it doesn't give me any error. Okay, the first property that we need is actually the display property. So display, I'm going to use the flex. If I do that, then you can see both of the elements is now pairing in the single row. Then after that, I need to provide the flex direction property. So flex direction, I'm going to provide the column. Okay, and then after that, I will using here a justify content is actually going to be center. If I save it and then align items is actually going to be the center. So now you can see they are actually appearing at the center of the screen. Okay, so that is why I did that. Where is our window? This is the window. I actually forgot to resize it again. So I'm going to resize it and so that you can see the code output while I'm typing it inside the CSS part. Okay, and next property, we actually need to specify the height. So height is going to like 100 VH, which is view height. Okay, and if I control save it, then you can see this is now perfectly at the center of the screen. And then after that, we need to specify the background color. So background color, here will be using the hexadecimal notation code, which is the D3. Not add the right, it's like D3 and capital D and capital D3. So this will be the color code we are going to use for the container. Now you can see, you can see the default styling of the browser, which is the body element. So we need to style the default style of the body means restyle it or you can say that the remove the default style of the browser from the body. So to do that, for, for that we need to select the body selector. So I'm going to select the body selector at the top and modify its content so the first thing is we need to use the margin property so here i will be using the margin is actually going for the zero and then padding is actually zero and then i need to use the border style property border style is going to like box border and i can say that the border box okay so if i save it then you can see the padding is the default styling is removed so that we actually want. Now the next step is we need to style the card element, which will be the main card so that we can make the our application look like this. So for that, we need to select the card. So here I will be using the dot card card and then opening the body of the card element. Instead of that, first I need to specify the background color. So background color is going to be like hashtag FFF, which is for the complete white. Okay, so this will be our card element and instead of that first I also need to specify the border property. So border radius is going to like 13 pixel and then I need to specify the box shadow. So box shadow is like 0 pixel and then 0 pixel and then from 10 pixel we actually want it and I will be using here RGBA function which is 0, 0, 0 and then here I will be using 0 0.5. If I save it then you can see we have then you can see this is the this is actually not styled we are going to do that also but first we need to style the this card and the h1 element we are going to style one by one and later on our application will look like this okay the application that we want to build and after that we need to add the border property as well so for the border i will be using here two pixel border which is a solid border and the color is going to be like hashtag 632 and we have df8 so this will be the color we are going to use for the border and after that I'm going to here specify the max width property so max width is going to be like 400 pixel okay now after specifying the max width property you can see this card has a border as well the rounded border but there is a one problem you can see these timer elements which is our span element is not appearing inside the card the reason for that is actually 
we have actually forgot to add it inside the card element because right now this is a separate two elements so we need to add this block div inside this card div as well so i'm going to just simply cut this code from here and paste it inside the card div because these two are the child of the card then it will be inside the card and if i save it then you can see now the timer elements is appearing inside the card one okay so now it's time to style the h1 element because we have fixed the problem so the first thing is we need to select the h1 element so i'm directly going to select with the tag selector name and inside of that first i need to specify the font size but there is no need to specify the font size because h1 has a maximum height and width so we are going to ignore this property right now i just use it for the experimental purpose so text design property i'm going to use this center and after that i'm here using the background property so background is going to be like uh, okay so here i actually need to use the background color because we are not using the any image okay so we are using here a background color so the color we are going to use this same color which is this blue one because we are going to use the same the border that we have specified you can see this is the color we get it now we need to modify it so the first is we need to add the another property which is padding from top so padding from top is going to like 10 pixel and then padding from bottom also is going to like 10 pixels so i have actually don't used here a shorthand property of the css i just simply specifying the property manually because i need to adjust it if i do that then you can see this is actually appearing at the screen of as well so don't worry we are going to fix it one by one you can see this is the corner is appearing this is not a corner for this one this is actually the border corners we are going to fix all of this one by one and then we need to add the margin bottom property so margin bottom is going to like 10 pixel and then we need to use the overflow so it's going to be like hidden so once i do that then you can see overflow hidden property is actually displaying its result and then we need to specify the color so color i'm using here a white color which is FFF and then we are getting the here a white color of the digital clock okay guys and then after that here we need to use the border radius property so the border radius is going to like 10 pixel and then we need to use here a 10 pixel and then after that here I'm using the 0 pixel and then 0 pixel if I do that then you can see the corner edges is actually fixed okay so this is for the our main header part the main label part okay so here you can see this digital clock okay so we're going to fix one by one now it's time to specify the code for the clock one so this is a clock element okay so i'm going to copy this one and uh, coming back to the css file so here i will be writing a clock and i start the body of the element and first i need to specify the padding so padding is going to like 25 pixel if i control save it then you can see the border element is taking some space okay and then i'm going to use the display property so we are going to use the display flex if i do that then nothing is changed i think so we need to use the align property as well align items at the center so align item center and then i need to specify the margin bottom property so margin bottom is going to like 10 pixel okay so this is actually working fine then we need to add the time element so we have our time element okay so the span classes that is our this time element so we're going to provide the style for that as well so the first thing we need to add here a font size property so font size is going to have 48 pixel okay and then after that we need to add here a font weight property so font weight is going to be like uh, our bold and then we need to add here a color property which is used to change the color of the font so i'm going to use here a black so zero 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 okay and after that i need to here specify the margin property so margin is going to like zero pixel and then we need to use the 10 pixel so from left and right is going to like zero pixel and from top and bottom is going to like 10 pixels you can see it's actually now appearing perfectly okay and then i need to here use the another which is a colon element which is used to actually style these colons right now they are actually very tiny and small okay so i'm going to write here an element so here i have forgot mistaken the name 
and then instead of that i'm going to specify the same property coming back and just only reducing the size of the font so you can see now this is what our digital clock looks like the css bar same as it is like this one the only difference is that this one has a like a, i have to resize the font of this one and inside of that i didn't do that so you can do it as per your need if you want so that's it for the css part of this particular project which is our digital clock so the next step is to add the javascript to this project so now let's start with the javascript part of this particular project so for that we need to use the script.js file so instead of that file first we need to start with the update clock method so this method function will be called when we launch the project so we are going to call this function outside of the project by using the set interval method means after one second we are going to call this function once the project is loaded to the screen okay or we can say the project is loaded into the browser so first we need to here specify the function so function is going to like update or i can say that the update clock function okay so this will be the function name that we are going to use and we are going to call this function by using the set interval method and instead of that we need to specify the method okay so this the callback we are going to specify here not an like uh, arrow function callback we need to pass here an update clock callback without the brackets and then instead of that we need to specify the 1000 millisecond which is actually equal for the one second and then once we load this project you will see nothing is happening because after that whatever code we will write inside of this function it will be executed after one second okay so let's do it so the first thing is we need to get the ids of the elements okay like these three one and after that we need to add the logic to calculate the hours minutes and seconds so the first thing is i'm going to get the ids of the elements so right now you can see the inside the html part i didn't specify the id to these three span elements so it's time to specify the id as well so here i will be using the id attribute and then instead of that i will be specifying the id as hours and this one is going to for the minutes and this is the third one is actually for the like our is for the seconds okay so we need to fetch the id of all of these three elements inside the script.js so for fetching the id we are going to here use the const okay so for the const so the first thing is we need to here type the hours element okay is equal to then it's going to like get or i can say that a document not get it's the document dot get element of id inside of the brackets and you start here the brackets and semicolon and then we need to specify here hours make sure the name is perfectly typed and then i'm going to copy this into two more time to save a little bit of the time okay and here i will be using the minutes and this will is going for the seconds and here also i need to specify the minutes and this is for the seconds okay so now the element id is fetched properly then we need to create here three variables now before creating the hours minutes and seconds variable we need to first create a variable to actually hold the date object so for that first i'm going to create here let now and inside of this now we are going to initialize the value with the use of new operator and we are going to use the date of class object so we created a variable of the date and it's having the reference means this now variable has a reference of this date object okay and after that we need to create a variable which is hours and it's equal to now with the function now, now we are going to use the get hours okay and hours and we are going to use the function hours and then we are going to terminate it similarly we need to find out the minutes is equal to and then again you using the now dot get minutes and then to complete its body by using the bracket and then again we need a seconds 
is equal to and then we need to use the now and then here we will be using the get seconds so finally if we are able to fetch the hours minutes and seconds if we directly set these values to the elements or right, which we can do it by the way then you can see here our hours element so if i use the hours element dot and we are going to update its text content so if i use it and equals to hours which is our hours variable and similarly for the minutes one which is our minutes element dot text content is equal to and here we will be using the minutes semicolon to terminate it and then we are going to use the seconds element dot text content is equal to seconds if i terminate it and if i save it then you can see inside the browser the things are actually working means the code is actually working right now the time is 12 21 am so it's actually showing the 21 am but we want our project to display the timer in a form of two digits so for that we need to calculate and add some logic so i'm going to use the ternary operator for that to display the time in two digits right now you can see it's actually displaying the two digits the only for that because right now this is actually 21 minute 26 second but if you see the second is completed like 60 and then when it's turned back to 0 1 2 then it also going to display in the single digit so for that we need to calculate the hours we need to modify the hours variable value okay so first we need to modify the value of this hours variable on the basis of the certain condition so first i'm going to type here hours is equal to and then here i'm again going to type the hours value so if it is smaller than 10 which is a two digit value smaller than 10 then i'm going to here use the question mark sign then this is for the ternary operator if it is smaller than then we are going to append the zero inside of it like this zero will be added to our hours variable this particular hours will be first compared with this value 10 if it is smaller than 10 then this block will be executed means this particular code will be executed which will be zero added to the hours variable and then this entire value will be initialized to this hour variable okay and after that if it is not happen then it's going to display the value of the hours okay if it is not smaller than 10 then this particular hours variable value will be initialized to the hours i think this is very clear to you this is the best thing i can do and similarly we need to do this same with the use of minutes and also with the seconds so here inside of this i will be using for the minutes if minutes is smaller than 10 like this similar one then 10 will be added if it is minutes is smaller than the value of 10 then 0 will be added to the minutes again i am repeating so that you can easily remember the logic if it is not the case if minutes is not smaller than 10 then this particular value will be executed then it's going to initialize the minutes okay similarly it is going to happen in case of seconds as well so if it is seconds if seconds is smaller than 10 then it's going to append the zero to the seconds if it is not a case if second is not smaller than 10 then this will be not be executed then here this second variable value will be initialized to the seconds variable so that's marks the completion of the code if i control save it then you can see everything is now appearing two digits you can see right now we are actually having 12 56 am so right now you can see 56 and it's displaying these seconds so 56 minutes then there is a 12 so it's actually going to be 00, zero. okay and similarly for this one you can see here 57 minutes this is also having 57 minutes. so that's marks the completion of the code for this project which is our digital clock application so if you are actually enjoying the course and if you like my videos then please leave a review because your review definitely going to help me to actually enhance the quality of my course also it will help me to enhance the quality of my future courses so thank you for watching and i will see in the next lecture welcome back to this lecture so in this lecture we are going to build the expense tracker application so let me show you the first application that we are going to build in this particular lecture so this is the final application that we are going to build in this whole lecture 
So you can see we have this heading expense tracker, then we have this label which actually display the total expenses. Then we have a button. So if I click on this add expense button, then you can see we have this alert message box appearing. So instead of that, first we need to add the enter expense description. So if I enter here like uh, drinks and if I hit like OK and then we need to add the amount. This is our next alert box that has the enter expense amount. So instead of that, we need to add the like amount of the expense. So if I enter here 10, then you can see we have this list and also our total expense variable value is also changed means this is actually a variable means this particular label value is updated and we also have this nice white list that has this cross button so if i click on this cross then you can see the expense list is actually removed and if i again click on that and then we can add here like food if i hit ok then we need to add the amount that is 50 dollar and if i again enter here like uh, fruits we have spent some time on fruits and then we need to add the another which is like $40 or I can get 70 just the random value I want to add then you can see this list is actually maintained so you, once this expense you can calculate it how much like groceries you have built you can track that so this is application we are going to build the main idea is to actually learn how to build this UI and also add this list functionality and later on in this course we will also build some advanced features of this application as well so our first step is to start with the html part of the project so here you can see inside of the visual studio code i have created three files the first is the index.html the second is the style.css the third one is the script.js file so let me click on this explorer button so that we have this nice work area and i'm also going to minimize it and i'm going to select my chrome browser and just i'm going to launch the application which is the html part this one so if i click on go live then we will definitely see a new tab so it's actually starting here and uh, so you can see this is our application is now working so if i enter here like h1 element expense if I save, then we will see the expense tracker. So I can show you the output while typing the HTML and CSS code as well. Because this is our best way to actually display the working line of the code. Okay, so now the first thing is we need to create the expense tracker container that has all the elements. So all of this is actually wrapped inside the expense tracker container. So we want to do that thing first. And then if I hit a tab key, then we get uh, actually I have to specify here a dot as well. So if I press a tab key, then we can see we get the expense tracker, but we didn't get the class name. So I'm just going to cut it. I didn't take the class name. So now this is our class expense tracker. So instead of that, I have to add first the another div. So I'm going to type it here expense like header. If I enter now at this point of time, the emit plugin works perfectly. So instead of the first, it is grab this h1 element and I'm going to put it inside the and let's change this to h2. Okay, and also it's closing tag. So now it's become a little bit small. That is because the we have used here a h2 heading. So our next step is we need to place the button because these all are actually appearing in the single row or I can say that the line. So here we will be using the button. Then we need to specify the class to this button, which will be fetched inside the HTML and also used for the styling the CSS part. And then I actually name the class as exp add expense PTN. And inside of that, we need to add the text add expense. okay so now this is actually done after that we need to add a another which is to actually display this list so for that we need to add an empty div element so i'm again here typing the expense and then i will be adding an expense list so this will remain the empty because this will be used to display the list and then we need to add this label or i can say that the h3 tag or this will actually display the like total expense amount okay so for that again we need to create the another div of the class total expense on total 
and if I press a tab key then we get this div inside of that I will be using the h3 element so it's going to have a heading total expense and then this is going to like dollar zero which will display the result zero at the initial part all right so that is for the html elements part we have added this main container so let me first actually do what actually this is ended like here this is div so this div is actually closing at the end so i have done a one mistake because everyone everything will be inside inside the because this will be the parent so let me first indent it properly okay so everything is indented all these three divs are actually child of this expense tracker and then all of them has two elements this one has one this one is empty element because it doesn't have we are going to display the list manually by using the javascript code if i control save it then the output will remain the same so our next step is to add the css part to this expense tracker application so for css part we have to use the style.css file in order to style these elements of the html so the first thing is we need to style the body tag so inside of the body i'm going to apply the background color so background color is going to be like hashtag f2 f2 and f2 which is my favorite like light gray color and then i need to apply the font family so the font family is going to like gil sans so i'm going to use different font at this point of time so you can see this is our expense tracker font okay and it is actually slightly different than this font this one actually using the arial sensory but i have actually used here a different font just to make the application little different in terms of the font the functionality will remain the same and after that we need to style the expense tracker class so this is our class so i'm going to copy this and then i will be here using the dot and then pasting the class name and then i have actually specified here two curly brackets opening and closing curly brackets inside of the block of the expense tracker we are going to write our css code so the first thing is i am actually using here max width property so max width and then it's going to like 500 pixel okay if i control save then nothing will change because we have to add the margin property as well so margin is zero and then from top and bottom is going to zero and then i have to specify the from the left and right is going to auto if i control save it then you can see it's slightly moved if i actually increase the size then it is actually at the center of the screen okay i'm going to actually show this okay so now this is what margin property does and after that we need to add the padding so padding is going to like 20 pixel okay and then i have to add the font family so in font family again this is one which is lucida i actually going to use this font family all right and then i will be using here the border property so the border is going to like one pixel border solid border okay and then i have to specify the color so color is going to like ccc which is a little gray color so you can see we have this nice border is coming out to the expense tracker okay and after that we need to add the border radius property right now the border corners are very thick like a pointed one so we want a rounded border so for that we are actually using a border radius property of 5 pixel and after that i'm going to specify the background color so the background color is actually i'm using here a this beig which is beige this particular color okay so this is for the expense tracker class the next thing that we want to style is the expense header so i'm going to copy this because inside of that we need to actually display these expense tracker heading which is h2 element and also this button in the same line so for that we need to first actually use the expense header so right now this can be done with the use of the flex because these two are actually the child of this expense header so for applying the flex we need a header which is i can say that the parent and then we need a child so there should be a parent child relationship then we can use the flex properly so that is why i'm going to use this so i'm going to copy this again i think i have didn't copy these property again i'm going to specify a dot and then instead of expense tracker i'm going to paste it here expense header 
then the body of this expense header. So instead of that, first I will be using the property called display flex. So display is going to be flex. And after that, I will be here using the justify content, which is going to be like space between. Not round, it's going to be like space between. If I do that, then you can see both of these elements now appearing at this single row. Right now, you can see the button style is actually changed. It looks like a little bit square, but we are, we are going to style just a moment. But first, we have to complete this expense header. And after that, I need to apply another property, which is align items is going to be center as well. So if I do that, then you can see the button is actually taken up its normal state or you can say the normal style. Okay, then we have to add another property here, which is for margin from bottom is going to be like 20 pixel. Okay, so this is for the expense header. So the next step is to style this button. So again, I am actually going to paste it here dot and expense header and then we need to add here a button or I can just simply use the class of the button because we have specified the class of the button. You can use that as well or I can select the multiple class selector because I can use the expense tracker and then inside of that we can target the button as well. So we can use that approach as well, but I am actually using the class name of the button. So inside of the button. From top and left, I'm going to use the padding property, which is a shorthand property. So this is going to be like 10 pixel. And then I also need to apply the padding from the left and right, which is going to be like 20 pixels. If I do that and if I save, then you can see if I increase the padding to like 30, then you can see from left and right, the padding is actually increased. From top and bottom, I want to just play the padding as 7 pixel or I can just stick with the 10 pixel. It's totally up to you how you want to style your button. All right, and then after that, I need to specify the background color, which is a nice greenish color. So it's going to like 4C, A, F, 5, 0. So here not a X, it's actually a C. You can see this is the button. Now we have to change the color. So color is going to like hashtag FFF, which is for the white. And then we need to remove the border. So border is going to be like none. And then I need to increase the font size. So font size size is going to like 16 pixel. And then I need to increase the font weight. So font weight is going to like 600. If I save it, then you can see button is actually changed the style of the button. Then I have to use the text transform, which is going to be like uppercase. And then the another property I will be using here a border radius property, which is going to be like 5 pixel. If I control save it, then you can see the button edges is actually become rounded means the corner of the button becomes round and then we have the text transform which actually change the like uh, characters or i can say that the text of the button to uppercase letters okay and the last property or i can say that the second last property is going to be the cursor pointer and then for the hover animation we are going to here use the transition so transition we are going to target the background color background and then we are going to use the color so color is going to like 0 0.3 second and it's going to like ease if i do that then you can see there's a nice effect is going on okay so that's marks the completion of the code for the add expense btn you can see that the color of the button is not changed that is because the property here is actually the counter reset we want to change it it is actually a color if i save it then we can see we have this nice add expense white color text Okay, so the next step is we need to add the CSS for this total expense one. The another one that we have to write the CSS is the expense list. So we are going to write the expense list CSS and also its item. You can see this is a list and all of its item and all of this button CSS we are going to write once we complete the JavaScript part. Okay, so right now I'm going to provide the CSS code for this total expense so that it can actually display in the right side of the container. So to do that, first I'm going to copy the class name of the total expenses and coming back to the CSS part, here I will be using the dot and adding the total expenses. So inside of that, I just need to do text alignment. So it's going to like text alignment. So I'm going to change the property to right. Once I do that, you can see the text is now appearing at the center. Also, I can actually increase the font weight. So it's a heading tag, so I can increase the font weight to like 600 or it doesn't actually so this property doesn't require because it's already 
bold because we have used here a uh, element which is called h3 so if we use here a like paragraph element because before that i have used the paragraph element but for this tutorial creation i have used here the h3 tag so it's already bold so we don't need to specify here the font weight property or like anything else so okay so that is for the css part of this expense tracker application so our next step is to actually start the javascript part of this expense tracker application So now we are going to start with the javascript part of the project. So inside of the script.js file first we need to create the three variables which will be used to fetch the ids of the element. But inside our index.html we didn't specify the id selector we specify here class selector. So we are going to use the query selector to fetch the these elements so that we can bind these ui elements inside our javascript. And also you can see this h3 element doesn't have a class so we are going to use the selector to select this element inside the script.js file so let me first type the first line of the code so first is actually our add expense button and this will be going to initialize the value as document.query selector so inside of the query selector we need to specify the class name so the class name is our button class name is add expense btn so we are going to use it with the use of dot because it's a class selector and also i'm going to zoom out a little bit so that you can see the code in the proper line now you can see it's giving us the error the reason for that we need to specify this inside the double quotes or either in the single quotes so once we do that we are successfully able to fetch the button inside the javascript and similarly we need to create two more lines of the code so i'm going to simply copy this and paste it two more times then this will be our expense list okay and inside of this expense list i'm going to fetch the class name of the expense list so i'm going to copy it and again i'm going to paste it here and then the last and then the third one we need is our total expense to display the expense amount so it's going to be total expenses and instead of that i'm going to use the class name total expense i'm going to copy this class name coming back to the script.js file and i'm going to paste it here and also i'm going to press a space here because we are going to select the h3 element so this is our h3 element we need to display the amount inside of this h3 so that is the reason i have specified here h3 as well so that is for the fetching of the elements inside the javascript now after doing this we need to create two variables so the first is actually like an array which is an empty array which is actually going to hold all of these inside array because every list item will be act as an array element so we are going to traverse the array and then display it in the form of ui and then we need a total to display the total amount which is the total expense okay so we need to create these two variables so again i'm going to open our own project means going to click on the tab where our project is expense tracker and this is the final product that we want to build so the first thing is i'm going to here use the let keyword so expenses and is equal to or i'm going to specify here s for the plural because it is for the expenses and then i'm going to use the square brackets which is for the array okay and then i need to create another variable which is for the total and it is going to equal to like zero because right now the total is zero then we need to create some functions so i'm going to first create all the functions like uh, just the name of the function then we are going to code inside the function so the first thing is render expenses so this is the first function that we need okay and then we need a other function function which is for the add expense so this will be used to add the expense in the list so this will be the function name and the body and the another function is we need is to delete the expenses so it's going to like function then we need to specify the name of the function we need to specify its body so these are the three functions that will be used now this particular one is actually used to create this ui 
and inside of the UI, we this function add expense will be used to put the data. The data main is actually added by this function, and then this will be used to give the functionality to delete the data. So this function will be called. So first we are going to start the coding inside this render expense function because also for creating this UI elements, we also need to provide the CSS code as well. So I'm going to just simply make a room here by entering some spaces and then inside of this function we need to create the element which is called let or I can say that the variable of the element which is let html is equal to empty. So we need to create a div and inside of that div which will be acts as a container means that main div and then inside of that we need to create the three more elements. The, this is actually a div which is used for the description of the item then the um, amount item and then the button. So we are going to create four HTML elements by using the JavaScript code. Okay. So all of this will be done inside the for each method, which is used for the looping purpose. Okay. So first we are going to use the expenses. So expenses dot, which is our array. So we are going to loop it by using the for each. So inside of this for loop, we are going to provide the first as an expense. Okay expense and then we need to here provide the arrow syntax by using the fat arrow and then we are going to open its curly brackets and after that we need to terminate it so this is what we are going to do with the expense i'm also going to provide air spaces so that it looks more clear and meaningful and then inside of that we are going to use initialize this html element which is our variable right now so this is going to like html and it's going to have a short syntax property i'm going to use it which is actually used to initialize and also adding the new elements okay then i'm going to use here a template string so please pay more attention to this particular code otherwise things will become more difficult if you didn't watch it properly so i'm going to take it into multiple lines and then i will be here specifying a terminator at the end of this because it's a multi-line string with the use of template tree, we can do that and inside of that i will be using here a div tag so i'm going to type the whole code which is div and it's going to have a class selector is equal to the class selector that i'm going to give here like expense expense and it's going to like item so this will be the class name for the main root element which is like a root element which means that the main parent element of these three items these three elements sorry not items then i'm going to close the div tag by entering the division and instead of that we need another div so i'm going to copy this because we need a div and this will be closed here by div and instead of that i'm going to change its class name to expense item and hyphen is going to like description description and then this is going to hold a value but right now all of the values actually the value that it will display is coming from this add expense method but we didn't specify any code inside the add expense method so right now i am going to leave it as empty because we also going to specify the css code then i'm going to copy this into one more time for this amount one so i'm going to come in back to the next line and expense item this is going to be our amount so this is our amount and again this is going to get the value from this add expense function but we are going to first create the ui or you can do that just simply add the add expense but i'm going to follow the easiest approach so that you can easily understand what's actually going on inside this expense tracker application then we need a button so again this button is for this one which is used to remove the expense item from the list so again i'm going to type it a button then it's going to have a class selector so the class selector is going to like delete and delete expense button which is like our btn and it's going to hold a value because we are going to provide this cross icon so for that we are going to use here a property means a short property which is called times where it's a cross and then we are going to terminate it and then we need to close the button tag as well 
right now if we run this application if i control save it then you will see nothing is changed these tags doesn't reflect back inside the expense tracker project the reason for that we need to update the inner html of this class list which is our this class list expense list so we are going to do that where is our javascript this is the javascript code so after the end of this for each method okay so inside of that first we need to use the expense list dot and we are going to update its inner html is equal to html and then we need to provide a semicolon the semicolon is totally optional but for here you need to provide the semicolon and also inside of that because this is actually a multi-line statement okay and if i save it then you will see again nothing is happening the reason for that because we didn't specify the code inside the add expense but if we add it here then the when we click on the add expense the alert or i can say that the prompt because alert is the wrong one the prompt is the correct so what this line of code does is actually going to update the html part but right now it doesn't going to update it because when you click on the button there is no listener is attached and there is no prompt is appearing so that is the reason it's actually not going to do anything and after that we need to add the another line of code which is total expense which is actually used to update the value so here i'm going to use the total expenses dot inner html and it is going to use the so again i'm going to use here a template string template string it is going to like total expense total expenses and a colon and then i'm going to press here a dollar now after the end of the dollar we need to get the values of the total variable which is this variable we, this is a actually a global variable it will be used inside of this function and also inside of this add expense function to update its value okay so that's marks the completion of the code for this render expense function now our next step is to add the add expenses so now we have added the ui code the only thing when we add the add expense functionality we are going to see the like this expense list inside the application okay so coming back to our add expense function so the first thing is we need to create the variable so it's going to be like of const and this is going for the description so description is equal to and description is going to be first we need to use a prompt so it is actually a string so i'm directly using the prompt and here i'm going to type the enter expense description okay and then this will be prompted to enter the description and after that we need to add here another const amount this will be used to enter the enter the amount the amount can be in a decimal value means the point value so that is why i have used here a float to actually accept the decimal values as well means the point values float values and after that we need to check for the condition whether the two elements are entered properly if one of the element is not entered then we don't allow the user to enter the list means enter the expense list so i'm going to type it here if then i'm going to start its brackets and also its braces so inside of the if condition first i'm going to type it if like in description if it is description and amount so if it is then we are going to create here a variable inside the if block which is our const expense is equal to and is going to have an description so i'm going to create the object which is like description and then i'm going to initialize it with the description value okay so this is actually the property and the value it will be hold from the this variable description then i'm going to specify a comma because it is an object and then again i'm going to specify the amount as a property and then i'm going to specify the value of this that is coming from the amount remember at the last one doesn't provide the comma and then we need to terminate this object by providing the terminator so after that when you once we get the value then we need to use the push function remember we have these expenses so inside of the array we can use the push function to push the data inside the array so that is the reason 
after the inside the after the end of the object you should need to remember inside the if block here we need to type the expenses dot push method so push and what we want to push we want to push an object so this will be a key value pair object and then inside the total variable which is our this total variable we are going to update the value of this total variable also so this is like our total and then i am going to add here like a short syntaxing for initializing and also addition then i am going to update its value like amount so like whatever the total amount is the amount is actually added by the user will be the total amount of the expense okay so I suppose if user enter the amount like five dollar then that will be acts as a total expense amount and then again if the user added then that will be added then five means i want to say that like if the user first time enter the amount five dollar then that five dollar will be initialized to the total variable then that will be displayed here as a five dollar and after that in the second time when the user enter the second expense then suppose on that time user enter the 10 then then 10 will be added to this total variable so that is why here i have added the amount because it's going to update the total variable value every time when the user enters a new expense okay and then after that inside the if condition then we need to call the render expense function so we already created the code inside the render expense function so once we call the render expense function and then we can use it so if i control save it and if i click on the add expense then you can see again nothing is happening the reason for that we need to add the listener to this button okay so for that i'm going to add outside of the function so here i will be writing the code like add expense btn remember we have created the variable at the top which is add expense btn which is actually fetching the class selector of the add expense button so we already bind the ui element with the javascript with these three lines of code now we are going to set the listener to this button so when we click on it then we get the prompt okay so for that btn dot add event listener so we are going to add the event listener so the event listener that we want to add is the click event so we need to specify here click and then we need to specify the comma and then we need to call the function which is add expense function as a callback so once i save it then if i click on this button then you can see now the prompt is appearing so if i enter the prompt like uh, our cola and if i enter here okay then you can see the next prompt is now appeared so there is a problem so actually i have here actually added a parse float but there is a one problem i need to put this parse flow inside the brackets so here i didn't use the prom so that is the reason it doesn't actually work with the code because the amount is not added and the condition of the if is not executed so here i also need to specify the prompt so again i need to add here one more brackets and inside of the bracket i need to call here a another time prompt so once i do that and if i refresh it by pressing the control s if i click on the button and then again i'm here enter the cola and press ok then we need to add the price which is like 50 dollar or you can add it randomly whatever you want so if i click ok then you can see the ui is not updated which is expected because right now inside of this html which we are actually generating with the javascript code dynamically we need to add the variable values that is total expense or description that we are getting from the this object which is our expense object because this object is created inside the expense and we have used this object here inside of this for each because what for each will traverse and that is what we actually want to create so with the use of this expense object then we need to specify the value because we are actually having a template string okay this is a template string and instead of that we are generating the html code dynamically so we need to provide the here curly brackets and then we need to specify here a dollar sign and instead of this dollar sign i need to call the expense this is the expense and then we need to call the expense dot and then we will call here a description we are directly referring to the this property which is description so if i click on it then you can see this is our description 
and similarly if i zoom out a little bit more so that you can see the code more clearly and similarly again we need to provide the amount as well so again i am here going to type the dollar and then curly brackets and inside of this curly bracket i need to provide the expense not svg it's type expense expense and then dot and then we need to use the amount and also for displaying the dollar in the amount like in front of you can see the dollar so for that dollar we need to again provide here a dollar okay so this will be used to display the dollar sign in front of the amount then the button will remain same it's going to have a cross and also there is a one problem you can see here inside the total expense i have used here a inner html but this total expense is actually an h3 element so we need to update its actually a text property we don't need to update its inner html so here i have used a wrong property we need to update the inner text again it's coming the inner html that is because it is the most used one that is why it's coming at the front inside the suggestion so i'm going to here use the inner text okay so if i control save it and uh, still there is a one problem the problem is that we are actually calling the push function inside the object what I actually we doing you can see there is a problem here we are actually using the push function inside the object so if i try to run this and control save it and if i click on to the prompt and again if i here specify the properties like cola if i hit ok and then 50 dollar price then you can see nothing is working and the reason for that if i actually open the inspect element by pressing the f12 key so you can see now we are actually here getting the console so inside the console you can see there is a one error is shown type error expense dot push is not a function and at html button dot add expense so script dot js 44 so inside the 44 line there is a one problem you can see here expense dot push is not a function so that is a problem because here we are getting the problem so we are actually need to push the data inside the expenses there is only a one character which is s and actually i have pushed the data inside the object so that is the reason if i press here s means we need to change this value to s which is expenses now if i save it and if i click on this add expense button then you can see the prompt is appearing so here i will be writing the cola and if i click ok and then if i enter the price so you can see now the value is appearing so let me close this console window by clicking on this close button you can see we are getting our like expense tracker and you can see the cola and then we have this 50 value also this button so if i click on it then nothing will happen because right now we didn't specify the code inside the digit expense also this total expense variable actually having only a dollar sign the reason for that because we need to here specify the variable value so again i need to here use the dollar symbol and then we need to call here a total so if i save it and again click on the add expense again i am going to enter here milk and then here if i enter 50 dollar and press enter then you can see the total expense is appearing 50 dollar and then we have this milk and this this 50 and also this cross button right now if i click on this cross button nothing is happening again if i click on it and we have like powder powder and if i click here okay and if i enter like 90 dollar hit again then you can see we are getting our next list element so we are successfully able to render the expenses in the form of list and also we are able to add the expenses inside the list okay so we have used these two functions and we have set the listener to the button so now it's time to specify the css code to these three elements okay so we need to open our style.css file and here inside of that we need to add the css code so the first code is we need to actually style the expense list so our expense list class is like this this is the name of our expense list so we need first to style this and here i will be pasting the expense list and inside of this expense list i'm going to use the margin bottom property so margin bottom is going to like 20 pixel okay and then we need to style the expense item which is the main theme okay so the expense item we have specified the class name inside the this code so i'm going to copy this here expense item coming back to the css part and control v to paste the code and inside of the expense item i'm going to first use the display property which is like display flex 
and if I use here justify content and justify content is going to like space between so if I control save it then you can see the item is now appearing in a form of single row and then we need to use the align item property align item is going to be like center if I control save it then it's going to center the things then we need to specify the background color so the background color I will be using here f9 f9 and f9 and you can see we getting this white color then need to specify the padding so the padding is going to like 10 pixel and after that I will be specifying the border radius so border radius is going to be like 5 pixel control save it then you can see this is the item and then we need to specify the margin bottom so every time each item will be displayed differently so if I use margin bottom 10 pixel then you can see now we are able to get the list in a much better way you can see we have these buttons so we need to specify the code for the buttons as well so before the styling the button I'm going to use the expense like where is our JavaScript expense item description we need to provide the style code for this one as also and coming back to here and I'm going to increase its font weight so it's like font weight property and it's going to like bold okay and similarly I'm going to copy this again one more time so this one is for the amount okay and this is also bold and you can see these two now appearing in a bold more bolder okay and then we need to specify the code for the button so again coming back to the script.js file this is our delete button class so I'm going to copy this class coming back to the style.css press the dot key and then control V to paste the code and as of that I'm going to use the first background color so the background color is actually we are going to use here hashtag f44 which is for the red red means red color not red red it's a red color and then I need to specify the color as white so it's like hashtag fff also need to specify the hash not hashtag it's a hash character and then need to specify the border to none control save it and you can see then I need to increase the border radius so border radius is going to like 50 percent then it will become a round round like structure when it is become a rounded and then I need to use here uh, another property which is like width so we need to specify the width to 30 pixel and also the height is 30 pixel so it looks like a perfect circle you can see now it's looking more beautiful I can say that or if I increase the font size to 16 pixel so it will increase the font size and also font weight font weight and it's going to like bold so it's now become appearing more crisp and the last property is actually we need to change the cursor pointer so when we hover over it then it will become changes the cursor to pointer we are successfully able to fetch the list means we are able to add the expense and render the expenses so the last step is we need to add the code to delete the expense so right now you can see we can add the more elements like uh, sugar okay and if i enter here and enter like 50 dollars and if i enter then you can see we are able to add it but there is no way we can delete it although we are getting this pointer style cursor so we need to add the code inside this delete expense function actually you must guys wondering why i sometimes call this function as method because in object oriented we call the function as method and in normal code without the object oriented we call the functions as functions so that is why sometimes i interchangeably use these terms but it is actually a function yes so let's start implementing the code inside the delete function now this code is little bit tricky because we have to add some more code because we also need to attach the listener to this button and also add the code to delete the this particular list from the html element okay so to do that this is actually a little bit tricky stuff so don't worry i'm going to explain the code so the first thing is going to accept one parameter which is of type index we're actually going to pass an event okay according to that event it's going to delete the list from the expand then we need to use here a short syntax to actually minus so it's actually used to minus the things and then here we will be using the expenses array inside of the array i'm going to pass the index which is our event okay 
whichever we want because everything is actually stored in the form of indexing starting from zero or to the line because this as you can see stored inside the array in a index as zero this will be stored in one this will be stored in two so that is why we are actually passing the index here to delete the element inside the array amount and then after that we are calling here uh, expenses dot splice method so you can see you can hover over it so it removes elements from an array and if necessary inserts a new element in their place returning the deleted element so splice method does what it actually removes the element from an array so you can hover over it to actually read the short description which is studio provided so it actually removes the element from the array also it's going to return the deleted element and inserts a new element in their place so that is why so it's whatever index we will provide it here it's going to delete that element and also going to insert a new element okay and then we need to call here a render expense function because after deleting the element we also need to render the ui element that is the reason and by doing this once i control save it you can see the code is actually changed because once we refresh the javascript code it's actually re-render the javascript page means this re-render the web page so if i click it here and if i use here a cola and if i click ok and enter here a 60 dollar press enter if i click on this then you can see nothing is working the reason for that because we need to add the listener to this particular button so to do that let's add it and wrap this lecture quickly so i am going to add here expense list dot add event listener so the event listener that we want to add is actually our click event so we need to specify the click event here by adding the like uh, click click event and then we need to specify a comma and inside of that we need to specify the function and then we need to pass here an event okay and then this is the function event we have passed and actually add event listener uh, so we have actually opened the brackets in the wrong form we need to open the brackets here that is why it's actually giving us the error so instead of that we need to actually check for the condition so we are going to do it here if because adding the event listener we need to add the listener to the button not when we click on these items if we click on the item it is also going to delete the button so that is the reason we need to add the condition here so we are going to use here if event dot target dot class list so we are targeting the element class list dot contains contains and instead of that i will be using here in double quotes which is our delete which is the class name that we have specified so i'm going to copy it so it will be saves a little bit of our time so this is our delete button so i'm going to coming back bottom of the code project and if i paste it here so what we are actually we are actually targeting the event dot target dot class list dot contains if it contains if class list whatever the listener we are adding if it contains a delete expense button okay then we are going to open the body of the if condition and then we'll be writing the code we are actually using here a const variable const index and instead of the index we are going to use here array dot from function and then inside of that we are going to use here a event dot target dot our parent node parent node dot parent node so parent node again we are calling the parent node and dot children children and we are using here a index of okay guys so this is the code we have actually used here and inside of this index of i'm going to just take it to the next line index of and then need to specify the code inside of that by using the event dot target dot parent node then we need to pass this index to the our delete expense function as a parameter whatever index node we are actually calculating okay so once i do that and if i refresh it then if i click on the add expense button if i enter here a like food hit ok and i enter here like 50 then if i click on this like the arrow button then you can see the item is removed so this particular line of code does what is actually creating the that index we actually want to delete it okay now i'm going to explain this code in a more 
detail because right now this will be the most confusing thing for this entire project i know that so the first i'm going to start with this delete expense one so what this particular line of code does it's going to actually detect the amount from the expense according to the index of the item the item which is deleted and this slice will does it's actually going to delete the item and also returns the new item means it's going to return the deleted item and in place of the deleted item it's going to place the new item now these two are easiest one to understand i think now the main thing is this is where we have added the listener the first is the if condition if event dot target dot class list dot contains delete expense button so this basically used to check whether the clicked button which is the click event function when we click on the button suppose if i add here a like so suppose here if i add here a like a fruit okay that's okay and then enter here 50 then if we click on this then this is having a class called delete expense button so this particular if condition checks for that condition if the click item is even contains the delete expense button class if it is a delete button expense class which is true in case if i click on it then it's going to remove the item so then this code will be executed so we need to main focus is this particular code so first we have created an index constant which is pretty much easy one then we have here used the two functions of the array which is array dot from and index of so this particular line of code does what it's going to return the parent node of the list element okay whatever the element is clicked right now at this point of time this element will be clicked so it's going to return the parent node and then the this particular one will actually return the parent node of the class list so it's going to determine that now if this will have the array of the child elements so we need to find the index of the child elements because which is provided by this particular one because you can see that parent node dot children so it will have the collection of the children elements and that will be passed to the index of so we need to calculate the index of all the, the child elements so that will be calculated with the use of this index of function and later on once we calculate it we are going to pass the index to this delete expense function to delete the node so i think you get the complete idea how this code is working if you want more in-depth explanation you can google it because at this particular tutorial i can do this is the best that i can explain it so if you want to learn more you can just simply go and google it because this is a code that will actually you can actually learn by just practicing more javascript so that marks the completion of the video lecture of this expense tracker application if you like this lecture then please leave a review because your review definitely going to help me to improve my future courses so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you welcome back to this lecture so in this lecture we are going to build the fd calculator application so let me show you the final product that we are going to build so this is our fd calculator you can see when i just hover over it then you can see there is a nice background in this particular card and we have three fields here means the three input type the first is actually going to accept the principal amount then the second is for the interest rate and the third one is tenure in years which actually how many years you want and the fourth one is actually our and then the fourth one is our button which is the input type button and then we have a result which actually displays the final output of the maturity amount so here if i just change the value to like 5 lakh i think it's like 50 okay so it has five zeros so it is actually lag and if i just click on calculate then you will see the rate of interest is actually you earn like 33,000 to 50 rupees for one year and if we change the rate of interest like 7.0 it's also going to accept a value which is like integer type or maybe a float value so if i click on it then you can see 5 3 means you are going to earn the interest rate is like 35,000 for one year and if i increase here too then the interest will be increased to 70,000 so this will be the application if i refresh then the values will be going to into default which is a placeholder text okay so we are going to build this application so first open your visual studio so you can see i have already done it i have actually created three files inside of this 
particular folder so here we have three files all of them are empty so i'm going to click on this so that you can see more clearly and also i'm going to increase the zoom little bit so coming back to our index.html so here i will be going to add the code which is sign of exclamation which is an emit abbreviation so if i click on it then we get our placeholder text so if i type here like fd calculator actually i have given the name to our application which is fd calculator so this is a basic template given by visual studio code for the responsiveness like three meta text has been added so these are actually used for like for the responsivity purpose and these are actually like compatibility for the edge browser and it is actually a unicode character format which has lot more character set more than 255 character set i think which is more powerful than the sk character set so these are pretty basics but we don't need to worry about these because we need to build our application which is ft calculator so first we need to add some html elements so i'm going to minimize it because we need to get the reference what we are actually going to build and first here i will be adding a one h1 element just to check whether everything is working properly or not so hello fd i just am going to write this text and here we have a live server extension you should install this live server extension because it will make our life little bit easy so if i click on go or live and then we will see uh output moment so here we can see everything is working fine so another thing i want to do is actually link the css part of the code so i'm going to write here style.css and then also i'm going to add the script tag to add the script so here i will be type src and then here i will be adding the script.js so all of these now are connected with our index.html so let's get started by adding the element inside the html part so first i need a div so here i will be using a div and inside of this div or i can use a shortcut which is by default available inside the visual studio code which is emit so if i just type it here container like dot container and if i press tab then i get a div tag that has a class container so this will actually get a little bit for the faster so i'm not going to use too much emit in this particular course because this course is for the beginner purpose only means beginner can easily follow along so i'm not going to confuse you by using the emit although i'm using a just small emit like a shortcut so that it will be easy for me to complete the course more quickly so after getting this container it's time to actually h1 tag which is for the heading so i'm going to add the h1 tag because this is actually an heading fd calculator so we want to do that so that is the reason we need to add here an h1 tag and inside of this i need to add the text fd calculator so this is our fd calculator and inside of this we need to add the div element so it's going to like div and under inside the div we are going to use a label so here we are going to type the label and inside of this first we need to add the principal and then the text which is going to be principal amount okay so now the principal amount is done then after the label we need an input so input actually is going to be like input type so here i will be using an input and inside of the type we need a number so i'm going to add the number then i will be going to use the id parameter means i want to specify the id not a parameter so here i will be typing principal so this one the smaller one and then we need to add the placeholder placeholder there which is enter enter the principal amount so this marks the actually completion of our so if i go to the end you can see it is completed so this is what we have to do for the ft calculator the first element so if i just control save it and if we see it like the output you can see this is our first principal amount so we need to actually copy and paste it one more time so that it will save a little bit our time so what i'm going to do i'm just going to copy it and i will be pasting it two more times and then i will be changing the content of it so if i just save it and you will see we have three both them because we need three so let me just change the their label name and their ids so the first one is label the second is actually for the interest interest rate and then the label i'm going to change it into interest rate okay so this will be our interest rate 
and I also need to specify the class here so that we can actually style it when we so it's going to be like form group because I actually forgot it to enter it so I'm going to also enter it for the second div so here we need to also add okay actually I copied the wrong thing again I need to copy it and then I will be pasting it here one more time and then for this one also and then here we need to leave the input type as number because we are working with number and here we need to add the interest rate so I'm going to copy it and then we need to change the placeholder enter the interest rate interest rate so I'm going to remove the amount okay so this marks the second one and then we are need to change the third one this is for the tenure so it's kind of like tenure and then it's label text which will be displayed and then we need to specify the id so here we are going to specify the id like tenure you can see and then we need to change the label which is enter the tenure in years so and tenure i'm going to short it as the tenure in years so if i just save it and let me see it so you can see now we have three input elements inside our project now the last we need a button so if i just go to there and let me see this is a button and we need a another label to display the result so coming back to the visual studio code so you can see this is the container the main container then we have our h1 tag okay then we have form groups so we have three form groups of having a class form group so means we have three div inside of this we have label and input and then we need a button so it should remain inside the container the button all the things will be added inside the container because later on we need to create a card and then put all of this inside the card like just you can see it here okay so again coming back to visual studio code so here i will be using a button and inside of the button i'm going to specify the id and i will be using a calculate btn short for the button and then we are going to specify the class for the styling class is equal to and then here i will be using a calculate btn actually i have added a cal only calculate btn but at this time i will need to specify the hyphen and make it as smaller one now here you will be seeing that we have used two selectors the first is used for the you know javascript purpose because we are going to use it to calculate the logic part and this one is used for the styling inside this css file okay so that is why i have specified here two id selector means the first is id selector and the second one is class selector then we need a paragraph element so if i just do it here and type it the id and then inside that i will be using a result again i am using here a id and then we need to specify the class so this class one is used for the javascript purpose and then i will be here using a maturity amount maturity amount okay so this marks the completion of the html part so if i see it and just save it and you can see we have this little button so we need to add a text inside this button so again i'm going to here and actually I forgot to add the so i will be here writing a calculate calculate save it and you can see we have all of this so our next step is to style this particular calculator by using the style sheet so coming back to visual studio code and now i'm going to open the style.css file so inside of that we need to provide a lot of style so i'm going to type it and then i will be explaining the code so first i need to actually select the body element and here i will be writing some code means typing the code so first we need a font family here so the font family we are going to use an arial arial and i will be using a sans serif okay so this is what and the background color we are going to add it here like a simple hashtag f2 f2 and f2 so this is a little bit of gray i will say it and then we need to provide the display flex okay and then i will be here using a justified content center 
ok and then I will be using a line item center and then I will be using here a height attribute which is 500 vh ok so this will actually make the our container at the center of the screen then I am going to select the container so I am actually going to copy the container so that they didn't make any typo while typing the code so this is our container and inside of the container I am going to add the background color so background color I am going to use like hashtag FFF for the white ok and then I will be using a border radius so border radius is going to be 5 pixel and then we need to specify the padding so padding is going to be like from all sides is going to be 20 pixel and then I need to specify the box shadow so box shadow is like 0 pixel and then 0 pixel and then we need to specify the 2 pixel and I will be using a RGBA function to specify the color so 198 from the red then we need a grain so which is like 193 so 193 and then in the next one we need to specify the 193 again and then the alpha value is going to like 0 0.1 so this will be the box shadow property and then I will be using a max width property so the max width is going to be like 400 pixel and then the width is going to be like 100% so here I will be using 100% so if I save it and you can see now we have our card at the center of the screen. Now the next step is actually we need to create the dot container hover class. So I'm going to copy this one again and paste it here and here I will be adding a pseudo class element hover. So all of the code will remain same. So but I'm going to remove these padding or also this max width and width property we just need a one property which is box shadow so that we can create this effect like when we hover it so there is a box shadow is actually increasing means the shadow of the box become little bit more darker okay so we need to do that so here we are just we need to change the value so this zero pixel will become five and also we need to make it five and then this one is going to be like 10 pixel and the like uh, our hover effect this one will become zero also this one becomes zero and zero so if i save it and if i again go back and check it then you can see the border is actually means the box shadow is actually changing so we have done with the container code of this style so coming back to the visual studio code it's time to actually code the h1 so which is having a head heading of like ft calculator so i'm directly using the element selector because right now we have only one h1 so inside the h1 first we need to specify the font size so font size is going to be 24 pixel and then we need to specify the text align property and we also need a text decoration property so there is, should be an underline and after that i'm going to add the margin bottom is from 20 pixel so if i save it and see you can see we have this ft calculator is now styled then we need to style the input elements or we can say that the we are going to directly style it by using the form group because we have added a form okay so we are going to style this so coming back to the style.css so here i will be writing a form hyphen group and then we need to first target the label okay so let me start this and I didn't need any typo like the label name is label yes okay everything is perfect so first I need to make it a like a group like display block so right now you can see they all are actually coming in the same line horizontal because these elements have not a block so block one actually take the whole row I will say it because if you know the basic of the HTML so we are going to change its display property so coming back to the visual studio code so first we need to make it as block okay and then the second property we need font weight so font weight is we are going to use the bold or you can use the bolder as well if you like it then i need to provide the margin bottom so margin bottom is going to be like 5 pixel and then we need to do a one more styling which is form group and inside of that we need to provide the margin bottom is 10 pixel okay 
so this will be the form group and then we need to add the form group input so let me just copy this one and remove the extra spacing this is a form group and then we need to use the input inside the form group all the inputs we are actually targeting and first we need to specify the width it's going to be like 95 percent and after that we need to specify the padding so padding from all the side is going to be like 10 pixel and then i'm going to be using a font size property so font size is going to be like 16 pixel and after that we need to use the border property so there should be a border from all the sides so one pixel and we are going to use a solid border this is a solid one and we need to provide the color so it is going to be like cc and then we need to specify the border radius property so border radius is going to be like 5 pixel so this will be the input group means the form group of the input the input element from the form group so if i go back to the then you can see our application is taking uh, the style just like we want to do it okay so we have now this light gray border uh, when i click on it we get this default styling the active code next we need to add the code for the calculate button and then this result one so again coming back to the visual studio code so first time we'll be adding the code for the result so where is the result so this is a result okay so i'm just targeting the result and inside of that first we need to add the font size property and we are going to add the text align property so we are going to make it into center and then the margin top property which is going to be like 10 pixel okay so now the next part is to add the code for the button so our calculate button calculate and then we need to specify the hyphen btn i think i am adding the correct one so i'm just going to copy it so that i didn't make any spelling mistake otherwise it will not going to work and then we need to open this code bracket so i'm adding here a padding so padding is like 10 pixel after that we need to add 20 pixel so this notepad is like padding okay and then we need to add a background color so background color we need a nice bluish color so 79 ff not add the red we need a hashtag 2979 ff so this will give us a blue color and then we need a color which is a font color property fff hashtag first thing to specify hash not hashtag and after that we need to specify border is going to be none okay and then the font weight we are going to increase the font weight to like bold and if i just use the bolder one just to make it a little bit different then border radius is going to be like 5 pixel and after that we need to specify the cursor property so the cursor property is going to be like pointer okay so this will be the default coding now again i'm going to copy it and paste it and i will be removing everything except the color property because we need to change it so i will be using here a 4 4 and then 8 capital a and ff no td is like ff also the hash symbol so this is a, a new color little bit darker than the previous one so if i save it and let me see the output screen so you can see it's becoming changing the color is not changing okay we need to make it a little bit lighter i think so if i go back to the visual studio code and if i say it here we can change it like with this one also okay if i just hover over it so it's actually the default okay so what i did actually it's actually overriding the code because i didn't specify here a uh, hover so i'm going to specify the hover first let me undo it the color that i have used previously and here we need to specify the hover okay save it and if i just go back you can see now the color is actually changing so this one is actually working on the url part and it is actually working on the live plugin so it is a different so almost same so now it's time for the 
javascript part first we need to get the id elements of this whole field also the button and then we need to calculate the logic and then need to display the result inside this result element which is a paragraph element so let's start with the javascript part so coming back to visual studio code so let first open our javascript file so first we need to create here a function so it's going to be a function which is calculate calculate maturity amount i name my function then we need to specify the basis and then its body so the thing is here we need to actually first get the input values so first here i will be writing and cut and get the input values get the inputs input or i can say that they get the input values from the form elements okay and the first we need to do it here const and principal so instead of using get element directly first we need to use a function called parse float and inside of this we need to get the element so i am typing here document dot get element by id and inside of the we need to specify the bracket and a single quote and then i will be typing the name of the id element principal okay and then we need to get a value so here we need to type it uh, after the bracket dot value okay so this is what we need to do then i'm going to copy it because we need to get the element id of the two more so i need to change it here interest rate and here i will be also typing the interest okay so we get the second id and then the third one is tenure and document order. and here we need to specify the tenure as well so now we get the elements then we need to perform the calculation so here i will be again typing the code perform the calculation inside we need to create the another const variable which is maturity maturity amount is equal to then the logic which is principal multiply with the principal amount inside of the bracket principal multiply with the interest interest rate and then we need to multiply it with the tenure as well and then we need to divide this value by 100 so this is a logic for calculating the maturity amount and then we need to display the result so here i will be typing the comment display the result and instead of that again we need to use the document dot get element by id and here we need to specify the result which is our paragraph element which is a paragraph element and inside of that we need to update its inner text value inner text is equal to and then we are here using a template string so if i use it here like that text note case one template string so here i will be using a maturity maturity amount and then colon and then i will be using a dollar symbol then curly brackets this is a template string then here i need to type the maturity amount dot two fixed and inside of this we need to specify here two and then we need to actually terminate it so this is what so let me just zoom out a little bit okay so this is the final code of the result which it will display the result now if we run this application we didn't able to calculate it because we have fetched the ids of all the four elements but we have our five elements the button id is not fetched means we need to add the listener to this our button okay so after the end of this function we need to add the listener to our button outside of this function so attach the listener attach the event listener to the calculate button okay so let me add it so first we need to use the document dot get element by id so we have actually specified the button id which is calculate calculate btn 
I didn't make any typo. I let me first check it. So calculate PTN, copy it, and this I want to paste it. Then we need to add the event listener by adding dot add event listener. So we are going to add event listener, pressing a tab key, and instead of that we need to specify the click event listener. So here is a click, and then we need to specify a comma, and then calculate maturity amount, which is the name of our function. So we need to call this event okay and after that we need to specify a here a terminator so that's actually marks the completion of the code if we save it and then we need to run this application so if i coming back to the browser okay so i'm going to refresh it and then i will be adding here a amount which is one lakh okay so we have five zeros the rate of interest is going to like 6.0 and then the tenure is actually like one year so if i click on calculate then you can see we get this whole big string so it's actually not working i think there is something problem so if i change the value again like 5 lakh you can see we have 5 0 6.0 0. if i just add here only 6 calculate it then we are actually multiplying it so it's actually not working there is something problem so we need to fix it so coming back to our visual studio code so let me see the javascript part because the designing part is done properly but we are actually facing the problem so actually here is a problem we need to actually add the value instead of multiplying so here we need to add the plus symbol okay so we need to add the principal with the multiplication so save it and if i again refresh it make sure you can see we are actually working on the url one which is the live server one this is actually working on the path one okay so let's again check it by entering the value so i am actually here entering the one lakh again so we have five, five zeros then the rate of interest is going to like 6.0 and then the tenure is going to like one so if i click on calculate then you can see now it's actually showing 6000 interest so if i change the value to like 7.0 then we get 7000 rupees of interest and for two years it's going to like 14000 and if i just increase it here a value like 5 lakh so you can see here is a 5 lakh and if i just do it then you can say we are actually earning 70000 as an interest rate on 2 years okay so this is the final working code of our ft calculator so that's it for this lecture if you like this lecture then leave a review and if you face any difficulty then comment it down i will definitely try to help you so thank you for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Welcome back to this lecture. So in this lecture, we are going to build the to-do list application from scratch inside this lecture. So let me first show you the application that we are going to build in this particular lecture. So you can see this is the final project that we are going to build. So you can see this is having a nice little card. We have the heading which is to-do list. Then we have this input type which is add new to-do, the placeholder text. And then we have this nice hover effect on the button. So if I click on add, then you can see nothing is happening. So once I enter the text inside this first to do, this is first to do, to do task. And if I click on add, then you can see the task is actually added to this particular list. And if I add here a second to do, and if I enter add, then you can see the second to do is add after the first to do. So it's actually creating the list. So the first part is we need to start with the HTML part of this to-do list application. So here you can see inside the Visual Studio code, I have created three files. The first is index.html, the second is script.js and the third is style.css file. So I have created all of these three files to save some time. Okay, so I'm going to just increase the size of this Visual Studio code and then I'm going to resize the browser window. So that you can see the output once I type the code. Okay, so just make it a little bit more bigger. And I'm going to remove this one. And the next thing is here I will be using the H1. So it's going to be like to do list. Okay, so if I save it, I save it and then if I just run this project by using the go live server extension then you can see to do list right 
so this will be the heading for the project now we need to wrap this h1 element inside the div tag which will act as a container for the project so for that we need to here use the container so i am using the emit shortcut so here i will be writing the container and pressing the tab key inside of this container i will be co pasting the code of the h1 element if i save it then you can see nothing is changed because the there is only single element now we need to actually specify the rest of the elements so the another element is actually the input type which is type is going to be text so that we can enter the text into the input of the element and then we need to specify the id so the id is going to be like new to do item okay so it should be a, or i can say the new to do input to make it more meaningful then i need the placeholder text so enter your to do okay so this will be the placeholder text for the input type and after that we need a button so here we need to add the button then the id of this button so it's like add to do r for btn which is a add to the button then i'm going to specify the here add as a text to the button which will be displayed so if i control save it then you can see these two elements is now appearing at the screen the next element is we need is to actually creating the list for that we need to use the dual element so this is going to have an id of to do list this will we are going to update with the javascript so there is no text inside of this and we don't need to specify any list item we are going to do that with the use of javascript so i'm going to style the other these three elements in the css part of this to do list application okay so our next step is to add the css part to this to do list application so for that we need to use the style.css file so i'm going to click on this style.css file so here you can see it's totally an empty so we want to provide the code inside of it so that we can stylize the to do list okay so the first element that i am going to stylize is the body element in which i am going to apply the font family so here i will be typing the body element then starting the block of the body and then to specify the font family property so the font i am using is arial sans serif just removing this helvetica font so this is not required or you can use it as per your needs and then i will need to specify the background color so background color as you know it's a light gray which is f2 f2 and if i save it then you can see we get this nice looking grayish color and after that i need to specify the container so make sure the spelling is otherwise you will get error means your css code will not work then we need to add here the max width property to the container so the max width is going to be like 600 pixel this is the max width property then i need to specify the margin not max which is like a margin property i want to use so from top and bottom is going to like zero and then from left and right it's automatically going to calculate the margin okay so the next is we need to use the padding property so padding is going to be like 20 pixel and then i need to specify the background color so the background color is going to be nice white so you can see this is then we need to specify the border radius so the border radius is going to be like five pixel and then i need to specify the box shadow which is uh, gives the nice box shadow so it's going to be zero pixel zero zero and then i need to specify the five pixel or i can go with the 10 pixel then i need to specify the color to the border so it's going to zero 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 and then the alpha is going to be like 0 0.3 if i save it then you can see we get this nice looking border so our next step is to style this h1 element so action and then we need to add the code to this h1 element so margin top it's going to be like zero pixel and then we need to add the line property so text align is going to be center save it then you can see it's going to the center of the screen and then we need to specify the color so the color to change the font color so it's going to be like uh, slightly lighter than the black color so that marks the completion for the code of the h1 element then we need to specify the code for this input type for the css so the first is input and then i am here using the type attribute selector so i'm going to specify the input type is equal to text okay then the block of this input type so here i will be using the padding property from all the sides i'm going to give the 8 pixel padding i'm using the 8 pixel padding. then i'm using the font size property to 16 pixel save it then you can see it's becoming a little bit bigger 
okay and then i have using the property is equal to none and then i need to use the border radius property so border radius is going to like two pixel solid border and then the color so i'm going to here use the hex color code if i save it and if i click it then you can see the border is appearing okay so on click of the input type then we get the border then i need to specify the width so width is uh, like uh, i'm actually using 80 percent width okay so it's going to give us a nice big border all right and this will be the border border is none actually i want a little border not none border i actually want a border like a one pixel border but this is not looking good so one pixel solid and this is the color i will be using here like uh, f2 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 so this will give us a light border okay so that if i click it then it will become darker so this is a border i am actually using because the non border property doesn't make any sense because it's the white and our input type is also white so we need to make a little differentiation between these two elements okay and the last property which is margin from right is going to be like a 10 pixel because right now this button and this input type do both are appearing at these very close to each other so that is why i am actually using the whole 10 pixel then it's actually having a 10 pixel between these two elements so that's it so that is for the input type then next we need to use the button to style the button so here i will be using the button and then i need to specify the code button so right first i want to apply so padding is from left and right is going to be 8 pixel not 80 pixel it's like 8 pixel and then the 20 pixels if i save it then you can see we have this nice button and then i need to specify the round color so background color is going to be like this default color i'm using it and then i need to specify the font color so font color is like fff for the dark white or i can say that the white color then we need to remove the border so the border is going to be like and after that i need to change the cursor property to pointer so if i you can see now we need the hover element so i'm just going to copy it paste it removing the three properties also this padding one actually also this log and then i need to here specify the code for the border which is 333 which will gives the little darker one and then i need to here specify the hover state is the hover plus then if i hover it then it become little more darker okay so that marks the completion for the code of the button as well so the next style that we want to do is the style for the to do and the ul element but right now we doesn't able to see the ul element so that is why we are not going to provide this style to the at this point of time we're going to provide the style once we write the javascript code so our next step is to write the javascript code so our next step is to add the javascript part to this project so let's start with it so for that we need to open our script.js file and this is the style we have done in the previous css part of the project so the first thing is we need to fetch the id of the elements so right now we have three ids we need to fetch which is input type and this to do list which is a ul list and the button okay so that i am actually here seeing the id in the first id is a new to do so i'm going to copy this id and coming back to the script part so here i will be using the first cons variable and then the list of the then i'm going to specify the name as to do list then i will be using the document dot get element by id and then here i need to specify the id inside the double quotes and after that i need to copy this line of code and pasting it into two more times and then i need to specify here new to do input also then the name of this variable is going to like add to do btn okay i need to copy the id which is add to do btn which is the id of the button so i'm going to specify it here and i need to copy the id of the to do list to do list id so this is a new to do list so this is actually the to do list id i have actually copied the wrong one okay so that's now completely id the list is for to do list new to do input new to do input then add to do button and then add to do button so these are the three variables we have now finally fetched the 
ID of the elements. And after that, here I will be using the add to do button, add event listener. So instead of that, we are going to add the listener, and then I need to specify the column. Then I will be here using the click. Then here I am going to specify the function, the event that we are going to, or I can use the arrow function. So arrow function, we need to provide the fat arrow. Okay, so this will be the arrow function. Then need to specify the body of the arrow function. Okay, and then inside of that, we need to add the const variable. So this is basically used to hold the new to do text. Whatever we will type inside this to do input type, it is going to hold inside of this particular variable. Okay, so it is going to be new to do text is equal to. Then we need to set the value of new to do input dot value. So whatever value is coming from the input type, we are going to set it here. No, it's actually value. And after that, we need to check for the empty to do. So we are going to use if condition, then the body of the if. Instead of that, first I will be writing the new to do input. So we need to check whether the new to do input is not equal to empty string. If it is an empty, then we don't want to allow it to enter into the list. That is why this condition is here used. After that, I am again going to create another constant variable. So this is time is actually the new to do item is equal to document dot get element by id. So we don't need to get the element. We actually we want to create the element. Create element. So we want to actually append the element inside the HTML document. So we actually creating the new to do item. Okay. So this will be the new to do item variable. This will actually be the item that will be entered inside the list, and after that, we need to use the new to do item dot inner text. So after creating the list, we need to update its inner text is equal to the new to do text that we are getting from the input type. So we let me first complete it new to do text. So these two lines of code is the, it's actually going to create the li element in the HTML document, and after creating the document, we need to update its inner text value with the new to do text. This new to do text value is coming from the new to do input, which is a uh, this input. Okay, so these two lines of code is actually clear to you. I hope. Then the next we need to create the delete button. Right now you can see this is a delete button, so we need to create this. HTML element as well. So again, I'm going to here use the const be const keyword, and then I will be here using delete delete and to do btn. So it's going to be like a button is equal to document dot. Then I'm going to again create the element. So it is going to be like create element, and then what element we want to create? So we want to create the button element. Okay. After creating the button, then we need to append it with the To do okay, so again we need to create the same process. We need to update its text property so that we can provide this X button just to indicate the cross to actually delete the to do. Okay, so again here I will be using the delete to do button dot inner text. We are going to update its inner text value. Then we need to initialize it with the delete to do btn value. Okay, so this is for the, or I can go with the like uh, x. We need to append it, not delete one. First, we need to add the x here. Do will be created. So if I just simply I enter here this, and if I enter, then you can see nothing is working because right now we are not displaying the result inside the UL. We are just creating these to dos inside the variable scope. We are not displaying it. So let me first complete the code. Then I will be. Show you the output. After that, we need to add the class list element to this delete to do button so that it can delete the to do from the UI. So for that, here I will be using again delete to do btn dot class list. So this will be the class list dot. I'm going to add using the function add. Then we need to start the bracket. And inside bracket, we need to specify the code inside the double quotes. So we actually want to delete to do btn. So whatever the button we have, so here we need to specify the delete, delete to do btn. Okay, so this will actually use to delete the to do button, and then after that we need to here use the delete 
to do BTN. And then we need to add here the add event listener so that when we click on the button, then we can remove the to do. So for that, again, we need to specify the terminator here and then we need to start the specify the event which is going to be the click event. Then we need to specify here the function, then the body of the function. And inside of this function, we need to add a line of code which is new to do item. So new to do item, which is actually the new to do item, this one, this is a variable one. We need to call a function called remove. Okay, so this when we click on this X button, then it's going to remove the to do from the list. And after that, we need to create the list, means append the code inside the list. Once we add the delete procedure, we need to update the to do as well. So new to do input dot append child. So this will be our append child, and then we're going to use here delete to do btn. Okay, and then we need to add the because once we delete the, the delete functionality will be performed when the button is clicked, then we also need to append the delete button inside the new item because it will be also as a act as a part of the task or I can say that the to do. Then we need to update the to do list, which is our main UL list. Okay. So inside of that, we need to use the append child functionality, append child method. Then inside of that, we need to provide the new to do item. Which is the main new to do item. You, this, this will be the new to do item. We need to append it to the list so that we can display it. And then we need to set the new to our, once we enter the value, we need to also make sure once we click on it, this edit means this input type will become empty. So to do that, we are going to here add the code which is new to do input dot value is equals to empty string. So that marks the completion of the code for the to do list application. Okay. So if I completely save it and if I run this project by just refreshing it and here I will be adding my first. This is the first. If I add here first task and if I click on add, then you can see we are getting here a empty one. Why? And if I enter, then you can see we have this empty one. We can delete it. But right now the text is not appearing. We are actually adding date to do's. So there is a mistake. So we need to figure out where is we have made a typo. So guys, the problem is here inside of this code is we actually comparing here the wrong input variable. So here we need to compare the new to do text instead of new to do input. So I'm going to copy this and I will be replacing it here. So once we compare the text, if it is not empty, then we want to execute the code. Also here instead of new to do input, we need to update the value of the new to do item because right now this is actually holding the list item. Okay. So we need to replace it, this new to do input with this variable. So I'm going to copy this here and I will be pasting it here. After that, once we control save it and then I will be adding here the, this is the to do. Now to do, this is to do. If I can add it, then you can see now we are actually able to see the text. Then we can add here a drink water. And if I control means click on the add button, then you can see we are getting the second to do drink water. If I click on this, then we can also delete the to do. So the next step is we need to add the CSS so that we can see like uh, this. Okay. So you can see like this one. So to add this type of CSS, we need to come in back to this type CSS file. So the first thing is we need to add the CSS for the UL, which is for the unordered list, selecting the UL selector which is for the unordered list. So first step is we need to add the list style to none so that we can remove the basic styling like bullets of the list. Then we need to specify the padding to zero. Then I need to specify the margin top property, which is going to be like 20 pixel. So if I save it, if I enter here like some text, this and if I enter here, then you can see, then you can see there is nothing is changed because we need to style the list element as well. The only thing is actually removed is the bullets of the list. Okay. Then I'm going to select the ally element and then inside of this ally element, first time to specify the padding. Spreading from all sides is going to be like 10 pixel. And then I need to specify the background property, which is the background color. So the background color is like three times E, which is for the dark. Then from the board margin bottom property, which is going to be like five pixel. 
and after that i need to specify here border radius property which is also be 5 pixel then we need to specify the display property so display is going to be like flex and then we need to specify the justify content center and then align items at center so once i save it then you can see the text is now text and the button is actually at the center of the screen so instead of doing that justify content center we can add it as the space between so if i save it so now if i enter here a long text like this is the first to do to do task to be to be completed okay so now the element is actually changed also we need to add the style to this button because right now they are actually following the same style code for this add button so to do that but before that we also need to specify one more element which is the ally ally and then here i will be using the last child function means the last child property so last child property is going to lie bottom zero pixel if i save it then you can see this property is now applied then we need to add the code for the button so we have specified the id to the button inside the javascript file you can see that this is a delete to do class list add so we are actually specifying the class selector to this delete to do button variable we can add adding the class element directly means dynamically with the javascript code so we can use this id name this is delete to do button control c copy it and then if i coming back to the css part here i will be using the dot and then pasting the name of the class then instead of that first we need to add the background color so the background color is going to be like red so here i will be using the red color okay and then i need to specify the font color so the font color is going to be like white so i'm using the color names here you can rgb function just to speed up the process i just use here the color name then color is going to be none and then i need to specify the padding so padding is going to be like 5 pixel from the top and bottom then from left and right is going to be like 10 pixel and after that i need to use border radius property so border radius is going to be like 3 pixel and then i will be using the cursor property or circle is like cursor pointer so once i save it then you can see the button style is actually changed the only thing is need we need to change the hover state of the button as well so if i control c it and in control c b then here we need to add the or element so delete button and then we need to change the color here so here i will be using the hashtag d32 for my color name so this will be the color which is a slightly darker than the previous color okay so that's marks the completion of the code for the css part as well the leftover css part this is style we need to add after the javascript code because all of this style is actually coming dynamically that is the reason we have specified this code once we completed the javascript so if i completely refresh it and then add the like drink water okay do coding stuff so once you complete the to-do list task then you can simply if you did the coding stuff then you can remove it okay so that marks the completion of this to-do list application lecture so if you like this lecture then leave a review because your review definitely helps me to actually improve my courses so thank you for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Welcome back to this module. So in this module, we are going to start the creation of the BMI calculator application. So let me first show you the application that we are going to build in this entire module. So this will be the final application. So you can see we have this BMI calculator that has this drop down. So from this drop down, you can select the gender. So if I select here a female, then here we need to enter the value of the H, like if I enter here a 55, then we need to enter the height in inches. So if we enter here a like, we have split the height into two different modules. The first is for the fifth, the second is for the inches. Then we need to enter the weight, so it is going to be like uh, 49 weight. If I click on calculate, then you can see it is actually a normal weight. Now if I refresh it and if I select here a male, I enter here a like 45 H, height is like 5 and like 2. And the weight is also like 40. If I click on calculate, then you can see now the category of the BMI is underweight, and this is the body mass index value, which is 16.13. So this will be the final application that we're going to build in this entire module. So our first step is to start with the HTML part of the project, which is BMI calculator. 
Now for the HTML part, I have already created the three files inside the Visual Studio Code, which is index.html, style.css, and script.js file. So I have already linked the style file with the use of this link tag and also the script file with this particular line of the code. Now the first step is we need to actually wrap the entire code inside the container if I show you the final version of the application. So this is the final version of the application that we want to develop and this will be the application that we are going to develop in this entire module. So I have launched the application inside the Chrome browser with this live server extension. So our first step is we need to start the container and then we need to place these form elements. So we are going to use the form, a different approach than the previous project. So coming back to the index.html. So the first thing is we need to specify the container. So I'm going to use here a container which is a emit plugin which gives us the division code. Inside of the container, I will be using the h2 element and then I will be here specifying the heading to the BMI calculator. All right, so this will be the heading for the BMI calculator, which is h2. So if I come back to this one, which is the project that we will develop in this entire model, now you can see h2 element BMI calculator is actually visible to the browser. After that, we need to add here a form element. Now we don't need any action because we are not using any backend server here. So then we need to specify the ID. So ID is going to like BMI form. Then we to specify the some spaces inside of the form we need to place all of these elements which is this particular selection or i can say that the label then this is actually a selection inside of that we need to add these options which will act as a drop down but it is not a drop down it is actually an option inside the selection input element of the html then we need to specify the label again then with this input type which is the number because we are dealing with the numbers so coming back to the this one which is a project that we want to develop in this entire module and then coming back to the index.html so the first thing is we need to add the label so the label here inside of that we need to specify the four value to gender and then we need to here specify the text to the label which is gender and after that we need to use here a select select and then we need to here remove the name one because we don't want to use the name instead of that we need to specify the id which is going to be gender and then the main thing that we want to actually specify inside this select tag which is the option elements and also we need to actually add here a required attribute because without that we actually don't want to calculate the bmi then we need to add here a option the first option is actually for the mail so here we need to add the value to mail and then the text to that particular option will be mail then i'm going to duplicate it by pressing the shift alt and down arrow key then it's actually create a duplicate for the first line then here i will be adding the female and then also i'm changing the value to female all right so now the selection is actually completed which is the first element you can see now this selection is actually appeared inside the web browser after that we need to actually start the creation of this age element so coming back to the bmi1 and then here coming back to the index.html then i'm pressing a one enter and then I enter here a label so for that we need to use the age and then we need to specify the label value to age and after that we need to add here a input then the input type is going to be number because we are actually working with the numeric values so that is the reason we need to specify here a numeric value which is the input type number then i have specified here a id which is age because later on we want to fetch these ids inside the javascript file we want to actually bind these ids to the javascript variable so that we can provide some logic to these input elements and after that we need to add the placeholder attribute inside of that we need to provide the enter age and then this is also required because without this we actually don't want to calculate the values all right then we need to provide the another label not a label it is not a label it's actually a label and then for this one it is actually for the height this is for the height and i can enter here a like height fit because it is having two values because here we need to specify the two input type then the value for the label okay and then we need to actually 
press the enter key to come back to the next line. So first we need to specify here another input input and then the type is going to be number then here we need to specify the id so it is like id which is going to be height feet and uh, we need to provide here a placeholder so the placeholder is going to be like feet the placeholder that will be visible to the ui element if i just refresh it this is a placeholder that is we specified here and then this is also going to be required not read only it is going to be required and after that i'm going to just simply create a duplicate of this one to save a little bit of the time then instead of height fit we are then going to here use the height in inches height inches the input type is going to be number then only changes with the id name and also we need to here change the placeholder to inches all right so that's for the height one of the inputs now the next we need actually a weight so this weight is coming back to the index.html again so here i will be typing the label then 4 is actually going to be value for the weight then we want to display the label which is like weight make sure the first character is a capital one so that it looks good and then we need to specify the input type so input and input is going to be number because we are dealing with the numeric values then it is actually going to be required and then we need to specify the id so id is going to be like uh, again i need to specify our id and id is like our weight all right and then we need to specify the placeholder so placeholder is going to be like uh, enter weight in kgs all right so this will be the placeholder for this input element okay so this will be the input if i zoom out a little bit so that you can see the code more clearly all right so that marks the completion of the all input elements for this form elements the next element that we need is the button so we need to specify this button also so here we need to specify the input and then at this point of time we will be using the input type submit and this value is actually going to be like calculate the value that is this one the text will be visible to the button so if i enter here a calculate bmi and if i control save it then you can see all the input element is now visible to the browser now all of them are actually coming to the single line that is because the input we can tell you because their display is actually like in line all of them so we need to actually set these input type in a column like structure where that we will do in the css part of the project of this bmi calculator now the last element that we want is actually to get the result if i enter here a value like uh, i enter here values like uh, 56 so this is this is actually a result element so after the end of the form element we want to display the result so make sure you are outside of the form element and then here we need to create the another division so this is actually for the result so we need to specify the id and this is going to be the result so now you can see the result is not going to be visible so if i enter here like re then it is going to be visible here but we don't want to display it because at the initial we want to display the form look like this so when we click on the button then we want to display the result so that's mark the completion of the code for the html part of the bmi calculator project in the next part we are going to start with the css part of the bmi calculator now it's time to start with the css part of the bmi calculator project so i'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see the css code more clearly so this css file is already linked with the index.html with this particular line of the code so i'm opening the standard css file so instead of that first i'm going to change the background color if you see the final version of the application you can see there is a blue color in the background so we want to apply the background color to this one also so for that we are going to use here a body element so body and inside of that we will be using the background color property so hash character then 349 and it is going to be like 8 d b so this will be the color for the final project all right and then we need to actually use the container because inside the container we have all the other elements like the form the h2 element and also the result element which is a division type 
so inside of the container i'm going to select it and then i'm going to start the body of the container just removing this array bracket closing element and then closing the block so the first thing is inside the container we need to specify the max width so max width property is going to like 400 pixel right and then i need to provide the margin property so margin from top is going to like 200 pixel and it is going to be auto from the left and right then you can see now the bmi calculator content is coming to the center of the web browser okay and then we need to add the padding so padding is going to be like 20 pixel and then we need to add the background color so background color is like uh, hashtag f2 so this will be the color that i'm going to use for this particular project container which is the division container for the bmi calculator then i need to provide the border so border is going to be like two pixel solid border solid and then we need to provide the color so it is going to be like one e and uh, it's like f which is 5f and 8a so this will be the border color for the bmi calculator all right and after the border we need to add the border radius so that we can get some rounded corners so which is going to be like five pixel and then we need to add the box shadow which is a favorite property which gives us a 3d look to this particular project like 10 pixel blurness and then i need to use the rgba which is 0 0 0 and the alpha value is going to be 0 0.2 now you can see there is a shadow is applied to this particular container okay so that's max code for the container next we need to add the element code for the sqm which is a heading tag then it is going to like margin top so margin top is going to be zero all right and then we need to add the color so color we need to add a dark black all right and then we need to add the text like uh, alignment so it is going to be the center of the container and then we also need to add the text decoration which is underline okay so now you can see there is a underline is applied to this bmi calculator heading so that's my completion of the code for the s2 element then we need to add the code for the form element so we need to start the form block so the first thing is we need to add the margin so margin from bottom so this is like our margin bottom property and it is going to like 20 pixel right and then we need to add the display so display is going to be like flex so now everything is actually aligned to the one single line so we need to actually use here a flex direction so flex direction is going to be the column one now all of the elements is now bearing like a in one column so that marks the code for the form now we are going to handle the label and the input elements and the selection element one by one so the first we need to actually style the label so i'm going to select the label tag directly and inside of that i will be adding the code for the label so the first thing is we need to use the font size to large and then we need to add the font weight we are also going to increase the font weight to 600 pixel and then we need to add here a margin bottom property because right now they are very close to each other so we need to actually provide some margin so now you can see margin bottom property is applied and then we need to add here a color property color and then we need to add some dark black color so that is for the labels the next we need to add the code for the input and also the selection so i'm going to combining the two selectors so here i will be using the input and then to specify the type also inside the array brackets so type is equal to so we are actually using the type here number so make sure you need to specify here a number and then to specify here a uh, like comma operator like comma and then we need to also provide the select so in the second line i will be specifying the select and then we need to start the block line of the code we start the block of the code then to provide the width so width is going to be like 95 percent okay and uh, then we need to add the padding so padding is going to like 10 pixel you can see now the padding is increased and then we need to add the border property so border is going to be like none all right if i control save it now you can see the border is removed then we need to add the background color so background color is like hashtag ff which is a pure white color then we need to add the border radius so that we can get rounded corner which is 5 pixel and then 
for the 3d look we need to add here a box shadow property so it is going to lie 0 pixel 0 pixel then for the blurness it is going to be 5 pixel then we need to use here a rgpa so you can see now it actually gets a 3d look okay and then after that we need to add here a margin bottom property because right now these two one are actually very close so that is the reason or also this weight one is very like uh, close to this particular button so that is the reason we need to add the margin button property which is 10 pixel now you can see the problem is fixed and also when we actually come back to this focus state of these elements we want a blue color like you can see this blue one so for that we need to actually change its focus state so i am going to copy this one and pasting it here and then inside of that i will be using here a focus okay and also for the select one we need to use here a focus it is actually a pseudo class then we need to close the block of the code so inside of that we need to actually here use the outline so outline right now you can see there is an outline is coming so we want to remove that outline so outline and then we need to set it here none if i save it so when i click on this particular focus button then you can see the outline is removed the next thing is we need to apply the box shadow so copy the box shadow code from here paste it and then we need to provide here a hexa decimal notation color so we can use it here a color like this one auto suggesting the color if i click it then you can see now we get this particular effect so the next thing is we need to specify the code for the button and also you can see there is a one problem if i just come back to here this is actually similar width is applied to this input because and this one is actually also having the similar input but the problem with this one you can see in our one these are not same so to apply the same style we need to actually select the select selector okay we need to select the select selector so here we need to add the width to like 100 percent so now you can see the width is exactly the same to these all other input elements and also this particular button now the next step is we need to actually provide the style for this button so for that instead of selecting the button because right now you can see it is not a button it is actually input type submit so we need to select the input type submit so i'm going to actually copy this code from here and just removing the focus state all right and just remove the one bracket and here we need to use the submit okay so this is will be the input type submit the first thing is we need to add the code for here like a padding so padding is going to be like 10 pixel and then we need to add here a margin top property so margin top is going to be like 10 pixel and then we need to add here a background color so background color will be like this one the control save it and you can see then we need to add here a border property so border is going to be none then we need to add the border radius so border radius is going to be like 5 pixel so that we can get a rounded border okay and i can just go with the 3 pixel because 5 pixel is too much for this particular button okay and then we need to add the color property so color is going to be like uh, hashtag ff and then we need to add the cursor property so cursor is going to like pointer okay and then we need to add higher a transition property so transition and uh, we need to apply the transition for the background color so i'm going to copy this here paste it background color and it is going to be like 0.3s which is like ease okay and then we need to apply the hover state hover pseudo class for this particular button paste it close the block of the code then here we need to specify the colon and then the hover okay and then we need to change the background color so it's like hashtag 2187b5 control save it if i hover over it and you can see the color of the button is changing with the proper transition effect so the last element that we want to style is the result element so it is an id so that is the reason we need to use here a hash character and the name of the selector inside of that first we need to add the font weight so the font weight is going to be like bold and then the margin top property which is like 20 pixel and then the color so color is like this one which is 349 
So if I control save it, right now it is not visible, but if I enter here some values, control save it, then you can see the style is applied. Alright, so I'm going to remove it. So now the designing of the project is completely done. So our next step is to start with the JavaScript part of the project. So that we are going to do in the next part. Now it's time to start with the JavaScript part of the BMI calculator application. So for that we need to use the script.js file. And this file is already linked inside the index.html with this particular line of the code which is script tag and instead of that we have specified the source and script.js file. Now coming back to the script.js file and instead of that first we need to get the id of this particular form and then we need to add the listener and then we need to listen to the submit event. So first I am going to type the code then I will be explaining you in more detail. So document.get element by id. So here I'm going to specify the ID of the form element. This is this BMI form. So I'm going to copy the ID and here I will be specifying the ID name. Then we need to add the event listener. So we want to listen to the submit event. So inside the single quotes, I'm going to specify here submit event. That is this one. And we are actually going to here pass a one function with the parameter E. So this E parameter is actually having a purpose here. So instead of this e, we are actually going to call here a prevent default. So this actually used to actually stop the default behavior of the browser. When we click on the submit button, because by default when we listen the submit button, whenever we fill up the entire data, if I click on the submit, then the page will be refreshed and navigate to the different page. This is a default behavior. So in order to like, stop that default behavior, we need to provide this function, which is e.prevent default. Alright, so this particular line of the code does work. So it's actually first to fetching the ID of the form, then we are setting the listener, and then we are actually listening to this submit event listener, and then we are actually passing the function. Inside of that, we are calling this e dot prevent default, which actually basically stop the page to be refreshed. And after that, we need to actually get the IDs of all of these particular HTML elements. So for that we need to create lots of constants. So here I will be using the const. So this is going to be like gender. So this is actually like document dot get element by id because we have specified the ids inside of these all input elements. You can see id age, id gender, and id like these height, width, and inches. So that's the reason we are actually here using the get element by id. And inside of that we need to pass here a gender, which is the id of the first element gender okay and then we need to here pass the dot value because we want to get the values from this input elements so that is the reason we need to actually pass here a value if we don't specify a value then we actually getting the entire tag name like this entire select tag will be initialized to this particular gender variable okay so that is what we actually want to do so the next thing is we need to actually get the value of the age. So we need to again create here another const which is age equals to and then here we need to use the parse int function because by default whenever we get the value of the HTML elements we are actually getting the string values. So that is the reason we need to wrap this entire code inside the parse int function. So here inside of that we need to pass the document dot get element by id and then we need to specify here a id so the id of the age is age all right so here inside the single quotes i will be specifying the age and then we need to here pass the dot value and then we need to terminate that particular parsing function okay so if we don't use here a parsing then we are getting the inappropriate values because by default whenever we get the values from the html input form elements then it is going to be treated as a string actually it's give the value in a form of string so we need to convert that string value into integer because we are working with the age number which is a single entity number so that is our reason or i can say that the positive natural number so that is the reason we have used here a parse int Similarly, I am going to duplicate it into three more times. 
because this one is for the height and fit. So here I will be using the AI height and I'm going to use here a camel case typing and this is going to be like height in inches and this one is for the weight. Okay, and then we need to change the corresponding ID values. So the age is done, then we need to provide the height fit ID. So the second one is for the height fit ID. Then we need the height inches ID. So I'm going to copy the height inches ID. I'm just using here a copy paste because I don't want to make any mistake. Uh, also, I'm actually recording a tutorial, so that is the reason I'm using here a copy paste of the ID names. Okay. So now all of the IDs are fetched with proper parsing function conversion. Now there is a one thing instead in this particular weight one, we are going to use here a float because a weight can be in a form of point or also we have a value of the BMI will also be coming in a form of decimal. If you I can enter here a value like female, enter here like no age is not like this number, you can add a check here. It's totally up to you how we want to add a check. Calculate and then you can see it's actually giving us a point base value. I can say that the float value. So that is the reason I have used here a parse float. So we are getting then whatever value we are getting it, we are converting it in, into a float. Okay, so the next step is we need to check whether all of these values are entered. If all of these values are not entered, we don't want to actually calculate the BMI calculator. This is the one. This will be the final version of the application. This is the one that we are actually developing in this entire module. So for that, we need to add here a condition. Also, inside the HTML part, we have added the required field. But still, inside the JavaScript, we want to add a check for the condition. Then all of these values are entered. Then we are going to perform the BMI logic. Also, you can see input type. I have specified here a number. But still, I have used here a parse int function. Although we are getting the numeric value, but still there may be a chance that that value will be treated as a string value. I already explained to you that why we use the parse int function here. And then inside of that, coming back to the logic part, we are going to specify the if condition and then we need to start the if block. So inside of that, first we need to check whether the gender is enter, gender. Then and operator, and then we are going to use the age. If all of these values and height and fit is this one. So if all of these values are entered, then we want to actually execute the if block. So now we have to add here uh, variables. We are going to calculate the height first, and then we are going to calculate the BMI, and then we are going to fetch the result element IDs. Inside of that, we will display the a result by updating its inner HTML. So let me first type the code, then I will be explaining you. So first we are going to create here a variable which is height and I can say that the height in meters. Okay, so we need to convert the height into meters because why I am saying the height in meters because we are providing the height into two different formats means we are providing height into height in feet and height in inches. So first we need to convert the height into inches which is this fit one. Then we need to add these two values. So that is the reason I have added here height in meters and after adding the height fit value which is converted into inches and also the height inches which is this one. Then we need to convert it into by multiplying with our value into meters. So I am going to type the code then I will be explaining you what I will be saying here then it will become more clear to you. So first I have added here these kinds of brackets the height and fit. So first we are going to convert the height and fit into inches by multiplying it with the value 12 and then we are going to add it with the height in inches which is providing by with this particular variable. So now we have converted the height into inches and after that we need to multiply this value 0 0.0254 which is an approximate value like 0 0.0254 meters in an inch. So in one inch this particular value exists. So we are going to multiply this with the entire inches value 
then we are getting the height in meters if i enter here a comment height in meters okay so after getting the height in meters then we need to add a logic to calculate the bmi which is a body mass index so body mass index is actually based on the weight so here we need to get the value of the weight which is we will get with the use of this particular variable which is weight and then we need to divide this particular value with the square of the height in meters so height in meters so make sure we don't use the height feet and height inches values while calculating the bmi because we calculate the height in meters so height in meters multiply height in meters because the body mass is actually based on the fat of the person which is the weight divided with the square of the height so then we will get the bmi value all right so this will gives us a bmi value and after that we need to actually get the result which is the result element which is this particular element that is this one so we need to actually get the value of this result element so result element i have named the variable then document dot get element by id because we have used the id selector so that is the reason so we are actually fetching the values so that is the reason i have used here a result instead and i don't use a dot value because we want to display the result but also we want to display the category because right now in the final version of the application you can see we have the category value so according to the value of the bmi we want to display the category as well you can check the value of the bmi variable by just uh, console log the statement i don't want to do that because i know that this will calculate the bmi because i already tested the logic so here i will be using let category because we want to display the category also whether the overweight normal weight or like underweight these are the categories we want to display all right so if we want going to perform here some conditions if bmi is actually smaller than 18.5 then we want to display the category value so it is a category is actually equal to we want to display it under weight under weight so this will be the first value that we want to display so if it is not okay then we are going to perform here a else if block else if condition and we want to check it whether the bmi value is greater than or equal to 18.5 so if it is that a case and also we want to check for the end operator bmi if it is smaller than 24.9 then we want to update the value of the category variable to like normal weight normal weight and here we also need to actually provide the underweight all right and if it is not a case then we also want to provide the another else if condition not escape else if condition then bmi value so bmi if it is greater than equal to 25 and bmi value is smaller than 29.9 if it is that a case then we want to update the value of the category variable to overweight so this will be overweight in the else part we want to display obsess which is a category obsess this is i think i pronounced it right which is my ob ece all right so this will be the category value will be updated on, on the basis of the bmi value that we will receive according to these particular inputs after that once we get the category we get the bmi is time to display the result by updating the inner html of the result element so here we need to actually create another variable which is result message result message is equal to so first we need to construct a full message so that is the reason i will be using here a single quotes your bmi and then i need to concatenate it so to concatenate we will be using a plus 
those plus can be used to concatenate the value so here i will be using the two fixed so that the after the float value i will get only two decimal point values so here i will be using the two fixed two it is not too much difficult you can just simply google it if you don't know about two fixed it is a very simple then i will be adding here a br tag so that the category will be displayed in the next line all right and then Again, I will be using here a result. So here actually, I forgot to add here a result. Actually, I have added a result message. Then we need to add the plus, and then we also need to initialize it. So whatever previous value, the new value will be retained, and also the added the category it means the body marks index value alongside it was also going to have a category value. So it is like category. And then we need to provide here a column and after that we need to then provide here a category value and terminate it and after that at the end the result element value which is the inner html dot inner html and after that we need to provide the result message terminate that control save it now the code of the entire bmi calculator is completed if i enter here a value like male, if I enter a uh, weight like 40, height like 4.9, like 4 feet and 9 inches, weight is going to like 40. If I click on calculate, then you can see normal weight for the male person. If it is a age of 40, if I like 22, click, then you can see still it's going to display the normal weight. Now we need to refresh the page for the female one. If I enter here another value like 55, height is like 5 and 9 inches and if the weight is like 80 click on calculate then you can see it's going to display the value which is like overweight and the bmi value is 26.05 again if i refresh it and for the male one if i enter here a 45 height in 5 6 if i enter here a like weight like 25 then you can see it's actually underweight the bmi score is 8.19 now the entire BMI calculator application is working fine. So if you have any problem, then you can use the Q&A section. Or if you like this video or this entire module, then please leave a review because your review definitely going to help me to reach more students. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next module. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome back to this particular module. So from this module onwards, we are going to start creating the date and time widget application. So let me first show you the application. So this is the application that we are going to build in this entire module which is timer and date widget application. Because it is going to display the time and also the current date of the month like in this particular format. So we will learn how we can fetch these six values because this is hours, minutes, seconds, then this is the month, then this is the date and this is the day so we will learn how we can fetch these six values by using the date object of the javascript which is actually very tricky as compared to when we start learning date because it will mostly confuse most of the beginners but i will be explaining you in a very great detail so that you can easily understand okay so this application doesn't take any input from the user it's going to display the time by using the date object so our first step is to start with the html part of the project now for the html part i have already created the files inside my visual studio code software and also i have launched this application into my web browser which is a chrome web browser and i name my project as time and date widget application so now here i will be linking the css file by using the link tag so here I need to provide the style.css and after that we need to provide here a script tag in which we need to mention the source of the script.js file. Now I have linked all of these files inside my index.html and all of these three files are placed in the same directory which is these 10 cool projects in JS. After that we need to first create the container because in everything like we place in our division and we name the division a class name which is mostly a container. Now here we will be adding a division. Now I am opening the our version of the application that we are going to build in this entire module. Actually I press the control S. That is why that window is actually pop up which is a dialog box for the save. 
So here I will be creating the container. So now I have created the container. Instead of that, I need to place some elements. Now first I will be adding some elements with some static values because we also want to define the CSS. Like these all the values I'm going to hard code it. Then after that, once we're done with the CSS part, then we will be remove it. And then we will be using the JavaScript to dynamically display these particular values. Now coming back to the index.html. So here we will be adding the another class which is cloak container and then I'm pressing the tab key instead of this particular clock container so here I name it wrong it is like clock clock container and instead of that I will be using the span element now inside the span element actually it is a single span element now this particular span element will be used for the hours so I'm going to here give the class as hours Okay, and then here I will be adding a 23 just and also a colon. Then I'm going to duplicate into two more time. This one is for the minutes. So I'm going to give here a minutes. So I'm going to give the minutes like 45. And then this one is for the seconds. And then it is going to have like 0, 05 seconds. So this is what we did with the clock container. Now after the end of the clock container, I need to place the another element which is for the date container to display the date like the current date day and also the name of the month so for that we need to create here another division tag inside of that division tag we need to provide the class and then inside of that we need to use the class name which is date container all right so we have done with this date container so all of the html elements is placed now inside of that i will be also adding here a sunday just to actually give some basic information so that we can add this style now you can see everything is now visible to the web browser so that's marks the completion of the code for the html part for the time and date we get application so our next step is to start with the css part and then after that we will write the javascript so that we can work with the date object of the javascript Now it's time to specify the CSS part for this time and date we get application. So for that we need to use the style.css file. Inside of the style.css file, first I am going to select the universal selector. So first we need to change the margin. So I will be changing the margin to 0. Then the padding is going to be also 0. Then we need to define the border which is box. Border box, you need the box sizing which is going to be border box. Also, I'm going to apply the font family, which is sans serif in this case. So I will be using the sans serif font. Then you can see there is a change in the font of the particular elements that are visible to the web browser. After that, we need to select the body because we want to add the colors. So for that, I will be selecting the body. Inside this, I will be adding the background color. So background color that I will be using here 1A, 1A and 1A. If I control save it, then you can see now the color is visible to the web browser. Now the text, all of these are actually black. That is why they are not visible. If I select it, then you can see these elements are still present. But don't worry, we are going to modify it once we are done with the basic stuff of the body. Then after that, I will be adding here a display property, which is going to be flex. And then I will be adding here a justify content going to be like center. All right. And then I will be adding here align items not align tracks it is like align items that is this one which is also going to be the center so if i control save it then you can see now the elements is actually shifted to the center of the browser now it's time to actually provide the height attribute so i will be using here a height like 100 vh control save it then you can see now it is actually placed at the center of the screen after that we need to add the code for the container so it is the main container in which every element is present so inside of the container, first I need to specify the width. So I will be here using the width. Now here I will be using the 35.87 width like in a form of EMS. Okay, so you can have different kinds of units like pixel, RAMs and EMS. Okay, so I will be here using the display. So display is going to be like grid. So here I will be using the display grid to actually display the things in a two dimensional form okay and then i will be adding here a color because right now they are actually black so it is not visible so i will be adding here a white color to the elements 
if i control save it now whatever content present inside the container the color is changes to white and after that i need to here use the align items so i will be aligning the items to the center all right and it is not actually working then we need to apply the other property which is grid template columns so i will be using here a zero fr and uh, actually not zero fr it's actually eight fr here 8 fr and then i will be here using the 4 fr if i control save it then you can see the time and the day wicket is actually placed in two different columns so this is actually the power of the grid then i will be here using the background color so background color is equal to like 1 e90 ff so this will be the background color used for the entire container just like this like the bluish color all right and after that we need to add the border radius so border radius is going to like 0 0.5 ems i'm actually here using the ancient then you can see we get this capsule like structure but don't worry we are going to fix all of these then here we i'm going to provide the animation code which we will be create after completing the rest of the code then we need to provide the code for the clock container you can see we have two container which is a clock container then we have this date container so this one is a clock container and this one is a date container so first i'm going to specify the code for the clock container so i'm going to copy this clock container id means the class name selector then i will be specifying here a dot then pasting the name of the selector which is clock container inside of that first i will be changing the background color so background color is going to be like this particular one Control save it then you can see the, again it is changing now because we want to display the time in this particular black one just like we have the stopwatch type effect just like we have the digital watch so that is the reason i have used here a black one then we need to change the font color so font color is going to be like again hashtag ff control save it so that is already a font defined but once we actually change the fonts so that is the reason okay even you can remove this property but i'm just going to leave it is because i already apply the font color here inside the container even if you don't want to apply here then you can remove it if you remove it from here also control save it then you can see still these are black then you need to remove, apply the font here instead of that hashtag ffi so control save it then you can see the font is changed to white so you have both options either you can apply the font directly to the container either you can apply it here the font color so i'm just going to use it here i'm just removing the font color property we see color from the container then inside the clock container again i will be adding the text align property so that i can align the container at the center you can see now it is actually at the center of the container okay and then i will be here using the font size property because right now they are very small so i will be using here a 3.7 ems unit now you can see the font size is actually increased and after that i will be using here a margin left property because i want to add some margin to the left because once we style this one then they become very close to each other that is the reason i want to apply some margin from left you can see now we get this kind of effect so we actually get it but we will fix these all and make it like this final version of the application okay so after that inside of the clock container again after specifying the margin left property then we are going to add the border radius property because right now it is like a capsule type because the corners are very like thick so we want a rounded corners so that is the reason we actually going to use here a border radius property so i'm going to use this 0.1 em units you can see now the corners become rounded for that particular clock container then we need to add here a padding property so padding i'm going to use here 0.2 em units and then from left and right it is going to be zero you can see now the height of this particular container is increased a bit because of the padding from all sides which is actually 0.2 em units then we need to add the display property here so display i'm going to use here a flex you can see now it is actually shifted to the left of the container then i am going to here use the justify content which is going to be the center all right and then i will be using here the align items which is going to be the center all right so now it is actually perfectly at the center of the container 
all right then it's time to actually style these particular one so that we can provide here a specific width the reason for providing this specific width is here just like in previous application i told you if the values actually change like from zero to different digits because maybe a chance it is going to be a single digit value so in that situation these values are actually getting because every time whenever this value updated you can see five six and seven the widths will become shrink a little bit so it's actually going to just shake the ui like in previous application i told you why we use the span element and providing a fixed width with providing the display to inline block all right once we complete the entire code for this application then i will be showing you the again why we use that particular code so we are going to do that here as well like log container then the span element instead of that i will be using the first width property because we want to provide a specific width which is 120 pixel here this is a fix that we need to do in order to work with this particular application then we need to add here an inline block and then i will be using here a text align property which is going to be the center now you can see it is becoming more it's looking more good okay then we need to provide the different colors like this one is red this one is green and this one is blue so to do that we need to here use the here class names which is i have already specified hours minutes and seconds so we are going to use these class names here so first i will be using the hours and then we need to do what we just need to change the color so that is the reason i told you that if you didn't specify the color this white one you can because we are already going to override the colors okay so here i will be using this red color for the hours all right then i will be using here a minutes minutes and then again changing the color so this one is going to be like green so zero zero ff zero zero all right so we get a green color and for the seconds i will be using here a blue color so seconds class and i will be here using the color then as symbol and zero 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 then ff which is for the blue now you can see the seconds is changes to blue all right for this particular neon animation we need to create the keyframes and also we need to add that animation to the container which is this particular main container so for that we need to create that keyframe animations so coming back to the other version of the application so here we need to add the keyframe animation so i will be here adding the keyframes so add the rate then we need to use here a keyframes then we need to provide the identifier name which is actually a neon glow so this will be the keyframe identifier so first we need to use for this zero percent then the block of the code and then we need to add the another keyframe which is for the hundred percent then we need to open its code and here we need to actually modify the box shadow so this will be the box shadow here so first it is going to be 0 0 then 5 pixel then we need to provide the colors so i will be here using the whiter one six times wide then another color we want to use 0 0 then the another one which is 20 pixel which is the blurness and then again i will be using here a white color okay so this will be the color code keep in use and then i will be applying the into the 100 percent as well so it is going to be the reverse here we need to provide it 20 pixel and this one is going to be like 40 pixel all right then i'm going to control save it then we need to add this particular keyframe animation to the container so here at the top we need to add the code inside the container element to add it we need to use here an animation attribute animation then the name of the animation which is actually a neon glow actually i need to check it neon glow is the animation name here yes neon glow this is the animation we have used here neon glow and then we need to provide the duration so it is going to be 1.5s then is in out function means is in out one we are going to use and we need to provide this animation to infinite and then we need to alternate control save it now you can see this particular neon effect is applied to the container so our next step is to we need to actually style this date container as well which is you can say it as the like clock container because we already did the clock container code yes we actually completed the clock container it's time to specify the code inside the date container so that we can make it looks more good so coming back to the style.css again 
So after the end of this keyframe code, here we need to paste the name of the class container which is already copied inside the clipboard of the system, which is Visual Studio Code. The first thing I will be here using the padding. So padding is going to be like one em from top and bottom, and then it is going to be the zero from left and right. So if I control save it, then you can see a little padding is applied. All right, and then I will be using here a background property. So background color is actually like uh, we are going to use here a one as check one e, which is like this one. Actually, it is not applied. I think I made a typo. I think date container is a container, and uh, I am actually providing a code here. Date container. So first, we are going to complete the code here. So again, I will be using here a color property. In FFF and if I control save it now you can see the font color is changed even I can change the color a little bit here like this one you can see now the date container color is it changed a little bit right and uh, then we need to actually add here a text align property instead of using here M's and M's means if the M units I will be using here a padding like 10 pixel from all sides so it is like 10 pixel padding and also I am going to increase the color here we are going to terminate that you can see now it is actually shifted from all the sides all right then I will be using here a text align property so text align it is going to be the center now it is actually moved to the center of the container all right and then I will be using here uh, another property which is the border radius property so border radius is going to be like 10 not 10 it is going to be like 5 pixel then we get this rounded corners for the borders so we are going to provide here uh, another code now this is the code that we need to another here use data container and then we need to use here a span element and then we need to start its body instead of that we need to provide the font size property which is going to be a 2.5 em units now this particular element is not present inside our index.html if you see it here inside the date container now this will be used by the javascript dynamically because once we successfully able to get the values of all of these six things then we need to actually format that coding by using the span element then that element which we will be added by using the javascript then we will use this particular code so that we will use this style code inside the javascript which is our next step so that's it for this particular part of the time and date widget application now it's time to start with the javascript part of the project which is time and date widget application so for that we need to use the script.js file so inside of the script.js file we need to fetch these particular selectors so here we are not going to use the get element by id method because inside of the index.html you can see we have actually specified here a classes so this is a class this is also a class so we need to actually provide the classes we need to actually select this data container class also this hour minutes and seconds so coming back to the script.js so here at the top i will be using here a let now these all values are actually going to updated which is hours minutes and seconds so that is the reason i am actually here using a let and also we need to use the data date container so here i am just using here a let okay so date container is equal to then we need to use the document because we want to fetch it from the document dot query selector so here instead of that we need to provide the query selector so the query selector that we want to provide is actually a date container so this one we need to copy it and provide it here all right then i'm going to duplicate it two three more times and this is for the hours container and this is for the minutes container and this is for the seconds seconds container here we need to provide the c so now and then we need to provide the corresponding selector name which is the first is the hours here we also need to specify the dot because it is a class selector 
so if we are using the query selector then we need to provide here a specification whether which selector we are selecting if we are selecting a like a id selector then we need to provide the hash character if we are selecting a class selector then we need to provide here a dot in case of the query selector function if we are selecting the html element inside the javascript by using the query selector then i will be here using the minutes and after that inside of this one we will be using here a seconds okay so we are now successfully initialized all the ui elements of the html inside the javascript with these variables and after that we need to create here two arrays because for the weekdays we need to create here a array so it's like week days and then we need to actually initialize this array with the values okay this is necessary and also for the month name we need to create the month name array now why i'm creating this array because according to the values of the get day get date and get month because these are the functions if you explore on the javascript under the documentation of the date object they are going to return the integer value so if we use a get day function so the current date first we need to get the current date on that current date we are have a, another function which is get day which is going to give us a integer value for sunday it is actually zero right now you can see if i actually here this is actually monday so the value of that particular monday is actually one when we use the dot get day function i will be showing you once we complete the code so first i will be here adding the values inside of this particular one weekdays which is actually the first weekday is our sunday then to specify our comma and then i am going to duplicate into many times all right and here i will be using the monday now here i will be using the tuesday so i'm going to complete this quickly then i will be now i'm going to fast forward this particular process because this is a repeated task and then we need to remove this particular last one and also the comma of the last element of the array so it is actually a saturday like saturday okay so these are the seven days so it is actually stored at the index zero index one two three four five and six similarly we need to define the month names so here first is the january then i need to specify the comma then i'm again going to continue the video once i enter all the month names okay so i have added all the month names which is jan feb march april may june july august september october november so i have added all the month names so now once we get the month name it's time to actually create a method which is actually a helper method which is a method which actually used to format the time so for that we need to create here a function and then we need to here use it as format time now this function is actually going to accept a parameter of time you can name this parameter as whatever you want but we're actually going to pass this function when we want to format the time in a 25 hour hour format okay so we will be using this function inside of this function we need to return because return and i will be here returning the time if it is smaller than 10 then we want to actually proceed with the time with zero and if it is not then we want to add it and also we need to add the time that we have passed here like this time now what it actually means if the time is smaller than zero suppose if i just comment up here now this is 23 and 45 now here you can see the seconds is actually 12 it's again like this particular one you can see here this is actually going to display a single zero and like this one if we didn't use this format time and this will become like this so that is the reason if it is smaller than zero then it's going to add a zero with that particular time so it is will be cut so this will become like zero zero okay if i enter here arrow this will become zero zero then 45 and also 10 
In case of the second, it is also going to add a zero. You can say that whenever we get a single digit, so it is going to add a zero. If it is already a two digit, so this condition is not going to execute this particular one. It is going to ex actually execute this particular time because the time already has the two digit value. All right. So that is what this particular function does. Now the next function that we want to use is actually function which is like update clock. So I'm going to name this function as update clock. This function is actually responsible for the updation of the values. So this is the version of the application that we want to develop. This is the final version. So here coming back to the update clock inside the script.js. So the first thing is we need to create the object which is today. Inside of the today, we need to create the object of the new date. So it is like date. All right. And after that, we need to create the variable, which is date. Now new date, if I just here actually print it by using the console dot log. And if I pr like print the value of the today, enter it. And inside this let date, just comment out this particular line of the code here. Now we are going to call this update clock function outside of it. Otherwise, there is nothing will be visible inside the like consoles. If I press here uh, F12 key under the web browser, so you can see now the console is actually now here you can see it's actually printed the current date, which is Monday, July 31. And it also actually provides us a time that we want if I just all right, and you can say 0, 35, 37, Monday, 31, July. And we get the same data here inside the console. But we want to display that data inside this particular UI element of the HTML. So that thing we are going to do in this particular function by using this day variable, which is actually a today variable. It has all the values with this particular date object of the JavaScript. Now I'm going to close this console window because I show you the basic idea of the application upcoming code inside of the let date. And also I'm going to decrease the size of this particular web browser window. All right. And coming back to the script.js. So let date is equal to today dot get. So here we will be adding by using the get date function. So to get the date, it is easy. We just simply press the control save. So now we get the date, but we want to actually also need a day name and also the month name. So for that, we need to use these arrays. But before that, I also want to check whether we are successfully able to get the date or not. So I'm using here a console log statement. Instead of that, I will be using the date. And I'm just going to comment out this particular console statement, control save it. And if I come back to the browser, make sure Okay, so this is the final version. This is the new version of the application that we actually built in this entire module. If I press the F12 key and you can see inside of the console, we are getting the 31 value. So we are successfully able to get the date by using this today variable. And after that, we need to create the another variable of the let, which is actually used for the day and the months. So here I will be using the day is equal to like weekdays which is our array name that is at the top. We have specified the weekdays inside the array brackets. I need to use the today object, which is a uh, this particular object today, because inside of that we have the initialization of the new date object. So we need to initialize your today variable, not an object. It is actually a today variable. So we need to use here today dot get day. So this will be the today dot get day function. All right. And similarly, we need to get the month. So for that, I'm creating the month variable. Then for the month, we need to here use the month names array. That is this one month names. Instead of that, I will be using here a today dot get month. So this will be the function used to get the month name. So these get day and get month actually return us a integer value right now. If we see the final version of the application, we have Monday. So this Monday has a value one and zero is a value for the Sunday. All right. 
So according to that particular integer values, we have the array initializations. So after that, we are actually going to use here to format the time means we need to actually here get the time. So for that, we need to create the variable which is for the hours at hours is equal to format time. Okay, so this is a format function inside of that we need to pass the time. So we have the initialization of the today, then we are going to use here a get hours. Alright, so this function will be used. And for the month name also guys, the July is a month here right now. So the zero is for the January. And if you just continue with the indexing like zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So July month is actually a six in terms of the JavaScript date object. So you can check it by just simply, I think you can print it by using the console, not confirm, like console.log. If we just print the date as well. So we are going to print here a day, comma, and then we are going to here print the month. Right now it is going to give us a like July and the Monday. All right. But if we use this function notation, I think then maybe we can get the values. So if I use console.log, just I am just checking it here. So like today dot get day. So this is a function value first, comma, and then I will be here using the today dot get month then the function value. Let's see whether these two console statements are giving the values. I'm going to comment out this particular console statement for the date. Control save it coming back to the other version of the application that is this one. And if I press the F12 key here, then instead of that, you can see we are getting the values one and six. Now we are getting Monday and July. That is because we have used this one. Already we are getting the data with the use of the arrays which is weekdays and month names. So Monday and July and for this particular, these are the integer values because these functions, which is get day and get month will returns the integer value. So that is the reason we have used here a string array so that according to the values written by the functions, we can create our logic. Okay. So I showed you the also the working of these particular code. Now it's time to actually complete the time code. So over here we need to get the minutes. So it is going to format the minutes like format time. We are going to pass it here today. Dot get minutes. All right. We need to call the get minutes function completely. Okay. And then we need to actually use here a get let seconds. Okay. So it is like format time again. We need to call this function. Instead of that, again, we need to use it get like today dot get and this is actually a seconds seconds. Okay, so then we need to terminate them again. You can check these values by just simply using these console statements. So I'm going to comment out this console statement this is totally for the testing purpose. Now we have successfully get all these six values. Now it's time to set these values inside the UI. So to set it. We need to update the data container in our HTML. Remember, we have fetched the IDs of these three elements and also the data container. So we need to update the inner HTML of the data container. So which is actually a date container, not a data container. Is actually a date container. We can even say that the data container because inside of that we are going to actually display the data. So we are here using the date container dot inner HTML, and after that. We are going to here use the template string, which is a key present at the top of your tab key. So make sure because many students ask me in my previous courses, what is template string? So make sure you check the template string basic videos because it is just a different character. All right. So this is a template string character, which is actually present at the top of your tab key. So once you press that key, you will get this template literals character. And after that, we need to here use the dollar symbol, then the curly brackets. So first we want to display the value of the day. Okay. And then we need to close the paragraph element. That is this one. And then we need to create here another paragraph element. Okay. And after that, we need to use the span tag. This is for the span element. And instead of that, we need to use the dollar symbol. And then we need to pass here a date which is this one. 
we have used the day then date okay and after that we need to close this span tag that is this one span tag and also we need to close the paragraph tag then we need to open the another paragraph tag so i'm going to here use the view and world wrap so that the code will remain in the so that the code will remain in the same window okay then we need to here use the another dollar symbol curly brackets and then we need to pass here a month month and after that we need to close the paragraph tag which is here at the you can see it okay so now our template literal gets completed means our template string gets completed control save it now we can see here we are finally able to get our monday and this date and also the month name means the day date and month name we are successfully able to get these three values if i just comment out this then you can see it right now we get the sunday if i uncomment it and control save it we get these values okay this is our version of the application that is actually running on this port 127 and after that we need to set these values to this particular container which is hours container and minutes container and this seconds container so we are going to do it here so the hours container we actually want to update its text content so text content is actually equals to we are actually here using the hours variable value then we need to actually plus it with the use of this column because this column will not be came inside the variable initialization we need to actually craft it with the string okay then i'm going to duplicate into two more time here i will be using the minutes container and this will be for the seconds container container actually i have spelled it wrong at the top seconds container container and here we need to update it also seconds container and then we need to update the value which is minutes and this is for the seconds i control save it now you can see our timer widget is completed it is right now 12 55 am and you can see we have our seconds if i refresh it then you can see the timer is updating now here is a problem because right now we need to actually here use the set interval method because every time we refresh it then we are actually able to see the updated code so we need to actually call this update call method by using this set interval so that every 100 milliseconds we are actually able to get the code so set interval which is this one and then we need to actually specify the brackets so here we need to use the update clock which is the callback and then we need to pass here 1000 so after every one second this function will be called now you can see it's finally working and our timer of this second is actually act like a timer application means it's actually updating after every one second okay so that marks the completion of the code for this particular time and date widget so now the one thing is left is actually in this final second version of the code if you see in the final version there is no colon so i once copied the code means once i duplicate the code we actually don't want to this colon in the seconds one so we need to just simply remove this part in the second part when it doesn't require because once i duplicate it two more times this particular code is also gets duplicated now you can see it's actually no perfect so our time and date widget application is now completed successfully so that's it for this particular module if you like this module then please leave a review because your review definitely helped me to reach more students and also helps me to create more awesome courses so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you very much hello everyone welcome back to this lecture so in this lecture we're going to build the age calculator application so let me show you the application that we're going to build in this particular module so this is the final application that we're going to build in this particular module so you can see it has this input type where we have to add the date of birth and then we have this calculate age button so if i click on this then i have already having this auto suggestion if i select the date of birth so you need to enter the date of birth in this particular format if i click on this calculate age button then you can see it's going to display this particular result in a form of list so you can see this is actually showing the age then we have this month passed then weeks then days then hours minutes and then we also want to display the seconds so this is the application that we are going to build in this entire module
So our first step is to start with the HTML part of the application which is age calculator. So our first step is to start with the HTML part of the project which is age calculator. So I have already created the three files. This is index.html, style.css and script.js. So all of these files are empty except the index.html. I have already written the boilerplate code and also I have named my project age calculator and I have launched this application with the go live plugin inside my chrome browser. So you can see the age calculator heading is appear at the application tab. So the next thing I have already linked my CSS and the JavaScript file. So inside of this first we need to add a one container because if I show you the final application this, everything is actually wrapped inside the container and then we are going to place this h1 element then this actually a uh, form element then we need to provide this button and then this list is going to generate dynamically but for the CSS purpose we are going to add a first CSS part then we are going to comment out just like we have did in the previous projects as well. So the first thing is we need to add the container which is a division. So coming back to the Visual Studio code and first we need to add here a container. So this is our container and inside of that first we need to add the h1 element. So our h1 element is going to just display the heading so it is h calculator and after that we need to add the input type. So this is actually a form so here we need to use the form tag and inside the action First I am going to delete the action because it is not going to use any database. So that is when the action is not required. So we need to specify the id. So id is going to age calculator. And instead of that we need to add the form group. So I am going to type here form hyphen group. Group and coming back to the front of this form group. I need to also specify the dot. And then I am going to press the tab key. So it is going to give me a division. Actually the class name is outside of this particular division. So I need to cut it cut this name and then paste it inside the double quotes and then I am going to press the enter key and then just remove the blank spaces and then inside of this form group it is going to have a label so this label is actually a static it is not going to update so if I show you this is actually going to display the enter your birth date so this is a label and then inside of this four we need to add the birth date and then we need to add the message which I have already copied and after that we need to add the input type so input then the type is going to be text and then we need to add the id to birth date so here I have not used the input type as date of birth so we have used a text so we need to check the condition also inside the javascript for this particular type also so once we are start with the javascript part then I am going to recall this concept of the type again. So coming back to the id I need to complete the id name which is birth date and after that we need to add the placeholder text. So placeholder we want to display the date inside this Indian format which is ed, mm and yy which is like a date and then the month name and then after that we need to apply the year. So after this we need to add a, another attribute here which is required. So without this we are not going to perform any other operation. Okay so that is for the form group part of the project and then we need to just remove this extra spacing and then we need to create another form group. So this is going to be a form group so I am going to copy this division from here. So this form group and also the closing tag is appeared by the Visual Studio. Then instead of that we need to add the button. So inside of this button we need to specify the type to submit. Then after that inside of this we need to provide the text that will be visible to the button. Calculate age. So you can see now once I control save it then you can see these elements is now appear inside our browser screen. Then our next step is for displaying the result that is for this one we need to add the result container and also we need to add the result as well. So this is actually a result container in which all these elements will be placed and then there is another div division which is a result that will be used to hold this particular data. So coming back to the Visual Studio code again. So after the end of the form here we need to add the class name which is our result container. So I am going to specify the dot that is result 
container and then pressing the tab key and instead of that I need to specify the another class which is result because this is actually going to hold the data and then we also need to specify the IDs inside of it because the ID will be fetched inside the JavaScript so here we need to add the result container and after that we need to also specify the ID to this result division also so the ID to this one is going to be result and after that we need to add our divisions we are going to comment it out once we complete the code so this will be like our div and instead of that I need to add the class which is a result item so we need to press the enter key result then I am going to specify the hyphen then item this is a result item instead of that we need to display the elements inside the h3 heading the h3 heading is like just we want to display the weeks and then after that we need to add the paragraph element this will be used to like age in weeks so this is actually a variable value that we are going to display inside the paragraph element ok so that's marks the completion of the code if I control save it then you will see the week passed and age in weeks will be displayed inside the browser so that's marks the completion of the code for the html so our next step is to start with the css code of the age calculator application So our next step is to start with the CSS part of the age calculator application. So for that we need to use the CSS file which is style.css. So here inside of that first we need to reset the default styling of the browser by using the universal selector. So here I will be using the asterisk and then starting the curly brackets of the asterisk which is a universal selector. So instead of that we need to remove the padding. So padding is 0 and then we need to add the margin. Margin is also going to be 0. Then I am going to use the font family. So the font family that I am using here Arial. So this is a Arial sensory font. So you can see now the font is actually changed. If I can just simply remove it like this one. So this will be the font that we are going to use for this particular application. And also you can see the default padding and margin is reset. Then we are going to select the body of the web page. And instead of that we need to add the background color which is actually a linear gradient. So here we need to use the background and then we need to specify the linear gradient function. Instead of that we will be using a to write and then we need to add the color code which is AA7E66. This will be the color code we are going to use for this one and then we are going to use the FEP47B. So this will be the secondary color. If I control save it then you can see the intersection of these two colors. After that we need to add the code for the container so that we can set the container to the center of the screen. So for that we need to select the container class and then we need to start its opening and curly brackets and instead of that we need to add the width. So width is going to 600 pixel. Then we need to specify the margin property. So margin from top is going to be like 100 pixel and from left and right it is going to be auto. If I control save it then you can see right now the container is actually moved from the top to 100 pixel. So if I click on the maximize button then you can see it is actually at the center of the browser screen. If I come back to the container class then here we need to add the padding also. So first I am going to add the background color so that we can see the result of the padding. Then here I will be using the F5, F5 and F5. If I save it then you can see the light grey color. Then we need to add the padding. So padding will be 20 pixel from all sides. I control save it then you can see the padding is applied to the container. Then we need to add the border radius for the rounded corner it is going to 8 pixel. And after that we need to add the last property which is the box shadow. So box sizing not it is actually a box shadow. So instead of that we need to use 0 pixel then 2 pixel then the blurness is going to be 4 pixel then it will be RGBA. RGBA this will be the function name that is going to 0 then 0 0 and the alpha is going to be 0 0.2 if I control save it then you will see there is a little bit of the shadow at the container then you can see now it is actually perfectly at the center of the screen so again next step is we need to style this h1 element so coming back to the visual studio code and type the h1 and then it's opening and curly pair of brackets and after that we need to use the text align property. 
So first we need to align the text to the center. Then you can see the text is actually moved to the center of the screen and then we need to change the color. So color is going to like 333, just a light black. And after that we need to style this particular form element. So first we have this form group. So we are going to select this form group to style it properly. So here we are going to type the form group and then we need to start its body. Instead of that, the first property that we need to target is the margin bottom property because right now this is actually a one row and this is actually the second row because we are going to targeting it. So we need to apply the margin property. So margin bottom is going to be like 20 pixel. So once I specify the 20 pixel, then you can see now they actually spaced is increased between these button and also in this particular input type and label. Alright, so this is the only single property that we have used inside the form group. So after applying the code to the form group, which is the class that is uh, this one, this is the form group. So the next step is to we need to style this particular label. So coming back to the style.css, so after the end of this form group, I am actually here using the label. And inside of the label, first we need to add the display property, which is display is going to be block. If I do that, then you can see now the input type is actually moved to the next line which is the next row and after that we need to add the property which is margin bottom property so margin bottom is going to be like 5 pixel because right now these two are actually very close to each other so we need to add some spacing between them now you can see there is a 5 pixel margin between the label and the input type and the next we need to add the color attribute which is the color property so here it is going to be 33 which is the same color for the heading and then we need to add the font weight so we are going to increase the font weight to 600. Then you can see now it's appear a little bit more crisp and bolder. After that we need to add the code for this input type. So we need to select the input and then we need to start the square brackets and then we need to start its curly brackets. Instead of the square brackets we need to set the type. Not an S type it is going to be type and then to use equal to sign and set the double quotes. We need to specify the text. So we are actually targeting the, this particular input which is inside the form group under the label. So this will be we are going to style. So the first we need to set the width. So width is going to be 95%. So you can see now the width is actually going to be 95%. It is actually increase its width. The next property we need to add is the padding because right now it is very small so if i increase the padding now it's become a little bit bigger than the text so now you can see the padding property display its result and after that we need to add the font size property so next we need to add the font size which is 16 pixel and then we need to add the border radius property so border radius is going to be 4 pixel and after that we need to add the border property so that we have to apply a border here so border is going to be 1 pixel which is a solid border and then we need to provide the color so color is going to be like hash, hash character ccc so you can see now it has a little bit of the dark gray border so that's now the completion of the code for the input type as well and after that we need to add the code for the button so here we need to select the button and inside of that we need to start its curly brackets and then the first property that we are going to use is the padding property inside of the padding first we need to add the padding from top and bottom is going to be 10 pixel from left and right is going to be 20 pixel. If I save it now you can see the padding is actually changed inside the button. Then after that we need to add the font size property. So font size is going to be 16 pixel. And then this is the font. We need to compare the font size as well. Save it then you can say the font of the button is actually increased. Then we need to add the background color. So background color is like a hashtag AA and it is going to 7 E. 6 6 so this will be the background color then we need to style the border so border is going to be none and then also we need to remove the outline so outline is also going to be none and then we need to add the border radius so border radius is going to be 4 pixel and then we need to change the color so we need to use the white color that is this one now you can see the button is actually changed also the last property that we want to change is the cursor pointer and you can see the cursor is actually changed to pointer like a hand type of the cursor 
okay so that's now the completion of the code for the button so our last uh, thing is left is to actually stylize this particular result one so that it will be look like this particular structure so coming back to the visual studio code again so the first we need to add the code for the result container result container so i'm going to check the name of the result container yes this is the class name result container then to start its opening and closing pair of the bracket and after that we need to add the code which is first we need to add the display property so this display is going to be none if i do that then you can see the it is actually not visible so this property we need to set it to none but we are going to comment it out because once we complete the style code then we need to use this property and we are going to change this property by using the javascript code and after that we need to add here a margin top property so margin top is going to be 20 pixel and then we need to add the background color so background color is like our white color then you can see the color is actually changed and then we need to add the padding so padding is going to be 20 pixel from all side and then we need to add the border radius so border radius is same as the button which is 4 pixel and you can see the things are actually changed inside the browser window then we need to use the box shadow property so i'm going to copy the box shadow from here I'm coming back to the result container and then pasting the code here because it is same the only thing is changed is this one this is actually 3 pixel and this one is actually 6 pixel if i save it then you can see now it looks like a card like effect so instead of that we have specified the h3 and paragraph element and also we have a result container if i come back to the index.html you can see here we have this result container as well which is a division tag so i'm going to paste the result and starting its curly brackets so instead of that we need to add the margin top property because right now you can see week passed and this age in weeks is appearing very close to each other so that is the reason we need to add here a margin top property which is going to be 10 pixel if i save it and then we need to again use this result class name and then we need to select the h3 element because we need to stylize the h3 element so we need to change the color so instead of black we are going to just lighter the black means we are going to use the light form of the black color and then we need to add the font size so font size is going to be 16 pixel and then we need to add the result again so i'm going to copy this because we need to stylize the paragraph element as well so this is our paragraph element not a capital one just a small one then we need to close the curly bracket and instead of that we need to apply the font size property so font size is going to be 16 pixel or i can go with the like 15 pixel and then we need to add the another property which is margin bottom so margin bottom is going to be 10 pixel so that's marks the completion of the code if i just come back to the index.html if i copy this one again actually show you the results if i save it then you can see means the data will be displayed in this particular form so i'm going to select this whole code and just comment it out because we are going to generate this code by using the javascript code if i control save it and also coming back to the style.css so at the top we have used this particular display none so i'm also going to uncomment this property because we want to hide the result so once we run the application we want to display this particular structure of the application and once we click on this particular calculate age button then we want to display the result just like in the our output application if i change the date of birth here like 15 15 not a valid month name 12 and then we here we want to add it and also i'm going to change the year name which is 2000 and simply click it then you can see this is the actually display the result okay so that's marks the completion of the code for the css part so our next step is to start with the javascript part of the project So our next step is to start with the javascript part of the project which is our age calculator application. So for that we need to use the script.js file. Now instead of this script.js file first we need to get the id of the form. So the id of the form is age calculator so I am going to copy this id. So we need to get the id of this and after that we need to listen to the submit listener. So what I mean I am going to show you once I complete the code. So first here we need to fetch the form element so it is actually age calculator form age calculator form i am going to use the camel case typing 
and then here we need to use the document dot get element by id and instead of that we need to specify the id inside the double quotes so this is the age calculator now we have find the id of this form element and next we need to add the listener to this particular form age calculator form variable so here add this particular age calculator and i'm going to set the listener by using the add event listener so we are going to listen to the like uh, submit event and then we need to actually provide a anonymous function which is an arrow function that has an event as a parameter and then we need to start its bracket and instead of that we need to call the calculate calculate age function so this is a function that we need to create so here i'm going to use the function calculate age and then we need to start the round brackets and then its curly brackets also whenever we if i control save if i come back here so if i click it then you can see it's actually asking for fill out this field now instead of this particular listener when we submit it we need to also call a one function here which is the event dot prevent default so this particular is used to actually stop the page being refreshed because by default whenever we submit the button inside the form elements then it's going to refresh the page also but we want to display the data in a form of list so for that reason we are actually use here this particular function if you can google it like this prevent default you will get more information about this particular function it is a javascript function so now the main thing is we need to calculate the age now instead of this calculate function we need to create bunch of variables so i'm going to make some spaces because we need to write lot of code inside this particular function so the first thing is we need to create the date object and also we need to actually fetch the current date of the system so the first thing is we need to fetch the current date of the system so for that we need to create here a const variable and then it is going to be as today so this is going to hold a value new date so once we call this one a new date object then it is going to have a current date from the current date to the specified date of birth between this range we are going to calculate the age of the date of birth means age of the person so through this way our age calculator working and after that we need to actually fetch the data from this input type so for that we need to also create the variable so which is also type const and this is actually a birth date input so this will be the variable name and is equal to we need to fetch the id so document dot get element by id and then inside of that we need to specify the id name of this input type so if i come back to the index dot html so here this is the input type so the id name is birth date so i'm going to copy it and coming back to the script dot js and i am going to paste it here also we need to actually get the value so i'm going to specify here a dot then the value so we want the value of this input type so this input type value is actually a text so for that now we get the value which is like if i enter here like 25 10 and like 2000 so if i enter this value then you can see whenever this is actually treated as a string so we need to actually split this string into three parts the first is the date the second is the month and the last is the year and also we need to split we don't need this particular hyphen we not require these ones so for that we need to create here some variables so we are going to create three variables so first we need to create the birth date parts so this will be the first variable so make sure you type the name of the variables very carefully because most of the variables names are very similar so this is the birth date parts and this is actually equal to the birth date input so this is this will have the string that we are getting it from the birth date input now it has the value so we are going to use this particular birth date input variable so with the use of the split function 
we are going to split the string. So we need to split it into three parts. So we want to remove it. So to remove the, we need to specify the string that we want to remove means the character that we want to remove from the string. So we want to remove this. If I control save it, then you will see nothing. But I am going to show you with the use of the console log. So I am going to here use the console console dot log. And instead of that, we need to specify the variable name, which is the birth input. Means birth date input. This is the first variable that will actually display the string as it is. That is actually present inside the input type. And after that, we need to display the. Again, I'm going to duplicate into one more time. And instead of that, we need to display the birth date parts. If I control C bit, and if I just come back to my browser, I'm going to maximize the browser. And also, I need to open my developer window. Means I need to showcase the console as well. Right now, you can see nothing is actually visible inside the console. So I'm going to add here this particular date of birth. If I calculate it, then you can see this is the input. That is this particular line of code show the date of birth as it is. But we have splitted the this particular string into three parts with the use of the this particular line of code. And we are going to print it in the second console log statement. So now we are actually remove this particular hyphens from the string. So next step is we need to store these particular values in their corresponding variable names because this is the like uh, birthday, this is the birth month, and this is the birth year. So we need to create these three variables. So I'm going to actually minimize it from now this particular window of the browser and coming back to the visual studio code again and here we need to type the const and then i need to create the birth day variable as i already told you because we have splitted the birth input into three different parts so birth day is equal to birth date parts because right now the parts is stored inside the birth date parts variable so it is actually now treated as a string if i come back to the browser again so you can see the day is actually stored in the zeroth index because split function does actually work. It's going to give us the new array as well. So that is the reason. Now the thing is actually stored inside the zeroth index, which is the birthday, and the month is actually stored in the first index, and the year is stored in the second index. So that is why I am actually here specifying the zero, and then we need to add here a terminator, which is optional. Then I'm going to again create here another variable which is birth month and then again it is going to equal to birth date parts and then to specify the square brackets and then we are going to pass here a 1 and then we need to use here a minus 1 now this minus 1 is basically used to actually minus the 1 month from the javascript date object because by default this the date function of the javascript the date object i can say that the javascript the date object of the javascript has a month started from 0 to 11 index and there are total 12 months so on 0 we have january on 1 we have february so if we go like to index up to 11 so on the 11th number we have december so it means the date of birth that we have added here is like if now if i enter it and calculate it which is the 10th month of the calendar year which is October but in javascript date of that the October is actually stored at the 9th so that is why I have used here a minus 1 to actually minus the birth date part which is the birth month not a birth date part which is the birth month with the minus 1 so that we get the 9 which is October in case of the javascript date object but in calendar it is actually the 10th month so I think I you get my point, but I want to explain to you guys. Next, we need to create the another variable which is birth year. So we need to store the year. So it is going to be birth date parts. Then it is actually stored at the index two. Then we need to terminate it as per your wish. So after getting these all three parts, we need to pass it to the birth date by using the new date object. So again, I'm going to here create another variable const and then this is the main final birth date so this date is actually going to have a capital 
camel case typing name is equal to then we need to again create the new object of the date and now at this point of time we need to pass these three variables as a parameter to this particular date object so first i am going to pass here a birth year then second i am going to pass here a birth month and then third i am going to pass here a birth day then i am going to save it and then i am going to actually display the values of all of these three variables so again i am going to here duplicate into many times by pressing the oh, alt and shift key and the down arrow key so here i am going to display the birth day which is this one and then i am going to display the birth month and then here i am going to display the birth year so this particular is just for the tutorial purpose okay so once we complete the entire code i am going to just simply remove these console statements if i control save it coming back to the browser again and here if i enter the date of birth click on calculate then you can see the we are getting the birth day birth month and the birth year okay so if i come back to the visual studio code again so our next step is we need to create a one helper function inside this particular calculate age function now this function is actually going to check the input type whether it is a date or not a text means it is going to check the input type which is this one if i now going to resize the window so we need to create the helper function here just i already told you so first i am going to set the const then is valid valid date so we need to check the valid so this is an anonymous function that is going to accept a one date parameter means it is an arrow function then it to start its curly pair of the brackets and inside of that i am going to check for the condition so first i am going to return return then starting the return block then i am going to split into multiple times inside of that first i am going to use the object dot prototype dot and then two string which is this string and then i am going to call and here we need to use the date which is this particular parameter the local variable for this particular function so if it is equals to equals to the object date now this object date is actually a pre made javascript object object date if it is that a condition so this particular thing does what if i enter the if condition then it will become more clear to you just i'm going to complete the code first so here i need to use the double and operator which is the and operator and then i need to use here check whether the value is nn whether the entered number is not a number is nn if it is that a case then we want to return this particular thing all right so this is now the code is completed for inside the return statement okay and if i just structure the code like this so that you can see the code in just only one window and after that we need to use this function so here we need to add the if condition and inside of that i'm going to use the is validate function that is this one and inside of that we need to pass the date date of birth which is this birth date variable so i'm going to pass it here birth date variable and inside of that means we are going to check whether this particular entered birth date is a date of birth so we are going to check it with this particular helper function and we are calling this helper function inside this if block so if it is like i already told you in the index part of the html means in the inside the index.html we have used here a input type text whereas in my previous javascript course i used the input type as date of birth so we have a calendar to fetch the date input but right now we are actually using here a text so it can be like a enter a random text or it can be a number so that is the reason we need to check for this particular condition if we have used here a input type date then we don't need to do this particular stuff we don't need to check for these conditions we can easily get the date of birth inside this particular birth variable through the input type date of birth but because we are using the input type text because the main idea of this project is we can enter the date of birth manually and then 
once we enter the date of birth manually we can check the age of the person so that is a main theory behind this particular age calculator project so that is the reason we have to do this particular conditional stuff and also we need to break the particular day month and year into these three separate variables and after that we pass this again to the new date object okay so enough talking it's time to complete the code once if it is not a case if it is not a date of birth then it is going to display an alert suppose you have entered here a just a random text so in that case is actually going to display a alert message so we are going to use the alert inside of the alert we are going to display invalid date invalid date format please enter so i am going to use the proper case means capital case typing please enter a valid valid date in so we need to provide the hint to the user by using dd mm and yy format okay so this is what we actually want to display inside the alert all right and after that we don't want to execute the code so we need to use the return statement okay so this is for the code if i control save it and if i run the code and here if i calculate the age then you can see this particular alert box pop up in valid date format please enter the valid date in ddmmyy format so perfect our condition is now working so the next step is we need to calculate the ages minutes times and hours if i just show you the final application we want to calculate this particular stuff so coming back to the visual studio code again because now we have specified the check for the invalid inputs so if the user entered the proper date format so we need to calculate the month age and the other required things for the project so for that we need to create here bunch of variables so again i am going to here use the const so first we need to create a variable age in milliseconds and then this is actually going to use the today minus current birth date so this will be used to get the age in milliseconds so once we calculate the age in milliseconds with the use of this age in milliseconds we can calculate the age in seconds so for that we need to create another variable which is age in seconds so after defining the age in seconds then this is going to use the age in milliseconds to calculate the age in seconds so for that we need to use here a math dot floor function so math dot floor function so this will be used to actually get the whole positive value means the positive whole number and inside of that we need to use the age in milliseconds so age in milliseconds it is going to be divided with the 1000 because if we divide the age in millisecond with 1000 milliseconds then we are actually getting the age in seconds means we are getting the seconds because in one second we have 1000 milliseconds and after that if we control means shift and alt and then press the down arrow key to actually duplicate this line of code and inside of that we need to calculate the age in minutes age in minutes now to calculate the age in minutes we need to use the age in seconds so to, in one minute we have 60 seconds so we are going to divide it with the 60 then again i am going to duplicate it into one more time after calculating the minutes the next we need to calculate the hours so hours so for that we need to use the age in minutes age in minutes and we need to actually in one hour we have 60 minutes so we are going to divide it with the 60 again i am going to duplicate it to one more time then next we need to calculate the age in days age in days and for that we need to use the age in hours so it is our age in hours and we have by in one day we have 24 hours so we are going to divide it with the 24 again i am going to duplicate into one more time and instead of that i am going to call it here age in like our weeks so age in weeks so we need to calculate age in weeks so for that we again going to use the age in days variable value 
which is age in days and instead of that age in days so in one week we have seven days so we are going to divide it with the seven and after that we need to calculate the months so once we get the days we can calculate the months so again age in months so we are going to divide the age in weeks means age in days not weeks age in days by using here a value called 30.43 and 6875 this is a random approximate value i can use here a 31 because some of the months has 31 days and some months has 30 days so i'm going to use this approximate float value to actually get the day in the nearest possible whole value because this will be not exactly calculated we are going to approximately calculate the age in months if you want to calculate it more specifically then you need to work with the floating point values so you need to also take care of the precision and the like decimal values also okay so i'm just going to just give you the basic idea how we can calculate and build this particular type of the application okay and after that we need to calculate the age in years so again here i will be type the age in years and then we need to divide it with because we get the age in days we all need to divide it age in days with the value 365.25 now we have a 365 days but in leap year we have 366 days so that is why we are going to use this approximate value to actually divide the age in days to calculate the age in years so once i calculate these values so if i console log it then it's actually going to display the values inside the console log which you can do it but uh, we want to actually set this data to the result container so that we can display it like this one so for that we need to actually update the inner html of the result container so here we need to create the another const variable so it is actually a result container result container so first we need to get the reference to that result container which is get element to by id so we need to get the id of that particular result container so this is the result container i'm going to copy the id name and coming back to here and pasting the name of the id similarly we need to get the id of the result as well so i'm going to copy it into one more time and here i'm going to type the result and then the id which is result okay so now we get the reference to the result and the result container it's time to update the value of the result inner html so we want to update the value of the inner html so i'm going to use the template string here by using the back tick key so template string and then i'm going to split it this code into multiple lines then we need to add here a division tag so i'm going to copy this particular division tag from here and coming back to the script.js file and i'm going to paste the code here by just formatting it like this one and then i just need to format this one because we want a h3 paragraph element so the first one is actually our result item that is the class that we want the next we need to add the h3 and then the paragraph element so the first we want to display the age of the person so for that we need to use here a age and then we need to use this column and then we need to use here a template because we are using a template string so we can use the curly brackets okay and then use the dollar sign curly bracket now we can actually here specify the variable so we are actually using here a age in years variable age in years and after that we need to concatenate it with the use of dollar variable we can dollar curly bracket and then here we need to specify the age in months all right and after specifying the age in months then we need to use the modulus operator and then we need to provide here a 12 and then we need to concatenate with the months months and then again we need to here use the dollar symbol then curly brackets and instead of that we need to specify the age in days so this will be the variable value and then we need to again use here a modulus operator and then we need to use the 30 and then we need to concatenate with the days so if i control save it but uh, right now you can see the 
it is not going to display the data because we also need to actually close this division and also this paragraph tag and uh, here we need to close this particular div tag okay so if i control save it and the thing is we need to set the display style of the result container to block so for that here we need to again call the result container variable result container dot style because we are need to update the style property of the display container which is display is equal to we need to set the display to block if i terminate the code and if i control save it if i enter the data bar if i click on calculate it actually it is saying the invalid date format so if i control save it and if i refresh it so actually it is not happy it is saying the date is invalid why it is invalid because it is already working so coming back to the conditions here now we have added this check so it is saying that the date is invalid so actually i have here because it is outside of the array that is the reason we are actually getting it here and then we need to remove this one so if i control save it so that is the right procedure to write this particular code if i control save it and if i again enter here date of birth click on calculate it now you can see the age is actually displayed which is 22 7 months so here we need to also add the years because right now we are actually forget we added the 7 months but here we need to concatenate with the years as well so y e a r s years and then i'm going to use this as capital months then this one for the days control save it and if i enter the date of birth again click it then you can see now we are able to see the 22 years 7 months 16 days okay so similarly we need to create the other result element as well for the display of the months okay so again i'm going to do that so again here we need to use this one then here we need to add the value to month months past months passed and then we need to remove these whole lines of code and instead of that we need to use the variable age in months this is what and then again i need to copy this one again paste it here then we need to use here a weeks past weeks past and then here we need to use the age in weeks Again, I'm going to copy this code here, paste it, and then inside of this particular one, we need to change it into days past. And then again, here we need to use the age in days. Then again, I'm going to copy this code from here, copy it, and then this is going to be hours past. So this one is our hours past and then here we need to pass the variable age in hours so we have passed months weeks days hours the only thing is left minutes and seconds so again i'm going to copy this one and paste it here then this one is going to be like minutes passed and then we need to here use the variable name age in minutes and again i'm going to copy this and paste it into one more time this one is actually for the seconds seconds pass then the variable value which is age in seconds if i control save it and if i enter the data bar click on calculate age then you can see we are getting the values so right now you can see the output one project means the output of the project and if this is the final version of the project now both of these two are actually looking a little bit different that is because the margin property and also this is the font size is actually used is actually 18 pixel that is why it is actually appear a little bit bigger than this one so to fix this we need to add the actually margin property to this like uh, age container that is age is actually our if i come back to the visual studio code so this is our h3 element so we can add a margin property to this age one which is a margin bottom then it will be resolve the problem and also we can increase the 
like a font size of this to 18 pixel or this one to 16 pixel 17 pixel or whatever uh, pixel value you want to use so coming back to the standard css and also i'm going to just maximize this the final one and this one i'm going to resize it into again so that i can place it like this layout so coming back to the h3 so i'm going to apply the margin bottom property so margin bottom is going to be 10 pixel and the font size i will be using here 18 pixel so now you can see it's actually solved the problem now it's actually looks like the similar if i just show you it's actually similar okay because inside the browsers it looks little bit different so this is what the application is built up successfully guys so that is for this particular javascript part of the age calculator application so if you like this course then definitely leave a review because your review definitely going to help me to increase the quality of my courses and also the quality of my future courses so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you